under the maximum pressure. I never crumbled. I put in maximum effort. They wrote me off. I wrote a new book when hope was lost. I knew what it took. I overcame all the odds. You could never put me in a box. I am relentless. I will not stop. Follow the scent. I am a fox. Came from the bottom and now I'm on top. And nobody's taking my spot. Okay. Let's get some fun. Oh my god! It is always coming seven! A small country, a big place. Wow, you're that good, huh? One of the biggest coin flips in EPT history. With the championship on the line, it's a brick! Shirani is the champion! Mate, what a life. Oh! Ready for this, I've been dreaming. This will give everything meaning. I'll do whatever it takes. And nobody's taking my spot. Barcelona. Jason Mercier, he went with his instincts, he made the call. There's the professional level, and there's the Ivy League. Double! Sebastian Pauli coming to terms with what he has just achieved. Nicky Corrin has done it! Two main event titles! Sebastian Mallets has gone from poker fanboy to poker champion. This is why people love the EDT. Hello once again, welcome to Monaco and the PokerStars European Poker Tour presented by Monte Carlo Casino. It's final table day, the final day of the main event, playing down to a champion here at the Monte Carlo Bay Hotel and Resort. I'm James Hartigan, alongside me, Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. Great to have you with us for our broadcast today. Get involved, get in touch, use the live chat on Twitch and YouTube. Hashtag PokerStars TV on Twitter and check out all the fun stuff on our Facebook and Instagram pages. Look forward to your questions, your comments, and your bold predictions. Before we talk about today, let's talk about what happened last time when 16 players returned for day four, including PSPC champ Roman Kalilis and Neil Farrell. Well, Farrell's journey ended early. He went out in 16th place, couldn't play the flush draw, and the bust out followed in fast fashion. It was Finn Yussi Nevenlina whose elimination took us to the unofficial final table of nine. And then we lost Alejandro Romero. Yannick Cardo was eliminated in eighth by Marcelo Samoas in the most emotional hand of the tournament so far. And Ramon lost a tense flip versus Dragos Trofimov, taking us to the final six. Remarkably, Dane Morton Vam still has the chip lead. So this is the final table lineup. Vam's got more than 90 bigs. Marcelo Samoa's 86 big blinds. 69 for Hugo Pinkray. 60 for online qualifier Erkan Sernmetz. 59 bigs for Jaime Cervantes. The shortest stack is Dragos Trofimov with 38 bigs. Everyone now guaranteed more than 167,000 euros with every elimination. The prize money goes up. More than half a million for the runner-up, and almost a million for the winner. Nearly 940,000 euros, plus that main event trophy. So here are the players arriving. There's Erkin Sermetz, the last remaining qualifier. Turkey with Erkin. French businessman Hugo Pingray. 50 shades. Marcelo Samoa is looking to become the first ever Brazilian EPT winner. Bamo. He is a player with heart. Morten Vam could be become the first Danish winner for a decade. Could go wire to wire for the last few days. Jaime Cervantes on his first ever trip to Europe. Yeeha America. And Dragos Trofimov could become the first Moldovan EPT champ. Maya he, Maya ha. Is this going to be the year of Moldova? Doubtful. Joe's not prepared to make it a thing. <laughs> so only one player in his seat so far. We will be getting cards in the air shortly. Uh, Joe, I get that there was a bit of disappointment when Ramon went out in seventh last night. It kind of felt a bit like in Prague when Tuan Mulder busted in seventh place. But I like the fact that we've got an international lineup, 
a pretty diverse lineup in terms of poker experience and results. But I've never seen six guys so happy to be here. Here's how we hedge. Ramon, he has already won. Let's spread the love a little bit. There's going to be a brand new superstar born today. Yeah, and suffice to say, for whoever wins this, it will be their biggest result. I guess the exception, actually, would yeah. be Hugo Pingray, who, of course, won the biggest ever event held at the World Series of Poker. He took down the monster stack in 2014 for 1.3 million. But Morton Van, this is a player who actually rarely plays live, mostly an online player. Uh, we spoke to the chip leader before he entered the Salle des Etoiles. I'm just excited for today and uh, hope to to do my best and yeah of course I hope to win <laughs> we all do <laughs> well like if it, it gives me some uh, kind of calmness that I can be a tip leader because uh, we have a deep structure and good time to play cards so I can wait uh, and don't have to push it too much so we'll see what happens and try to play the spots that's come up and uh, yeah that's it uh, they're all, all very nice people. Uh, I like them and I have been playing with them for now two days and uh, I think they're all good players in each of their ways. We have different styles and uh, it's going to be fun to watch who's pulling out longest. <laughs> well, I haven't really thought about being an EPG champion yet. Uh, it's, it's a long marathon and not a sprint, so I have to just take one hand at the time and see what happens uh, at the end. But now it's very close and yeah, I can hardly imagine how it would feel if, if I should, should win the trophy. It, it would be, mean the world for me. You know he's good because he's got a poker tattoo. Well, interestingly, he is someone who works in the banking industry only has one other reported live cash. But yes, I think it's fair to say it would mean the world yeah. to all oh. of these guys. Wow, much better than that. Let's hope Jesus. so. Oh God, oh God. Time to unbag oh those chips oh and get the trophy on the table for the official final table photo. Jaime <laughs> Cervantes I, I, is I, in his seat. At the end, for sure. <laughs> I don't like such things, but they're not mine. <laughs> 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 so we referenced already, Joe, that Jaime is from sure Vancouver. <laughs> Sorry, he's from, he's from Washington, and he's on his first ever trip to Europe, cashed the FPS event at the start of this festival, and that was a 41st place finish. And now he's in contention for a first prize of nearly a million euros. Let's hear from Jaime. Yeah, this is my first tournament in Europe. Uh, it's my first journey in Europe, actually. Uh, I've never been here before, so I was really excited to come here and uh, experience Monte Carlo. And it's a city that's like no other. Um, really, really nice and clean. And uh, obviously, the poker room is just absolutely amazing. So it's been a great experience overall for all the days we've been playing. Uh, and yeah, I just love Europe in general uh, so far. And I look forward to, after this, exploring it a little bit more. Hearing your name as a champion would be absolutely amazing. Um, it's kind of weird that like when you start a tournament, you're like, man, I hope I just have a really good score in general. You know, you, of course you love to win it, but you take a really good score. But now that you're here, it's like you don't really think about the money, really. You just think about crowning yourself and what the moment would be like to lift that trophy. So it means absolutely everything to me. It's been a while since there's been an American champion. I'm just glad someone's going to go back to the States with a positive story about Europe. Well, let's get... Griffin Benja into the mix. How you doing, Griffin? So good. There's, <clears throat> there's only one day I prefer over the penultimate day of an EPT main, and that's the ultimate day. Okay, I'm not trying to blow smoke up your hoo-ha, but you've been at your fair share of final tables. What does this mean to these players? And more importantly, how are they feeling right now? Nervous, excited? Oh, I mean, you know, that cocktail, <clears throat> both nervous and excited. It's an incredibly, uh, you know, nerve-wracking experience. Very difficult to sleep the night before. Um, so I'm not sure how many hours of sleep each of them got. If we had to combine all of them, who, who knows what that number would be. Um, but, you know, this is a crazy amount of money. It's, it's not every day you're playing for this kind of money. And these opportunities don't come up that often. You know, I've, I've played many EBT main they events, date? never made the final table. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's just, uh, you know, they really got to make the most of it. And every decision that doesn't go their way is going to haunt them for a very long time. So a lot at stake here. And from what you've seen so far over the course of the last three days, we've 
seen most of these players in a fair few hands. Um, have you identified anyone who you think is the firm favorite? Is there anyone who you think might be, I don't want to say the weak spot, but maybe less experienced than the other players? Yeah, I would say uh, Cervantes has, has impressed me with, uh, you know, hasn't always been on the feature table, but from what I've seen, we saw that great ace high call uh, oh, yesterday. So seems like really okay. capable. I also love the energy coming in. This guy backpacking Europe. He's got the backpack on coming in. First time in Europe, and here he is at the final table for Monte Carlo. As far as uh, someone who I might say is, like you said, a spot or whatever, I would say Sonmez. I've seen some quite you know, tight folds in certain spots where I think a lot of other players might have uh, have entered the pot, but uh, has run pretty well and, and has has been pretty snug in a way that, you know, has kept him mostly out of danger. Um, so that's that's what I, th I would say. Well, we highlighted already that Morton Vam is a poker player who has a job, as does Erkan Cernmetz. He's a 37-year-old salesman from Hanover, won his seat in the EPT Monte Carlo main event, for 530 euros online. Only makes a few poker trips each year, and we spoke to him before he took his seat at the table. Oh, I feel uh, really good. It's, uh, it's a, a dream coming true as a qualifier run so deep to the last day. It's uh, already a dream. I uh, couldn't even imagine to, uh, to bring it so far. Uh, I just want to do the main cash, and after that I was uh, just uh, dreaming about um, a, a final table, and now the last six is uh, really tremendous. Yeah, uh, to be honest, I'm thinking about the trophy, but uh, I think it's uh, a pretty hard way to, to, to it, and um, I, would, I would need a bit of luck, but uh, everything can happen. Yeah, uh, it's already my highest cash. I won a spade, uh, I think, five years ago, but it was uh, just a five-figure cash, and I, I had several five figure figure cash uh, also in 2016 and 17 but uh, no cash that big so far Erkin's got four kids says they think he's on a business trip <laughs> it is a business trip at this point <laughs> it is all business and the players currently posing for the official final table photo on the main stage what I find incredible, Joe, is when you consider the EPT launched in 2004, here we are in 2022, and we're still talking about potential firsts. Yeah. The idea of our first Moldovan winner, but also the idea of our first Brazilian champion. And Griffin, when you consider wow. that Brazil has been such a force in poker oh, for the last few years, the fact that they've yet to win a European Poker Tour title, Marcelo Samoas could be the first. Yeah, that seems like a, a crazy statistic. We, we often joke about how many Brazilians we see, you know, very deep or on final tables of, of coup events. <clears throat> so to, to find out that there's never been a champion, it's, I mean, this is an amazing opportunity for Marcelo Samoas. Um, and look at all those smiles. I mean, we have a real, just good vibes final table, I got to say. You know, not a, not a lot of household names this time around, but, you know, a lot of poker dreams coming true, that Havam interview. Yeah. Was, I mean, biggest sweetheart. Look at these guys. Look at these guys. Uh, do you get extra chips if you win the game of Simon Says? <laughs> so, Joe, what's the deal with Hugo Pickray? We referenced already he won that monster stack, but he doesn't play poker full time now? So, I've heard he's semi retired from poker just because he's such a successful businessman elsewhere. It's like not even really worth his time. Uh, although, when we say he won that monster stack, there were a thousand runners in this event. The monster stack had something like 8,000 runners in it. So, I mean, this guy's done it all. I've just cross referenced 7,862. There you to go. To be precise. Uh, yeah, now classes himself as an entrepreneur and fund manager from France, but currently resides in Dubai. Typically got to be pretty successful yeah, yeah. to set up shop That's in what that Dubai. That's airman. We're like, yeah, that, yeah. Uh, that checks out. <laughs> He's doing all right. He's also, not, I, it's not I hopping do, I in do the big 55. I want to thank Yo Viral for <laughs> giving me that uh, information. Thank you, Johan. Well, it looks like we've got all five <laughs> players. Sorry, all six players. Now we have Marcelo at the table. In this. Oh, no. He's gone away. Maybe he'll come back in a moment. Does he need a go another good luck kiss? Well, he's got to get the celebrations ready to go. Yeah. He's got the Vuvuzela in there. He's got the Brazilian flag. A couple of those things that go, hing, 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 hing. So we're going to pick up the action with 76 minutes left on level 28. Blinds 40, 80 with an 80K big blind ante. And just to remind you of the stacks of the final six players coming into the final day of the EPT Monte Carlo main event, it is Morten Vam from Denmark, who's the chip leader 
with nearly seven and a half million, just ahead of Marcelo Samoas. Pingray, Cernmetz, Cervantes, all around 60, 70 big blinds. Dragos Trofimov, just shy of 40 big blinds. But Griffin, again, something we just keep highlighting, this is a deep stacked event. Yeah, and, and, and no surprise, really, after what we saw yesterday. So many furious eliminations, and that's going to create a very uh, big average stack here at the final table. We are away. Cards are in the air. The final table of the 2022 Monte Carlo main event. It's EPT time. Action has been folded to Hugo Pengray on the button. King nine. The Daug. <laughs> the Jim Belushi. Raises to 180,000 and gets two faults. The man stack his chips, man. No, I mean, that's a great move. You feel like you won a pot already. <laughs> of course, the shot clock still in play. 30 seconds per decision. Any time bank cards left over from the last two days carried forward to today. Five new cards given out before the start of play today. Okay, so there's nobody that has none already. No, but as we discussed earlier this week at the Prague final table in March, we did see some players down to zero cards and literally have 30 seconds per decision. That's how it always should be. That's pure poker. Cervantes, looking good, feeling good, raising 10-9, suited, under the gun. Hail to thee, Sam Grafton. It does not get any more Graftoner than this. Final table, raising under the gun. Now, granted, we are shorthanded, right? So... It's not the same as raising under the gun in a nine-handed final table. Advantageous flop here for Havan with the mid pair and the ace. But one of those boards with the, rain, uh, the range advantage for Cervantes um, could see a lot of extra pressure on, cer on, on, on additional streets. You know, you fire a bet here, turn some, you know, any club a jack, queen, certainly an eight. We're going to see, I think, another big bet from Cervantes, but going to keep it surely small here, standard C bet. One hundred and fifty-five thousand apiece. As this hand goes to the turn, are we going to get one of those action turns? Nope. nope. <laughs> Three <laughs> of diamonds, and Bam now an eighty-five percent favorite. And this is going to be a real tough card um, for Cervantes to, to barrel. We talked about the ones that would. You know, give more equity. You can fold out some sevens and fours. This time, you know, you don't really ha you don't have any of the six fives either as the aggressor here. Spent is under the gun. So you do worry about, you know, the way that Havam could potentially check raise. You really have to tell a story here and try to fold out those ace, four, seven, eight type hands on this turn. And because Havam is the chip leader, you're going to have to bet pretty, pretty big. But Cervantes just goes for it. And to a very large tune of 600. And, and I think the the intention of such a large bet is make it big enough that, you know, no matter what you bet, you're not going to fold out a king. So let's make one more big, big bet here and see if we can get a fold from the mid pairs and the third pairs, you know, maybe even a hand as strong as pocket eights if, if that were, were to be what Havam had. But Havam is reaching for chips and not buying it. 
calls the 600,000. Two million in the middle as we go to the river, which is the jack of spades. The board bricks out for Cervantes. I think the way that this hand is developed speaks a lot to the awareness of Havam. You know, second hand on the final table, suddenly you're facing this pot-sized uh, two-barrel on the turn. You know, some players might just think, uh, okay, I'll just I'll give him this one. But there's there's so much implied sort of dynamic involved in this hand. Am I going to let this strong player who's on my left just bluff me off second pair right away, establishing that I'm willing to, to fold that to that kind of pressure? Once, once Cervantes sees half an hour from now what I ended up folding, that he can just barrel me off a 10 high, what's that going to do for this relationship for the rest of the final? Donkey Kev on YouTube says all GTO pros at this table. I disagree, and I'm shocked that someone called Donkey Kev would make an inaccurate remark. <laughs> Maybe his name is supposed to be Don Quixote, and he's here for Cervantes. Well, we have got our first significant pot of the day going to the chip leader, and Morton Vam's up over 100 big blinds, over 8 million in chips as Cervantes drops down to 3.6 million, 45 bigs. I mean, if we continue to see big seven-figure pots, Griffin, maybe it won't take long to get this final table done today. Especially if they are good at VAM. Opening up the advantage over Marcelo Samoz, who sits in second place on the leaderboard as we get hand number three of the final table underway. Cern Metz, the qualifier, opening under the gun with ace-10 offsuit. Makes it 180k. Yeah, we've spoken about how ace-10, you know, is one of those hands under the gun that maybe you don't always want to always want to raise, but six-handed, it's a slam dunk open for Cern Metz. Cervantes defending his big blind with ace eight. It is a domination situation. And we have a jack nine deuce flop. So much easier when you hit the flop. Yeah. Sonmez should take this down with a bet here, and, and you know you really need to continue here as the under the gun aggressor against the big blind. Sonmez winning that one with a continuation bet. It's quite a loud final table sweater. I, it is. Can you? Could you ever picture, this guy's got four kids, could you ever picture your dad wearing something like that, Griffin? <laughs> Explains why he rarely misses also. There is that gorgeous, gleaming, golden trophy. Should have found another G word there. Well, the main event trophy <laughs> will be presented to one of these six players once we have our winner later tonight. Uh, Dragos Trofimov opening with Queen Jack. Bam folding ace five on the button. Cervantes folds the small blind. Cern Metz with ace seven of hearts in the big blind. What is Chin Mo's anyway? Makes the call. Fair fight. Ace seven of hearts against Queen Jack. Black Queen Jack off here. 
And there is a seven and a jack on the flop. True, it's always coming seven. We have top pair versus second pair. So Mets also with the backdoor flush draw. Yeah, both going to happily continue here. And going to have to find some interesting turn cards. See bet from Trofimov of 150,000. Called by Cernmetz. Turn card is the six of clubs. Cernmetz checks. If Trofimov bets again, Griffin, the Cernmetz call another street? You know, I... I think the situation is similar as it appears. Um, I feel like Sonmez isn't going to be as inclined. You know, more of a middle stack, but we do see the check back here. And we get an inconsequential 10 on the river. Sonmez's hand has not improved. It's somewhat consequential in that it's another overcard to a 7, although True. maybe not mm -hmm. sticking around anyway for this value bet that's likely to follow on the river? I mean, with, with action checked, check, check on the turn, if the river was, you know, red deuce, Sonmez might be inclined to, to call a bet. But you're right, Joe. A 10 is going to complicate things for Sonmez, and, and, and maybe, you know, for the better. More reason to get out of there. Yeah. It just opens up a whole bunch more hand combos. Nope. Yep. A bet of 250,000. Quick call from Cernmetz. And Dragos Trofimov will ship that pot and increase his stack to 3.7 million. No longer the shortest stack at the final table. Let's hear from Dragos. We spoke to him before the start of play today. How do I feel about the final table of the FT Monte Carlo? Well, it's my first, it's the biggest call of my life, and I'm pumped, I'm stoked. All the emotions, anxiety, proudness, grateful, anxious, everything. The tilt and the uh, closeness to being an EPT champion gets my blood pumping, and I'm already thinking ahead, trying to see how to play the table, what I've learned so far about my opponents, and how to best adjust to them. If I were to leave the, the trophy, my thoughts would go to my mom. I I'll just think about what the picture would look like on her wall. Oh, my goodness. The actual sincerity there. Who are I, these guys that you find? They're just all delightful. I, you know, I typically dread doing a winner's interview. I am down for it. Like, e every single one of these folks seems like they're going to be stoked to talk to me. We did establish I was doing it this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's another hashtag fun fact about Dragos. Uh, originally from Moldova, now lives in Northern Ireland, was studying chemistry at university with the intention of taking over his mother's pharmaceutical company. Wow. But has decided to take up poker full time instead. Do you know how much you have to love poker? to walk away from the guaranteed money of a pharmaceutical company <laughs> to slum it and only make a million dollars playing poker? <laughs> poker or drugs, these are the choices. Uh, I did just want to quickly remark on the really astute sizing there, actually, from, from Trofimov in that pot, you know. Um, had every reason, maybe, you'd think at home to, to go for max value there um, on the 10 River. You know, 740000 out there, but 
recognizes what kind of range you put Sonmez on, wants that guaranteed call, and gets the very quick call after betting just a quarter million about third pot. So I think that really speaks to how Trofimov is aware of the ranges, aware of what he can get. And, and, and again, in the interview we saw, you know, I'm going to think about how I can play against these players, what I know already, and I think right there was a great example of that. That's a great point. You know, we focused on Cernmez there and him. Oh, like, oh, he made the, he called with the worst hand uh, and did not focus on what a great value bet it was yeah. uh, to get called so quickly. Yeah. So we've got Marcelo Samoas with the Snowmen's Num Num opens to 160,000 from under the gun. Ace King for Cervantes. Calls in the cutoff. Yeah, everyone's you know, pretty deep. So I think we're probably going to be avoiding some pre-flop flips. Yeah, a lot of situations, you know, you'll feel comfortable getting in 40 to 50 big blinds with Ace-King, but there is something kind of nice and tricky about just flatting, not finding yourself in some big flip and potentially busting six, you know, the ICM implications. You stay under-repped, you know, uh, you, you get some hand, weaker hands in there. Son Mez might... Con come along here with King-10 suited, who would have otherwise folded. So, yeah, I don't mind this at all. I think this is kind of cool. And I really don't mind that fold from Sonmez. I know it seems crazy not to call on the button just for two big blinds, but, you know, you're, you're only playing 40. The, the, the ranges of hands in, this, in, in, the, in these ranges, you know, they're going to have better kings in their hand a lot. So, I, you know, I would, of course, have continued from the big blind, but I think you can fold once there's a fold. We'll call it the cutoff here. See, on the one hand, you've got some pot odds, right, that you like a little bit. But on the other hand, you have to factor in being dominated a fair amount of the time, right, by King Jack, Queen Jack, Strong Ace King. Strong players who will pressure you. And then you put more money in there, and you maybe get squeezed out of the small or big blind. And That's another good point, yeah. And you're just flushing chips down the yeah. toilet. Having said that, though, forget everything <laughs> yes, you said because it's a flush on the flop. On the flop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These guys don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> so a continuation bet from Samoa, still has the best hand with, an, uh, with a pair of eights. Pretty clear continue here um, for Cervantes. You know, sometimes you're losing, of course, but you're never folding ace-king on this flop. Could just be your standard continuation bet. If the ace of clubs is the turn, I would please like a, a pen camera pen to uh, Sonmez. <laughs> Show his face. <laughs> yeah. So Vancey's calls 205,000 on the flop. Seven of hearts on the turn. And Samoa's now close to a nine to one favorite. Slows down and checks. Huh. Yeah, I think this is pretty standard. You know, you, as, as much as um, you like that turn card, the seven. Um, you know, you don't want to just keep betting into, like if we see him flatting ace-king here, could certainly be flatting some other really big hands. You don't want to bet and get shoved on the turn here. So I really don't mind the, the check as he makes the straight here on the river. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. I can confirm, yeah. Joe, he has a straight. He does have a straight, but also king ten of clubs. <laughs> Samoa's checks, he ain't gonna, I mean, what can really, what can really bet into you there? I guess pure bluffs, right? Just. <laughs> Marcelo Samoa's is a 55-year-old entrepreneur from Rio de Janeiro. I've heard of it. A seasoned live player, making only his second trip to Europe. He is currently second in the BSOP Player of the Year rankings. Is it messed up all these Brazilians play poker now and they're like, we're not doing the series at the Rio anymore? You got fog on your glasses. That's Home field advantage, not That's happening. He <laughs> doesn't put fog yeah, with the mask. Oh boy, here we go. Five four suited for chip leader Morton Vam. Opening from under the gun to 180,000. One of the very successful pros watching on YouTube said e uh, six handed, even six five suited is a mandatory raise under the gun. Here we are. 
with five four suited. Um, in the in the, as the chip leader or in general, who who, who said this? Didn't specify. Just one of oh. the very successful pros watching on YouTube. Oh, pros. Oh, oh, yeah. oh I got it. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. He's being facetious. I got it. no. I know. I know. I just I, I was taking it literal for some reason, and I just uh, went, went off the rails. Five four suited on the gun as the chip leader. Um, Havam certainly can can do this and should have been six five suited. Yeah, yeah. Big blind defend by Marcelo, who has flopped nothing, but 10 high is the best hand right now. Oh my God, Crazy Carl just reminded me. It's I don't know if we can do chat pro Saturday right. in a final table. We really can't do Overruled. it. <laughs> Overruled. Overruled. What's chat pro Saturday? On Saturdays, chat pros are never wrong. Okay. It's his thing. I never endorsed James it to start James hates it with. to begin with, and I just don't think he's going to let it fly on a final table where there's a million dollar, a million euros up top. Yeah. It's just not going to, it's not going to fly. Why are the commentators talking in British English? Well, what you mean? I, I don't quite understand the question. I mean, I have a British accent because I'm British. Yeah. Joe is American. Griffin's Canadian. You, sir, have been banned from the channel. <laughs> How do you say thank you in English? Thank you. Thank you? How do you say comment? Comment. Thank you for your comment. In it? <laughs> That's going to be the level of comment. Chat Pro Saturday is banned for life. That's the other thing, too, is that, like, I would maybe extend Chat Pro Saturday to Twitch, but now that YouTube is a part of the equation, I just, I mean. And eight of the final table folded to the blinds, and Marcelo Samoa's in the small is going to raise to 205,000 with King Six offsuit. Chip leader Morton Vam. Has 10-3 in the big and defense. And I really think this is a, an important first little, little skirmish between these two guys simply because it really establishes that dynamic going forward. You see how Ooh. Havam prepared to call effectively 100% of range here facing this raise because you don't want your first altercation here for you to just folding to a two and a half X raise. Why? Uh, well, who cares? Leader. What's the big deal about that? Why can't you fold 10-3 well, offsuit? Listen, if, if all, all things the same, if this was standard between two regs, uh, you know, I think, I think uh, like the super high roller, 10-3 would just be folded from the big blind. But um, it's just a bit different here. The sizing's a bit interesting. You don't really see two and a half X raises from the small blinds. So you're getting a much better price. Um, you know, obviously, Havam is going to have a lot of information about the way that Samoa's plays. You know, if Samoa's made it 250,000 here, I don't think I don't think Havam is calling. Also, I will say that we've seen a tendency from Havam over the course of day three and four where it was calling very wide from the big blind. I think I remember correctly, like a Jack Deuce uh, that was called, I think actually even a 10-4. So I don't think Havam likes to fold that big blind. So it's still a pair of kings against a pair of tens. Are you worried that this nine is a bad card for you if you have king six here? Yeah, I am. But you have to bet it anyway. I mean, you don't have to. Uh, this, I think this more plays as like kind of a blocker bet, not wanting to check and have your opponent, you know, fire something like seven, eight hundred. But frankly, it is opening up the door for her Vam here. Yeah. Um, you know, Samoa's clearly, clearly doesn't have a, a flush very often checking the turn. And Havam might deduce would bet significantly larger with a straight. And actually just calls putting him on stone air, maybe ace high. And more chips for Marcelo Samoa's. Up to 96 big blinds, mm -hmm. chasing the heels yeah. of Morton Bam. Real close. Yeah. The Nautilus was also beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
that Brazilian rail is both really, really sweet and also a tad lame in equal measure. Be careful what you wish for. No, I want to see it, buddy. Oh, you do? I want to see it. I've seen what happens at the BSOP. I remember those final tables from the LAPT. That's what I want. I want emotion. I want excitement. I want flags. I want screaming. I want Neymar. <laughs> just comes out. <laughs> oh, that would be dope if Neymar just like yeah. strolled down to the rail or to rail Samaras. Cervantes happily taking the walk, taking his Cervanti back. Hawkagen, you've asked a great question that has a very complicated answer. Yeah. As far as blind levels are concerned, we're playing 90-minute levels, but there is the capacity to adjust those levels as the field gets smaller. We are conscious of the fact that this is a shorter main event in terms of days than some of the other stops on the tour, and none of us wants to be here at 4 in the morning. And I'm talking about the players, not just everyone involved in the running of the event and the live stream as well. So we will be flexible with level durations based on the number of players remaining. Can you imagine how disappointing it must have been for Manning Lurzer to have won the last Monte Carlo main event and not get to talk to me afterward because it was so late, I wasn't even here. We don't want to deny that opportunity to players. I actually have heard a rumor that he's still hoping that you might interview him about it, <laughs> like <laughs> waiting by the phone, you know? Hello, darkness, my old friends. And, you know, even you, the viewers, don't want to watch an 11-hour heads-up match. On the subject of a passionate rail, SPC Starfighter says, just as long as the flags, screaming, etc., aren't disrespectful to the other players, I think, I don't know how they do it, but the Latin American fans find a way to be really excited and energetic without being too obnoxious. We'll see. Wow, very curious to see Jack 10 off folded at the cutoff and yet 5 4 suited, open under the gun. This might speak to, uh, you know, a bit of a strategical thing from Vam, but I think actually much more than that, maybe a. Uh, being a little spooked from losing that hand uh, to Samoa's doesn't want to just uh, get right back involved. It's kind of a tendency you see, you know, maybe you can stray from the game plan a little bit. You don't want to get back involved. You feel like maybe you've made a mistake making that river call. But also, again, could be more strategic about the kind of players that you want to open uh, light against, maybe not wanting to attack Ping Ray's big blind. And in fairness, Ping Ray did have the king, queen of diamonds, which is gorgeous. Bickard Man on YouTube asked, do you guys have a podcast? Glad you asked. We do. Poker in the Ears is the podcast that Joe and I host. Award winning. New episodes most week. Thank you, Griffin. Yes. Wait, is there an episode next week? It'll be the week after. We're going to be <laughs> a couple of weeks into Scoop. So we'll have in the running updates on the spring championship of online poker. We'll have our full Monte Carlo recap plus more. And, of course, we always try and get a good guest on the show. John Hamm, Eric Seidel, among the people we've spoken to in recent months. Uh, wherever you consume your podcasts, you'll find us there. Just search Poker in the Ears. And why not subscribe? I, I walked past uh, Eric Seidel on the way into the casino last night. I go, hey, Eric. And he, I could tell because I have my mask on. He, and I go, it's Stapes. And he still didn't know who I was. <laughs> <laughs> So CERN Mets has opened on the button with the Spraggy, A7 offsuit. How much poker does John Hamm watch? I really, I really need to watch that interview. I'm not sure how much he watches. But he does love the game. Yeah. That much is clear. Yeah. And nice Rebe one. Ping Ray. Yeah, great, great candidate for a small blind three bet. The the suited wheel ace, you know, you got that blocker and it plays a lot easier post-flop because, you know, maybe you flop one heart, 
Maybe you turn another one, feel there's more maneuverability in, in, in those three bet pots post flop. So gonna fold out the better hand, the A7. Tito says, John Ham, the actor? <laughs> yep, that one. He has charisma. John Ham, the inventor of ham. So we've reached the midway point of level 28, 45 minutes to run on this 40K, 80K blind level. And we've seen an under the gun raise from the chip leader with Queen Jack. Ping Ray with Jack eight of clubs on the button. I mean, the fact that Ping Ray hasn't quickly folded this suggests to me that very prepared to play against the chip leader. This is quite a loose call here. You know, you're up against an under the gun range. Granted, it is six handed. There's two people behind that might wake up with, I don't know, like a big <laughs> sort of <laughs> premium. <laughs> Double suited. Yeah. Slam dunk, small blind, three betting hand. Yeah. You know, something, I don't know. I can't, can't think of a hand right now, but. Well, we just saw Trofimov play a time bank card, so an additional 30 seconds loaded onto the shot clock. Good work, Bernie. All in. And Trofimov all in with just over 40 big blinds, and this will be greeted by quick calls. Yeah, like this, it just it just plays clean, folds. you know. I meant to say just... folds, Griffin. <laughs> Quick folds. Want to make it clear? We do not have a multi-way all in. Nice little take down there. Plays a lot easier than just squeezing. Don't want to get calls from hands like Jack Eight suited. <laughs> try, no. to, try to like, yeah, oh, let's see, let's go. <laughs> And 14 of the final table. Action starts with Cervantes. He's folded. Cern Metz passes. All right, Hugo, what you got? 8-6 in the muck. Dragos Trofimov had ace-king on the last hand, now picks up kings on the button. You guys can have either of the blinds. I'll take Trofimov. No. <laughs> nice try. Well, no, still not. <laughs> Simo's with the Spraggy, A7 offsuit. Here's a hashtag fun fact. A7 offsuit is Spraggy's favorite hand, and he's never won a pot with it in his life. Uh-oh. Yeah, unfortunate, but and quite seems reasonable. Big, four hundred forty thousand. I've noticed Samoa's re-raises are uh, chunky. It's actually a bit on. Uh, sorry to be that guy, but it's actually a bit on the small small side. One sixty to four forty out of position. It's oh. less than three x. Good um, point. Yeah. Bad bad math on my part. So I think yeah, the standard out of position here. I think you'd probably find something. Um, closer to 600. But yes, the amounts are getting big. It can often be a little disorienting. You get used to 440 being a huge re raise yeah, yeah, yesterday exactly. and yeah. today. It's like, no, actually, that's uh, it's less like than 2.2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's uh, about 2.6. Certainly, I think could could be closer to standard in position but out of position you know you don't you don't really want your opponent calling here when you're three betting with a7 you want to fold out you know hands like king jack but to that price and i and you know i, I think trofimov's gonna be too tempted to to make a four bet here but um 
And that should be the last of it. Of course, Samoa's a little suspicious. Yeah. You messing with me, bro? You're the one who's messing, Samoa's. But he might feel he's being bullied by the button, Griffin. Bullied by the button. Baby. He folds. So Dragos Trofimov is working his way up the leaderboard. Now sits in third place ahead of Cern Metz and Cervantes. I mean, every time I see an interview with one of these guys, I just instantly am, become a huge fan and want them to win. And that was the last interview we saw. Yeah. He, you know, I want to do it for his, for his mama now. Get the, the photo, you know? He's added one and a half million to his stack over the course of this final table. Now playing 57 bigs. Won a million a hand so far. Increasing the stack by 50%. That's the way to do it. And 15. Nine eight of diamonds for Hugo Pingray. Oh, yeah. Hugo calling moments ago with Jack 8 suited on the button. Looks like he I likes love, I love suited connectors. Suited. Here, tell you what, Grafton can be the 10 9 suited. I want Grifton to be the 9 8 suited. The Grifton. <laughs> <laughs> I'll allow it. <laughs> The raise is to 180,000. Morton Vam has 9-7 suited in the small blind. The Grifton Jr. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like these hands because they remind me of 1997 and 1998. It was a simpler time. Yeah, those were good years. Vam calls in the small. Cervantes ace-10 offsuit in the big. He calls as well. That means we are going three way to the flop. And that flop is ace, king, six. Two hearts. Cervantes, near enough a nine to one favorite in this three way pot. We'll be curious to see if Ping Ray decides to use that range advantage and rep on this board. You know, you have a little backdoor potential, the 9-8 of diamonds. It, it takes optimism to raise 9-8 of diamonds, and if you're that sort of optimist, you've got a flush draw and a straight draw right now. <laughs> yeah, but what's, what's really great about this particular clash between Cervantes and Ping Ray is that I think Cervantes is probably one of the more aware and prepared to call down barrels of players on this table. And we learned that yesterday with the ace-queen high call to start the final, not the just that final hand. table. And not just that hand. So this is a very interesting clash because it's someone who I think is prepared to bluff in Ping Ray and Cervantes who's a pair, uh, you know, prepared to call. So it's one of those you know, Wild West situations. Well, we get the eight of clubs on the turn. A bit of equity for Ping Ray, but... Still a 9-1 to advantage for Cervantes. Suffice to say, Morton Vam folded on the flop to the C-bet from Ping Ray. Now, question. A lot of times when a player picks up a pair on the turn and slows them down, they have showdown value. But I feel like, in this case, is this enough showdown value? Well, not really, because yeah. the kind of hands that Cervantes is going to call is ace rag, which is going to, is, is, which, you know, you're losing okay. against, you know, King, King X a lot of the time, too but then some flush draws that might just fold on the turn. So maybe you just want to be betting really big. He is going really big, yeah. Griffin. This yeah. is 800,000 into a million. Who is going to blink first in this spot? Well, you know they say, don't try to bluff a rich guy. Mm -hmm. But what about a rich guy bluffing? Is it the same in reverse? I would not be feeling great about Ace-10. I'd be thinking about domination situation a lot here. Well, Cervantes has just thrown in a time bank card. Wants more time to consider his decision.
And it's not like I went in today thinking Ping Ray is opening hands like this constantly from early position. Well, Cervantes makes the call, and we are going heads up to the river with 2.6 million in the pot. The river card is the ace of hearts. Barry Greenstein makes an appearance, giving Cervantes trips. And has less than pop behind. The thing is that's interesting about this spot for Ping Ray. If, if this is how DP wants to go down the rabbit hole of thinking about this hand, which very well playing for this kind of money, Cervantes shouldn't really have any boats and any flushes. That's the reality. Often going to be capped at an ace here. Not a ton of heart combos that would keep calling here on the turn for 800k when you only have 2.6 million. So a lot of the time, you know, you're going to have a hand like ace 10, ace 9. So if Ping Ray wants to get real bold and... He has. He's called for the triangle. He's shoved on Cervantes. Okay, so your point that you're making there is because he's not going to have a, a lot of boats and flushes that... That he might be able to fold, fold out an ace. Yeah. Because the kind of hands that would barrel here, Ping Ray could certainly have, you know, Queen Jack of Hearts. Um, uh, you know, some of the heart combos are knocked out because of that 10 of hearts that Cervantes is holding. Um, you know, pocket kings are a hand here. Pocket sixes, pocket eights. Um, a lot of different... You know, you just have to put your opponent on a stone bluff. There's no, he's, not, he's not value betting a, a worse hand here. So you're only beating pure bluffs. So I know, you know, you're at home, you're looking at this, you're like, what are you talking about? You have trip aces, like, just call. Well, you know, think about the situation. You have to assume that your opponent playing for a million euros is just bluffing all in with nothing here. Boom, Good. boom, boom, three streets. Good players are going to fold an ace here sometimes. I think so, yeah. It is all in to call, and Cervantes has played two time bank cards already. You are only beating bluffs here. I mean, we've saw we've seen him catch many bluffs, but none in this dire of a circumstance. It's never been for his tournament life. It's only been for. I mean, this is a, the, the, such chips. an incredible turning point. You know, it's going to be the 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 call that propels Cervantes probably to a top three finish, and you know, a bluff goes through that Ping Ray is just going to be vaulted up the chip stack. Um, king sixes or ace king. Six left. Six left. That was a yeah, fold. It does fold. Lays it down. The bluff gets through. Hugo Pingray Ooh, up to second place. Mm -hmm. In cool. fact, pretty much tied for the chip lead with Morton Vam as Jaime Cervantes drops down to 22 bigs. Is that a six? I guess he had a six. Ooh. Don't fold to the rich guy from Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> Sickest hand of the final table so far. Huge pot for Ping Ray. Hello, welcome. Again. How many dinners do they have for the table? What do we got, Hardigan? I think that might be a platinum day date. Because they have to so he was the one with the quarter million dollar watch, yeah. right? Yesterday, Obviously, I it was a Patek Philippe 5712. He was wearing the Nautilus yesterday, the rose gold Nautilus. <laughs> I think that might be a platinum diamond dial Rolex day date. Which is, do you got an approximate figure for me here? I'm not Nico Leonard. I can't correctly <laughs> I identify could, the watch, I and I can't get... give you the value. Okay, if you think it's the watch, you think it is. Okay, let me let me use Dr. Google. Yeah, yeah. Call you call the doctor. And Ping Ray wakes up with Kings in the very next hand and gets to genuinely raise from early position with a monster. One of the hands he could have easily had on the last hand, shoving that river. And you see how important that range advantage can be when you're the guy raising under the gun. You can rep. You can say, I have ace king. I have kings here. I have sixes, eights. It's not just that, though. You also have to accurately have figured out that your opponent is a good enough player to, to fold to, an yeah. ace there because... Yeah. which And you've been playing with them for days. Right. So that's what's so great. makes it even more impressive. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But it's a very special thing, you know, playing with these players days on days on days. Well, just taking you down to the floor to check on the action in the 25K that concludes today. Ten players remaining. Davide Katai, Manig Lurza, and Demita Danchev. All of them EPT main event champions. All of them in the last 10. 
Um, you saw the shot as well. Does that look like the watch? Yeah. That looks pretty close, yeah. What are we working okay, with here? so that is the day date meteorite diamond $25. dial. $25. 150,000 on the gray market right now. Why is he going down? <laughs> Yesterday it was 250, now he's 150. What is he going to be? Uh, oh, it's a Rolex. Taking his winner's photo with, a, with, a, with, an, with an 80K watch? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Only 150,000? What a joke. <laughs> Just unbelievable. Vom. Vom, you put that down. You know, um, you know, my mom's in town. I'm supposed to spend the next couple of days with her. But if I Ping, do remember if, this. If, if Ping Ray wins and I somehow end up on a plane to Dubai. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomorrow's Mother's Day. I, I, I'm going to go. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Mom. I'm going to go. Yeah. Send you pictures. Love you. Now, as much as this appears that Vom has found his hand caught in the cookie jar, this isn't always going to be played as a four bet from Samoa. As we saw the slow play sure. with Cervantes with the ace king, you know, you don't want to just four bet blast with ace king here necessarily. And you can, you can, you can do it. I'm not saying you won't do it. I'm just saying, you know, some sometimes want to play a little more cautious. But. Uh, Samoas didn't come here to play small ball, all right? Hydron says, like, the guy with a $150,000 watch is going to fly a commercial. Come on. At what point did I say yeah. like he the, was going to fly, gonna com fly commercial? No, no, no. Like, he's going to be on. I, I said I would end yeah. up on his, his plane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can we please ban that person? <laughs> Get out of here. I can't have that kind of energy. Ban them all. Uh, Samoas has just taken the chip lead, by the way, guys. The Brazilian now playing 7.7 .7 million, a 96 big blind stack. It is really close at the top, though. There is not a lot separating Samoas, Pingray, and Vam. All three over 7 million right now. I'm putting some distance between themselves and the rest of the field. Cervantes, the low man at the table, 22 bigs, and the blinds go up in 29 minutes' time. No, Samoes. You just want to pot. Give him a second. Oh, He's got to go see his rail. Oh, come on. This may be the most honest YouTube comment I've ever read. If there was a way to give the opposite of a ban, I would give it to you, Block Hubler. How much did you start with? These guys are playing for life-changing money, and I'm just here playing free rolls. Lol. Clap. Um, so... Based on what you said there, there is actually a way that you can give him the opposite of a ban. You'll just have to ban him first. <laughs> <laughs> I'll save him the time. Five in the window. Oh, and Cervantes, no. Two straight cards to go with it. Isn't this what they call the Bob Fosse, James? Five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> I like it. Right now they're calling it the Bob Trophy. When is Joe Stapleton going to hit puberty? I'm not going to hit puberty today, but you know what I am going to hit? The ban button. <laughs> Thank you for your comment. You're banned. I got nothing for the Bob Trophy, huh? Trophy off, flopping best, nothing. It's a long day. It's a long day. You don't got to get them all out in the first hour. <laughs> yeah, not Cervantes board here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice river, sir. Oh, yeah. Do you think we should change the river to the waterfall so we can tell people to not go chasing them? Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. I'm going to work on that. Trofimov checks.
Trofimov going to have to deduce if Cervantes is trying to creep, creep into this pot. Astaren feels bad for Cervantes. I'm not sure why. 220,000 is the value bet. Half pot. Quite a difficult call to make here, I think, for Trofimov. Uh, simply because Cervantes was, was really repping that he had something like ace high, king high, checking down. But thinks the five is too strong, wants to see it, and is going to pay it off. So Cervantes now closer to 30 than 20 big blinds. 27 years old from Vancouver in Washington Ooh. State. We've referenced a few times this is his first ever trip to Europe. Only turned pro in autumn of 2020, and suffice to say, most of his caches, all of his big results have been in the USA, but he has had a couple of caches at this festival, including that deep run in the record-breaking FPS main event. My first trip to Europe, I shared a bed with my boss and got ripped off by a pedicab driver. Quite a different experience. <laughs> yeah, much, uh, much sexier story here for Cervantes. <laughs> I, went to, I went to Monte Carlo and got bluffed by a. Now, hold on a second. You don't know the circumstances of me sharing the bed. That might be sexy. <laughs> it wasn't, but. Morton Vam opening with sevens. Started the day as chip leader. In fact, he's been the chip leader for a long period of time, but currently sits in third place just. I can't even remember like a big pot he played. He just always was chip leader. Yeah, there is something to that. So for those of you interested in Ping Ray's watch, Cario points out that it does look like the platinum, but with factory set diamonds. Ugh, gross. Well, that would raise the value. So oh, we're I mean, talking awesome. about 200K plus. If they're factory set, it raises the value. If they're aftermarket diamonds, it lowers the value. I see. Three, six. So if you glue the diamonds on yourself, the value goes down. Correct. You basically ruin the watch. This is not, not to distract from that. I'm really interested in the watch stuff. But this is a very um, strange three bet selection here from Trofimov. Small blind to the chip leaders. Well, one of the chip leaders under the gun open. Um, you know, maybe wanting to start pushing things, attack certain opens. It's you a know, boredom maybe, three bet. Maybe aware, aware of Vam's, um, you know, loose opens early position. We saw the 6 5 suited and the like. But this particular holding, as, as he does outflaw Vam, is just not the kind of, you know, one you want to target. Maybe something like King Jack off if you want to get ambitious. You know, some one of those wheel aces, something with blockers, something with potential. 10-9, it's just... Obviously, I see that this flop is great, and it happens to be really good for the hand that he's up against, which is the 7-7, seven, seven, but this is a bit off the wall. If I'm if I'm being frank, I mean, Vam's going to continue with, you know, a bunch of better tens, a bunch of a couple of better nines. So let's say that you do three bet ten nine, and then you flop a ten on a queen high board. Yeah, this check is fine actually. I, I, I think. It's important not to be results oriented. Now we're just trying we to get this, now we're just trying to yeah, get the show Yeah, yeah, you don't want to bet in day. That's another thing is that the kind of hands that Vam is going to call has a ton of queens, king queen, ace queen, um, you know, queen jack suited. So trough him off at this stage doesn't want to just bloat the pot just to. So it's fine. The check is definitely correct, right? I just wouldn't want to. Uh... Get to showdown with 10 9 offsuit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah.
Brandon Yang tweets from his free YouTube account, diamond equals lose money. I didn't think of it like that. Thank and you for your comment. Hello. You were saying? And you know what? This is a great card for Trofimov. <laughs> and not because he just made a straight. I mean, that's great. But didn't need to make the straight. But because he's going to be able to do exactly what you said, Joe. Not, not show sure 10 now. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're going to have to bet this straight, bud. You know, uh, you got to start getting value from some hands. Oh, no. Oh, boy. He is going to eat everything about this. Not what you want. And Vam looking a bit perplexed. Yeah, this is why. You have what? And why didn't you just bet the mm. river? I just don't want to get yelled at. Yummy, yummy. I mean, your opponent could even call with something like Ace Jack on the river there. Like, obviously, you're sure representing you Ace King kind of oh, by checking it down one. and betting river, but that was you the know. whole plan. Otherwise, I wouldn't have checked all the way. Now, your guy's licking your fingers, and then I'm going to only play kings. <laughs> <laughs> it's a setup. Yeah. It's all a setup. They were all twits. They're all confused. It's, it's really uh, it's really off the wall. So reminder, Trofimov started the day as the shortest stack. is now playing 60 big blinds. Uh, we don't have a short stack at this final table. Jaime Cervantes, 28 bigs. Not in the danger zone. Everything's relative. Yeah. Eight. Including my wife. Uh, that was, that was, that's an Albert Einstein quote. He, he married his cousin. Gotcha. Full genius. This is hand 20 of the final table. It's Savancis' turn to have sevens. Folds them under the gun. Yeah, it's just it's just tricky to play six-handed. People can put some pressure on you. I, I think I would probably open, especially, you know, sometimes you just kind of have to feel the vibe on the table a little bit. And I'm telling you right now, um, Drago's Trofimov is going to play tight this hand, <laughs> you know, so, and then he's playing the button. So it kind of, I'm not saying it eliminates a player, but it, you're, you're playing closer to 5.4 handed. you got to three bet yeah. the next hand, no matter what. <laughs> yeah. No matter what, please. Yeah, you should. you got to three bet this. Yeah. You just got done saying the next time <laughs> it's going to be for real. It's great. It's a great move. It really is. But I think would more likely do it to, to ping Ray at the cutoff here than under the gut. You know what I'm saying? I don't think he looks at ace eight and really decides to attack the under the gun open after that. But maybe the cutoff, but no, he's out of there. Aces oh, 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 oh. in the hey, small blind. There's five hands behind those sevens when you're opening them, and it's you know it's not the greatest spot. I think it's an interesting kind of discipline to fold those sevens. The re-raise is to four hundred thousand, and the action is back on ping rate. It's all about Les Benjamins. And this is going to induce a call here, absolutely. Um, and this is, you know, I think this sizing speaks to maybe a little bit of inexperience from Simos. I mean, this is a, this is a very silly sizing, just 400,000. It's been made 180, and you've gone up to 400. I, I mean, I know it's cool to, like, get your a customer in there when you have aces, but... You know, you're giving a heck of a price to a player that's <laughs> willing to put you in a real tough situation. Aces are nice to play, though. Jack, Jack, four on the flop. I mean, Ping, Ping Ray got three aces to fold before. Surely he can get two aces to <laughs> fold. <laughs> well spotted. All right, who do we have there? So the lady is Bianca, who is Marcella's wife. It is unfair, uh, the yeah. guy in the middle is Luca Scafini, who won the <laughs> FPS main event last Thick, week. Best of the field of nearly 2,000 runners. Uh, and the guy in the beanie, Bellamino D'Souza, is one of Marcello's closest friends. Beanie Bellamino. I mean, can you imagine... Scafini wins the FPS main, and then his buddy Marcelo 
wins the EPT main. Brazil oh. takes two trophies in the two biggest events. On I mean, the schedule. it would be about time, it sounds like. It's probably exactly what's going to happen in Scoop next week. Tomorrow, I guess. Yeah, Scoop does indeed start tomorrow. By the way, that song they were singing sounded quite complicated. <laughs> John Shecky says it means ole ole, the Simons will hit the tourney. Not really sure that's much of a translation. <laughs> I mean, that was. Maybe someone should translate that. Fam versus Cervantes. Blind v blind, unraised pre, and an ace king five flop. I'd like to see it continue from Cervantes here, uh, but it's, it's tough to do when you've been losing some pots. I think Vam's gonna bet most of his range there, almost all his range on the flop there. But then might keep betting, and if you only have queen high, and you, you know, it's going to be tough to stick around. So I understand the fold, even if you think sometimes you're ahead. I think it's really important for Cervantes to not let that crazy hand against Ping Ray be the story of your final table. Really try to have some perspective. Be grateful that you're in this position. Understand that these things do happen, whether losing a big all-in or getting bluffed in a spot that's, I mean, it's incredibly difficult to call. It's not like he made a mistake. He was just, you know, thrown in the cellar by this guy that just was absolutely, you know, blasting away in such an advanced way. And uh, and it's, it's you just, you just got to keep your head above water and find a way to stay in there because there's still a lot of poker left. Let's say that... Um Ping Ray was just ham fisting aggression. Is there a way to tell the difference between an advanced bluff and a just a complete baseball bat swinging through a crowd? Not always. I yeah. would say in this consistency is, yeah, is yeah. how you prove that, right? Well, I would say it's, it, it actually helps by a case by case basis. I think the fact that. Um, the kind of the nuance of the actual board run out in that in that he did turn a pair of an eights. Sometimes people when they're just when they're bluffing they need absolutely nothing right. or have picked up a, a, a draw on the turn or something. But the, being aware enough that even though I have this pair now I have showdown value I'm going to keep bluffing and then the ace that that card a hundred times out of a hundred improves my opponent's hand. Not a lot of people are prepared once the card... Actually, we know this improves my opponent. It makes him three of a kind. And now I still have to go for this. So uh, I think that speaks we're to... We're going to give the credit. That speaks to credit, absolutely. Um, we had, do see Samoa's out-flopping Sonmez here with the ace-8. Always an ace on the desk. And the snowmen's 4%. Action checked to the pre-flop aggressor. I love your bingo card, guys. Ace on the desk within the first level. And <laughs> Samoz is going to continue into a pot of 470,000. He bets 135,000. You hate this flop of Sunmez, especially because it's kind of nice how underrepped, how strong your hand really is from the big blind facing a cutoff open. Oh, a cheeky check raise from the qualifier. Sunmetz makes it 325k, Griffin. Yeah, this, this just isn't good. Um, you know, maybe not believing Simos, feel, feel, feeling like 
cheated by this board when you had such a strong preflop hand. You know, not believing in therefore wanting to just instead play it as a raise because you feel more comfortable as the aggressor. That's really all I can deduce from it, but it, you're just bloating up a pawn. I mean, it's not great. Well, Sir Metz has a single out. Yeah. The Eight of Hearts is the only live card in the deck for him. Silver lining, maybe you find out that's time to give up in this hand. I mean, just creating an additional street of action when you literally could have one or two outs, you know. It's just not uh, not the best polka. Is that hat binding? <laughs> Can you imagine, if you turn your head to the side, the dealer will take that yeah, that's as confirmation that, that, that yeah, you are all Yeah, that's why he has it on the left side, because, you know, that's actually kind of cool. He should do that. <laughs> check, check on the turn. River. It's Deuce not, of spades. Not always coming seven with this hand. A reminder, Sermet's defended his big blind. Check raised the flop. Turn went check, check. And now on the river with a pot of 1.1 million, what's he going to do? I would say as a rule, I mean, I think we can figure that maybe Sermet just didn't really know what to do on this flop. But when, you're ch when you don't really know what to do, don't choose the option that makes the pot bigger because yeah. this isn't this isn't your pot right this isn't the one you, you don't you don't you're not sure you have the best hand you're not confident you're out of position don't make the pot bigger when you're at a disadvantage and that's i think that's the maybe the layman's way you can put it so with so Metz checking samoa's bets 235,000. small bet on the river And the fold from hey. Sun Mets. <laughs> well, we talked about the fact that it was a three way tie at the top of the leaderboard. Marcelo <laughs> Samoas has put some distance between himself and Ping Ray and Vam. He has close to 9 million now. He's playing 110 big blinds. Ping Ray playing 6.8 million. Morton Vam playing 6.5 million. So they're pretty close together, but Samoa's increasing his advantage. Chip leader with six players remaining at the final table of this EPT Monte Carlo main event. By the way, if you guys do love Brazilian energy, Brazilian passion, and ludicrous over-celebrations, mm -hmm. we've got a treat for you in the break coming up in seven and a half minutes' time. Nice. A soccer game? It might as well be with the amount of shouting that goes on, but nope, it's poker. Bam, raising here. 225,000 with a6. Ping Ray in the big blind with 10-7. And it's a fold. So 23 hands played at the final table so far. And not insignificant amount of chip movement that's seen Jaime Cervantes become the shortest stack at the table. And this guy, Marcelo Samoa, become chip leader. I'm, I love how into his wife he is. It's so sweet. <laughs> Oh, 
Pocket Fours. He's got the sailboats. You did see Ace Three suited fold under the gun here from the chip leader. But a pocket pair. Just the the thought of hitting a set. Yeah. It's like so yeah. much more tempting. Uh, yeah. I mean I mean look at his player photo. That's the kind of photo of a guy who likes to loves flop sets, you know. Loves flopping sets. Yeah. Also, you know, I don't know if there's actually any theory behind this, but when you make the nuts with ace three suited, it's pretty obvious. When you flop a set of fours... I mean, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if I entirely agree with that. You don't yeah, think so? Appear the... and go, there's, oh, there's a flush out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Versus, oh, there's maybe a set of fours out there. Yeah, yeah. Well, he decided to take a few chips from his pyramid. Made it 160,000. Morton Vam calling with ace nine of diamonds. And everyone else is folded, so we're going heads up to the flop. It's just incredible to me how, like, even, like, extremely right I was about what we said about Trofimov. Like, he just folded King-10 off from the big blind for one big blind, but he threw bet 10-9 off from mm -hmm. the small blind against the chip. Like, it's just, it's, 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 he, you got to complete there with King-10 for the one chip, one. you know? But, like we spoke about, when you do something that's kind of out of the ordinary, you get away with it. It's, 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 it's the, I think the human instinct is to shrink up a bit and be like, "Hey, I need to." <laughs> I just got away with one there. And speaking of getting away with one, Simos wouldn't get away with a bet here, James. No, absolutely <laughs> not. Top pair, top kicker, nut flush draw. This is all about Vam, and he is betting this flop with the action check to him. He's going to stick in three hundred and sixty thousand. James, it's always about family. And I think, family. Yeah, that's, that's a good discipline fold, fold from, from Simos. Took some pause, be like, uh, it's kind of a low board. I have a pocket pair here, but you don't want to get in, in, in murky waters here. And he was in real dark ones. You don't want to go runner, <laughs> runner straight no. there. Uh, although I will say, if, if he did turn a four, it would be really disguised. And nobody would know. <laughs> I'm making fun of what you said about the. Oh, I know. So, you know, yeah. I'm well aware. <laughs> he was looking at me just like, I hate you. Well, less than five minutes to go until the break. Blinds will be up on the other side of that break. We'll be going to 5,100. That's the blind level when the human calculator comes into his own. Beep, bop, boop, bop, beep. Don't, don't, don't turn them on yet. <laughs> we need normal check. Joe for another three minutes. Cervantes folds. Ace 10 offsuit for Cern Mets in the cutoff. Just to highlight once again, Erkin Cern Mets won his package, won his seat to Monte Carlo for 530 euros and is guaranteed at least 167 grand. And he's raised to 175,000. Two kids draped over each leg while he was playing the satellite. <laughs> <laughs> Had to make dinner. I mean, that's all Help thinking, with homework. <laughs> thinking about it's 167,000. It doesn't go that far with four kids. <laughs> oh, big blind defend from the chip leader with 6-4 offsuit. Yeah, I think this is uh, speaks to how Simos just feels quite comfortable playing against Sonmez. You know, you already got one chip in there. It's, it's, it's really not that out of the ordinary to call, you know, this is this is kind of maybe one notch too weak. I think you're supposed to call maybe six five, seven six, seven eight kind of thing, but six four maybe just a little outside of what you're supposed to call because you're maybe up against someone who's not one of the strongest players on the table. Continuation bet and a fold. 
And I guess we're going to squeeze in hand at 26. Squeeze it in, squeeze it in, squeeze mm. it in. Chino Mo's. Uh, it's actually pronounced Chino Machinos. Um. Basically, as many as you see, you have to pronounce them all the words. <laughs> One word. <laughs> Don't start at the top of the arm, man. That hoodie does look like something out of a Ghibli movie. My girlfriend watched a Ghibli movie last night. Which one? Yeah, Tales from Earthsea. Oh, didn't appear to be one of the better ones. But they're all on Netflix. I think they're all on HBO Max in America. Yeah, in Canada, and it appears to be here. They're on Netflix, I think. What's your certainly favorite, James? In, certainly in Europe. Spirited Away. Nice. I'll try that one. I, I watched one fairly recently, and I was like, I don't get it. Which one did you watch? What's the one with the giant wolf and the pixies and uh, the Princess, Princess Mononoke? Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm partial to uh, Howl's well, Moving Castle, actually. No, that's, that's, that, that and My Neighbor Totoro are kind of joint second on mm -hmm. the list. There'll always be a special place in my heart for Totoro. It was more like Princess Mononucleosis because it put me to sleep. <laughs> We have a blind v. blind situation here. Samoas with king three and the small raises. Fam with ace six calls. And a nine, eight, seven flop. So the open-ended straight draw for Fam also still has the best hand right now with ace high. Get out of here, Samoes. We call this. You don't want this one, man. Not the seven, eight, nine. What we call the. Go uh, have a cappuccino with your wife and friends. Go ahead, Joe. Well, it's funny you should say that because we call having the six here having the Griffin end of the straight. Two hundred and ten thousand called by Vam. The turn card is the Queen of Clubs. Vam now almost a four to one favorite. Definitely not a it's very, definitely an ill-advised bet here on the flop from Samoas. I mean, I think this is obvious for anyone watching at home. You know, it's it's tough to really maneuver. Listen, if there's one club, maybe you can kind of turn some equity, but you're just skiing uphill this entire pot when you decide to bet this flop. And Vam is actually going to, it looks like, play it as a bet which I like because sometimes you can fold out like a 7x, maybe even an 8x. Of course, that queen completes hands, draws like jack 10, queen 10 is now top pair, queen jack, queen 9, queen 8, queen 7. So nice bet. Doesn't seem necessary because he had a side, which is good, but the right play. So Morton Van wins the last hand of the level, puts himself into second place on the leaderboard and closes the gap on chip leader Marcelo Samoas. And that concludes the 40-80 blind level. A reminder, when we come back from break, blinds will be up to 50,000, 100,000 with a 100K big blind ante. Hello? And these how the stacks of the final six look. Samoas, Vam, super deep. Pingray also going strong with 67 bigs. 46 bigs for Trofimov, 34 for Cernmetz. Cervantes edging towards the danger zone with 20 big blinds. Still six players remaining at the final table of the EPT Monte Carlo main event. Live action resumes in 17 minutes time. We'll see you then.
played. 12 hands so far today. One elimination so far. Oh, Shemian KO'd on the very first hand of the day. Dumont started the day as chip leader. Still has the biggest stack at the final table. 4.7 million at the start of this hand. And that is a raise. 215,000. Chips in play right now. The blues are 5K. The greens are 25K. If you see a player with the black chips, those are worth 100K each. Alternatively, you can call them Lamborghinis, Rolls Royces, and Bugattis. See lots of uh, mint green Rolls Royces out there. I don't know if you've looked in the window of the Rolls Royce store, which is across the road from where we are. There are some disgusting paint jobs on some of those <laughs> Rolls Royces. But tell you what, doesn't bring the price down. No, they probably charge you more if you don't want those paint jobs. Oh, you don't want a banana yellow Rolls Royce? <laughs> I'm so sorry. There's going to be a fee for that. 7-4 suited for Antonius. Defending his big blind has completely missed the flop. Dumont with top pair. Continuation bet of 150,000. And I think Patrick will be done with this, sure enough. I think I think Nicola Dumont is gonna win this. That's my that's my pick. That's my call right now. Joe Stapleton's bold prediction, ladies and gentlemen. Either him or one of the other six players at the table, but one or the other. Well, wherever he finishes, this will be his biggest live cash. He is not a professional poker player. He is a driving instructor from Paris. And as you mentioned, it was his friend who brought him in. Oh, well, seven do suited now. King queen off, not worthy of an open. Seven do suited. You have to continue with the legend that is your G. Dumont's considering three betting with nine six of hearts. Good timing. We say that until Yorgi shoves all in on him, though. Here we go. Do. Dumont. Dumont has. You know that song? No. You're a big speed metal fan? No, can't say I am. Wow. Thought you were cool. Not today. Antonius has opened with tens. Dumont has kings. And considering Antonius is the shortest stack, I think there's a chance we might see more chips go in. I I think this is a tough hand to get away from. I'd say nearly impossible. <laughs> under the gun versus under the gun plus one. <coughs> he does have the option to call still and, you know, see what he believes could be a safe flop, meaning no overcards. He does just call. Leaving himself 20 bigs behind. And what an amazing flop for Dumont. Top set. 
checks the action to Dumont. Ace King's obviously a very likely hand you put your opponent on when he three bets. You know how I say always bet your sets? <laughs> yes. I'm okay with him checking this time. <laughs> yeah, he checks it back. Now there are two overcards to Patrick's tens on the board. And now I think with two flush draws, Dumont is going to go for value here. But it might just get Antonius to check fold. Whereas I think Antonius would have considered check calling the flop because he can turn some backdoor equity with, you know, some possible straight draws on the turn. I think this turn card and a delayed C-bet just doesn't look bluffy whatsoever if you're Antonius. And of course, there's a ton of river cards you don't want to see. And Antonius knows that it's very likely just going to get worse for him by the river. It is just 450 into a pot of 1.9 million. Patrick did call. 2.3 million in the middle now. <laughs> Quads on the river for Dumont. I really hope we are not going to use a popular hashtag at the end of this hand. Hashtag blessed? I think the best hand Antonius could possibly have here is probably ace-queen suited. So mm -hmm. because of that and because of the missed draws, I think Dumont's going to go for, you know, a sizing like maybe that. like half potter a little bit less. I think he doesn't. 25,000 is the bet. <laughs> 525,000, which is roughly a third of Patrick's remaining chips. So if he calls here, he will be left with 10 big blinds, or he can fold, leaving himself a 16 big blind stack. Dumont hasn't really been seen getting out of line with his three bets. Patrick raised from under the gun, and, you know, as played when Dumont checked checks back the flop, bets turn, and bets the river on the small side. There's not a lot of bluffs that he can have. He hasn't been seen getting out of line. He has been seen picking up huge hands in really pivotal spots. He's running out of time. I know he looks like Thanos, but this ain't the Infinity War. No. Oh, man, he called. Patrick calls. He is not eliminated, but it is hashtag severe wounding by quads. And Patrick Antonius is left with just a 10 big blind stack as Dumont increases his chip lead at this six handed final table. He now has 7.4 million. Severe wounding by quads. Nice. King Queen for Patrick Antonius, short stack at the table, on we the button, heard. 10 big blinds. We are going to see an all in every single time. Yeah, and I don't think any other choice but to shove. And he is all in, red triangle. And Dumont's got the ace eight of diamonds. Ooh. Got a call. Hmm. Obviously, you don't want to double up Patrick Antonius, one of the most dangerous players at the table. But given that he's the shortest stack right now and how wide he's shoving the button, I believe you got it. I just can't fold ace eight suited. Well, he's going to get a count. 1.3 million. Just over 10 bags. Even if he calls and loses here, he's still going to be in pretty much joint first place. Sounds like he's just announced call. Here we go, poker fans. Patrick Antonius all in and at risk on an EPT final table. He will need to improve to stay in this tournament. His king queen versus Dumont's ace eight of diamonds. Another coin flip. <laughs> He'll take it, 42%. Do you think good? We have a lot of people. Like 50 50. <laughs> 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 That's how I feel. We have a lot of people in the chat rooting for Patrick Antonius. A lot of people calling for kings and queens. There is his wife on the rail. 
42% of the time, he wins every time. The flop does not have a king or a queen, but it does give Patrick additional outs. Now a jack will make him a straight. 10 cards Patrick can hit. Still has the same equity he had pre-flop. Yeah, still over 40% chance he stays alive here. A nine will do him no favors. Just one card to come. Queen or jack. Patrick Antonius needs a king, queen, or jack on the river, or we lo lose the last remaining former EPT champ. River card is a seven, and that will do it for Patrick Antonius. It was 13 years ago that he won his EPT title in Baden. No second trophy for him, but a sixth place finish worth 139,050 euros. Dumont with nines in the big blind. Three betting would just put him in a bit of a pickle. You don't really want to get involved in a big pot against the other big stack when there's two shorter stacks. You're out of position. Let's see the flop. Let's go from there. Uh, Maria is called playing to win. <laughs> Six, seven, eight is the flop. Dumont has an over pair and a straight draw. Not too shabby. Zhang's got two over cards and a gut shot. Also, NTS. We saw that Dumont led earlier out of the big blind when Zhang had opened from under the gun, so. And this is a relatively small bet, but I think is gonna get the job done most of the time. I don't think there's a reason why the bet needs to be super huge on, on that flop. Another value bet from Dumont on a safe turn. Yeah, really safe turn. And the river is a five, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That straight nized for pocket nines. What a great run out for nines, huh? I just want to know when Dumont started staring down his opponents when it's not their turn. It didn't. Happened. This whole new demeanor happened once he became chip leader last night. He was like, "Wait a second. With great power comes great responsibility. I have a responsibility to stare down everybody all the time." Here comes the value bet that can never get called. Always the chance that Zhang loses his mind. Yeah, but so far I feel like Zhang hasn't gotten very out of line post-flop. And I don't expect him to here, even with the 10 in his hand. Nope. That is going to put some distance between Dumont and Zhang, however. The two chip leaders. 434k for the runner-up, 712k for the winner, plus the trophy and the platinum pass. Hand 105 of this final table about to be dealt. I can't help but picture Murray from Flight of the Concords reading off the list of people who are on the New Zealand all-time money list and them having to go prison. So Dumont just calls on the button with queens. Yang has a pocket pair, a smaller pocket pair, sixes. I think he could go either way with the sixes. 650. He is going to come in for a raise to 650,000. And again, it's probably a better decision to raise when that ante's in play, because you're more incentivized to take down the pot pre-flop. There's more in the middle, more benefit to getting your opponent to fold. In the last level, they're just batting each other around a little bit here and there, but we did not see pair on pair. You would think if Dumont is limping the queens, his intention would be to limp raise them. Now, does this look suspicious to Zhang that Dumont has limp raised the button? 2.2 million is the size of his three bet. 
I think it looks suspicious. And again, full cards. I would agree, though. We spoke about the ante being in play, that more often I'm than not... In. Wow, he does think it's suspicious. He's all in. Zhang shoves, oh, snap caught by Dumont. He couldn't even get the words out of his mouth. That's how <laughs> nervous he is about this situation. It was just a... <clears throat> a huge all-in, and it's domination nation. The underpair for Zhang, Dumont, who is an 80% favorite here and has Zhang covered, could win EPT Monte Carlo right here, right now. And we suggested that that anti and play might, things go, may, might make things go a little quicker here. They certainly have. I don't think anyone suspected it would go this quick. Of course, there is that 19% chance that six yes, is win this. And if that happens, Dumont will be left with 14 big blinds. But four times out of five, Dumont will win this coup and win the title. Queen's holding on the flop. Zhang drawing to two outs. He needs a six to survive. And the backdoor diamonds are all Dumont's. The turn card is an eight. No additional outs. Zhang needs a six on the river. He must hit one of those two cards or Nicolas Dumont is an EPT champion. It's over. Congratulations. Dumont takes well the title. Well done. <laughs> All right. Ó, oh, o oh, oh, oh. E assim, o, tá o Santana, forte. o Santana provavelmente tem uma mão como um Ice Dama, um Ice Valete, e... Uou! Uau! Ai! Oh, meu Deus do céu! Olha o começo dessa transmissão, começo dessa mesa final de meia evento Ai. do BSOP Minas. O que acontece, Felipe Moraes e público de casa? Vamos ao River, será? River Card, o rei! O rei do River! O rei do River! Meu Deus! Impressionante! O que é que é isso, Vitão? Estão todos atordoados no salão, Uau. quadra contra full, seu Ciro acerta um rei no River! Uau, uau, uau! Oh, I'm so glad we still have that VHS footage of the BSOP. <laughs> Welcome back to Monaco and the PokerStars European Poker Tour presented by Monte Carlo Casino. Our live coverage of the main event final table continues. We played 76 minutes. No elimination so far. A bit of movement in the chips. Marcelo Simoes from Brazil taking the chip lead has the slight advantage of a Morton Pham from Denmark. Jaime Cervantes from the USA has become the shorty at the table, playing just shy of 20 big blinds. As we go to the 50,000, 100,000 blind level with a 100K big blind ante. As James Hartigan with Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies! And now we've got Nick Walsh in the mix as well. Wow, what was that? Hello, <laughs> Joe's babies. What's up, guys? Sorry, I was inspired. <laughs> <laughs> the final six playing down to a winner. Top prize in the Monte Carlo main event of nearly 940,000 euros. Everyone has locked up 167K. And Marcelo Samo is looking to become the first ever Brazilian EPT champion. Dragos Trofimov looking to become the first ever Moldovan winner on the tour. We have an online qualifier in our concern mats. So a few good stories to follow as we get cards in the air once again. Continue the action inside the most beautiful poker room in the world. I've got to say it. I've got to say it. Now that we've lost Team Pro member um, Ramon Colias, I really am rooting for the, uh, the qualifier. And he's been so composed. Second after that, 
Jaime Cervantes, also a fellow American, you know, those guys got it put in some work though. 34 big blinds for Sonmez and 18 big blinds for Cervantes. So they, they got some work to do. Still playable, six left. Still locked up a huge chunk. So that's a win regardless, but I love to see qualifiers go deep in tournaments, I really do. Well, this first hand of the new level, hand 27 of the final table, action folded to fam in the small blind. And he has completed. Cervantes checks his option with six deuce of spades. And that will take us to the flop. And that flop is four <laughs> tray deuce. Two pair for Vam. Bottom pair for Cervantes plus the straight draw. A five would be pretty spicy here, not going to lie. I mean, it's one of those boards you're just like, ugh, you know. Got top two. Obviously, I'm worried about some ace X, but very rarely a six. But given the fact they're small blind versus big blind, they are going to have a much wider range. So they will, they will have some six X. You know, that actually wouldn't be the worst worst spot in the world. The deuce would probably be more spicy. I feel like six deuce here is like most Netflix series. All exciting at the beginning, but by the end, you're just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> they got great pilots, but you know, not great finishes. 100,000 was the C-bet from Fam, or just rather the bet. Cervantes called it, we get the seven of clubs on the turn. The middle part seems interesting, but it's not. <laughs> Doesn't go anywhere. And the whole thing is just taking too long. <laughs> this should have been over before it started. Fam betting. A second time. So it was 100K on the flop. Get ready for the weak finish. 350,000 on the turn into a pot of 500K. I had the pleasure to uh, speak to Jaime yesterday. Really, really sweet guy. First time in Europe. I said, uh, once you're done with this final table, you got anywhere to be? He said, no, not really. I got a couple of friends who want to go to Paris. I got a couple of friends who are in Paris right now. They're traveling back now to uh, to come rail. And I said, after this, don't bother with Paris. Budapest, way up there. Oh, yeah. That yeah. Fun. And then I was like, Amsterdam, way up there. He is a really, I, really nice guy. I agree. Guy. I totally agree that, uh, no offense to Paris, but for for a young man... I think you're going to have more bang for your buck in Budapest, more bang for your buck in Amsterdam, and uh, slightly or friendlier cities. Slightly, is that a word? Slightly. Slightly friendlier cities. Slightlier. For tourists. Yeah, I know. Budapest. They're, they're, they're happy to have you. I think, I think Perry is one of, those, one of those towns, one of those cities where... If you got somebody on the inside, you get that's really really cool. Yeah. If you're traveling just as a pure tourist, you got no link in the in you know in the city that'll show you the show you the ropes. It can be a little bit tricky, and also the weather reminds me of London, which is not great. Amsterdam, fallen, Budapest, unbelievable. You know, Berlin. I think Berlin and Budapest are both amazing cities, but I can't let you talk down Paris. I'm a big Paris fan as I, well. That surprises me, James. I, 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 I thought it's you'd be, be on my side. He's cl he's classy a, he's, people he's, he's, he's like classy. Paris. I mean, you've also been to what used to be the Aviation Club de France. When it was still open, yeah, yes. Yeah. I mean, I remember the Aviation Club de France because I used to play the WPT PS, PS what was it? Um, uh, what, was the, what was the Sony handheld console PSPC PS no. <laughs> it wasn't PSP a, PSP thank you I had the uh, WPT poker game that they released on that platform and he kept making reference to it that's as close to, as I ever got to the Aviation Club de France I I was in Paris while it was still open the Aviation Club and the front door of it was so intimidating I didn't go in it was an amazing venue and it was an amazing place to both play poker and also like observe a major tournament as well yeah and also i don't i don't mean to talk down paris i just think that um like joe is saying you know if you're just gonna if you're just gonna wing out there and just go and go and see what's up i think uh i think
think uh, there's cities like Budapest and Amsterdam and whatever. Like they're they, they got you just show up and have a good time no matter what. It's fantastic. T Vance is suggesting we should have a PlayStation Portable Championship. Just a thousand people sitting in a room with an with an outdated console in their hands. Whoever has the thickest layer of dust on their PSPC wins. <laughs> Oh, they had their own little uh, their own little discs as well, didn't they? That's crazy. So anyway, hand twenty nine of the final table We've had the raise from Fam to two hundred twenty five thousand with Ace Four. Ping Ray defending his big blind with six four and a ten seven deuce flop with two clubs. Right, playing in float. Checks to fam. Who bets 350,000. Pepper in the chat says, no love for Prague. I have so much love for Prague. Thank you for that. Yeah, that's a great suggestion as well. Prague is a fantastic city. Wait till December. Well, talking of Prague, I don't remember Morton Fam from EPT Prague 2019, but he actually came 13th, narrowly missed out on a seat at the final table in that event. But he does not play a lot of live poker, mainly plays online, does work in the banking industry, so he's not a full-time poker player, only has one other reported live cash in addition to that EPT deep run from three years ago, now has locked up at least 167K. Yeah, this is going to look great on the old resume, the old uh, the old handed mob brag. He could have fooled me as a reg. And when we did those retro streams, Joe, I remember how dominant Nordic players were during those early sure. years and how many Danish winners we had. It's actually been 10 years since there was a Danish winner on the European Poker Tour. Yannick Rang was the champion in Campione he in did? the spring of 2012. No Danish player has won an EPT since then. Wow. What do you think it is that makes Nordic participants so good? In the chat, please give me your answers. <laughs> Wrong answers only. Thank you. Don't encourage them. <laughs> I love the chat. I love you guys. Cern Mets opening to 230,000. And that will be a raise and take it. Is this a compliment or a complaint? I love watching these events, even when there's little action on the table. The commentators talk like they're on a podcast. I think that's a compliment. I'm going to take it as a compliment. Okay. Yeah. Just to be safe, you're banned. Sorry. <laughs> just, just to play, just to be on the safe side. <laughs> Pizza, but it. Says, when will we get access to the PSPC? I mean, if you've got 25K, buddy, it's open to you. It'll be in the Bahamas in January of next year at the Bahama Resort. Kicks off, I believe, the 30th of January. And it is open. It's not an invitational. Of course, what you're probably asking is when and where will there be opportunities to win a Platinum Pass? Mm. When and where will there be the opportunity to get a VIP package? Well, we've got the Road to PSPC series coming soon. We've got the Megapath satellites running online. So I'm pretty excited about the various row ads to PSPC because they haven't even all been announced yet. It's true. The ones that have been announced are at PokerStarsLive.com. Plus, we've got info on the screen right now as we go to the flop here. Samoas versus Fam. And Fam, by the way, currently has the slight chip lead. They're pretty much tied. Yeah, both of those players are going to be just like avoiding each other. It's what it's, I've said it many times before, guys. This is the stage of the tournament where there is implied collusion for lack of a better word. I had a PokerStars dev tell me that once. Obviously not colluding, nothing nothing untoward, but both of those guys looking to eliminate players who have shorter stacks for their own mutual gain. You sure you don't mean nothing untoward? What did I say? Nothing, I just recently heard someone in an interview use the word untoward. I thought maybe that's what it was. Untoward. 
Killer Score 9, good question. Any word when the TV shows from the previous PSPC will be available for the entire world to view? Yes, the word is June. Next month, we're going to start running those shows on the PokerStars YouTube channel. New episodes every week, all nine shows following the players in the first ever PSPC. We're going to be showing Dune on the PokerStars <laughs> YouTube channel? <laughs> what? You said the keyword was June. Yes, the month of June. He asked, when are we going to start showing the PSPC? <laughs> oh, man. There is... Well, June as in right before the month of July. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you guys, you have no idea. There is so much footage from the from the last PSPC that's still still to surface. So much gold. They're really fun shows. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so Jaime Cervantes now the shortest stack at this table with 15 bigs. Let's see how he's going to navigate this. Obviously, he is the player with the most incentive to play hard, get chips in. If you're Dragos Trofim Trofimov here with 46 bigs, you're right in the ICM handcuff situation, right? You're like, don't want to get out of line. My, my preflop uh, pre -flop range is going to be much tighter than it usually would be, much, much tighter. And uh, obviously, those big stacks looking to apply pressure to the shorties for that reason. A7 suited for Marcelo Samos on the button. Really? Lennart asks on YouTube, is it true that the EPT has never been won by a Brazilian player? You are correct. Samos would become the first Brazilian champion were he to win. Cervantes, the short stack, ace jack in the big. Daniel in the chat is asking, I'm devastated, or says, I'm devastated. I missed Victoria Corin Mitchell in the booth yesterday. How was her commentary? Fantastic. I actually watched it all. I love I love some Vicky Corin. She is, she is really a true ambassador of the game. So Cervantes has moved all in. Decision on Samoa's, and I know Cervantes is pretty short with 15 bigs, but A7 feels like it's... Not even close. Oh. Wow, he's called it. Oh, yeah. Woo. What? Uh, a domination situation. If I was going to be unkind, I'd say this is almost a courtesy <laughs> double up. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Cervantes is obviously the shortest yeah, stack. Still 15 bigs. I don't think it's... I don't think it's that wild. A7 of spades is probably going to be in there, but it definitely is on the wider side, James. I completely agree. And my man Jaime in... A spot where he can bust the tournament. Yes, yes, he is at risk. However, he is also a 65% favorite here. Yeah, absolutely. This is the domination situation. He says to his opponent, if you get it, you get it. And I like that mindset. Very good. Very good. You know, very good, Cervantes. You can do <laughs> is get it in good. Yep. Can't fly. Ooh. Oh, of course not. And he is still oh. good after the flop. Top pair, top kicker, and this could be over on the turn. 93% favorite now. I mean, that's ginormous. Jack high flop, GG A7. He does have back doors, though. Obviously, some straight draws and some flush draws are a possibility. Oh, the seven on the turn, because the seven, it is always coming. And now, two outs for Samoas. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's another card that gives him run a runner. Another seven will do it, too. The river is a four. The best hand holds up, and Jaime Cervantes doubles up and is now tied with Erkan Sonmetz. They both have around 34 big blinds. You know, James, Budapest. It looks like it looks like she's on the horizon if he doubles like that again. It sounds sounds good to me. Well played, uh, next hand. You're good. Well, two other things happened as a result of that double up, Nick. Morton Vam has now retaken the chip lead and has 
a decent lead with 8.3 million. Samoza's has dropped down into third place. He's now sits behind Ping Ray. Yeah, absolutely. This is, uh, I joined the commentary at a point where we had a shorty, but now everyone with like 30 bigs. 30 bigs is so playable, honestly. Look, uh, it's something that we have been talking about endlessly. I'm sure the audience is bored of hearing it, but they have been playing very deep this entire tournament. We normally track around a 50 big blind average. The average stack throughout day two for all of day three and most of day four was anything between 65 and 80 big blinds. There is a lot of play in this. And now we're at a situation where every single payout increases by a significant amount. Yep. You can understand how this is the point where things slow down. And I would highlight that even at the 5,100 blind level, we are still playing more than a 50 big blind average. 54 to be precise. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, like we were saying, obviously an event like this is designed to have tons of play, right? A lot of opportunities to let the poker skills be represented. The best player to win kind of situation, but it is so much deeper than usual, honestly. It's just one of those interesting outliers here. And under the gun raise from Hugo Pingray with Queen Jack offsuit. Morton Fam has three bet on the button with Ace Five suited. He's playing artisanal sourdough, Nicholas. Yeah, I love it. Artisanal sourdough. Num num. Ace Five of Hearts. Now, it is interesting that Vam is going to town here against Ping Ray. Obviously, they are top three stacks here, but I think Ace Five suited is it's it's less of a I'm applying pressure because it's a final table and more of like this is just a three bet most times in most situations. It's a really, really nice spot. And, you know, I think uh, Morton Vom is definitely incentivized to play a little bit on the tighter side. So you're going to get more folds than usual if we were playing, for example, a cash game or we were playing in the middle of this tournament, something like that. I think Queen Jack off is usually just a raise fold regardless, though. It's it just doesn't do so well post flop. Queen Jack suited, on the other hand. Yeah, you know. Maybe. <clears throat> Tony Kennick gets in touch. Hashtag Pokestars TV. You mentioned retro. Unless I'm missing something obvious, while the LAPT and APPT retro shows are on YouTube, the earlier retros aren't. Is this a licensing issue, or have you joined early Doctor Who and having lost tapes? I have no idea why the archives aren't there. We obviously still have the rights to the footage. Yeah. I thought that was great, though. EPT Retro was so fun. It was really, really cool to go back and uh, and revisit. So here's what's going to happen, Tony. I'm going to tell you now that I'm going to get someone to look into it. By Monday, I would have forgotten about this, and I won't. <laughs> but then inevitably, you're going to send a follow-up tweet in about seven days' time, and that's going to remind me to get someone on it. Yep, so set your timer now, Tony. And uh, remind old J.H. here. Okay, so Queen Knight of Diamonds, such a pretty hand. Definitely a hand that you want to be playing a lot from this position. Remember, guys, we are six-handed now, right? Six-handed. Six-max is definitely a... Uh, well, this isn't really six-max because, obviously, it's just that we lost more players. But shorter-handed is definitely something that I really yep. like. And you need to be adjusting for that, right? You can't be going, I'm UTG oh, no, plus I'm one. What do the ranges say if you're nine-handed? Because it's completely different if you have fewer players to your left. Queen Nine of Diamonds is mahusive. Trofimov here, playing it cool, and I understand why we are on final table. There's ICM considerations. You don't want to get out of line. Nines plays perfectly well, just the way it is. Let's take a flop and see what happens. And it does come king high. King 7-4 with two clubs, and we can see that Trofimov is near enough a 9-1 to favorite, but he doesn't know that. No, he doesn't know that right now. I assume he's going to be sticky on the flop. I assume Vom is going to put in a C-bet here every single time. The cool thing about having queen nine of diamonds here, James, is that you are blocking king queen. Um, and that might incentivize Vaughn to go for two streets here, which does put the nines in a tricky spot. 
Having played it passively pre-flop, though, you do need to just basically check call, check call in most spots. I mean, nines is nines is massive here, really, in the grand scheme of things. Of course, you're going to run into some sets. You're going to run into some, some king X. But you kind of, if you're going to play your hand this way pre, you have to really see some flops, turns, and rivers. Three of hearts, no change. It doesn't change the board, the board, uh, board too much. It doesn't change the average... Um, Average hand here too much. Wow, these guys are really, really plain intense. Two checks, five of spades, no change there either. If anything, this would actually improve the big blinds range more often than the uh, than the initial opener. Seven five suited, some straight draws, three four five, any six will do it too. I think for the most part, Vom is going to want to get to showdown here. I don't know if there's a ton of value here at all, right? Especially once it goes bet and then check turn. If he had, you know, a big pair or, you know, a king or, you know, a flush draw, he'd probably go ahead and bet twice. I think he's going to go for kind of a blockery kind of situation here. Yeah, sure enough. 200,000, nice and small, controlling the action, going to keep Vom extremely honest and taking it down. Drago's Trofimov now playing a 50 big blind stack. He won a scoop event last year. Plays online as Fenrir 03. Trofimov looking to become Moldova's first ever EPT champion. On the subject of scoop, it starts tomorrow, Sunday, May 8th. What do you do for living? Uh, <laughs> if you do anything. It's not, it's 318 funny. tournaments. I Hedge fund. All manner of variants, all manner of buy-in levels. Play the scoop that you want to play and watch some of our streams, some of our cards up coverage on the PokerStars Twitch and YouTube channels from yeah. next Wednesday. Uh, so I'm, I basically uh, give loans. Sure. Yeah. Um, with King Eight, Cern Mets with Ace King. So is one of the shortest stacks. Definitely looking to get this in if he can. Okay. Loading up a tree bet. Yeah, yeah fam opened to 225,000. So right. Mets as far as has made it 675,000. Yeah. yeah, exactly 3x. I think, you know, playing a 30-ish big blind stack here before uh, before he puts in the raise. You know, you're on a final. You kind of just want to, like, you know, pick up the dead money and remain in. You know, there's a lot of ICM pressure here, but he's just a little bit too deep not to 3-bet none. The, the old 3-bet none all in here seems appropriate. And he's going to take it down, of course. So that's playing 3.7 million. No. Savanti's still the shortest stack at the table, playing 3.4 million. And more fam. Where he started the day with the chip lead. Just shy of 8 million. Rounds the blinds. And Samoz gives Vam a walk. Ooh. <laughs> Easy game. I'm playable stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like, go ahead. I know, I know. That was sick. Ouija that was predicts sick. that the next flop will be insane. Took some, some. Okay. Okay. Let's see how it goes. I acknowledge a good one. What's the forfeit if he doesn't if he doesn't uh, doesn't predict correctly, James? I've got my ban hammer at the ready. Oh, mate! Lifetime ban. 
No, predict do at your peril. <laughs> yeah, I don't like people who overpromise and underdeliver, no, Ouija. <laughs> so it works even Now that you've said it, we've been doing it for years, James. <laughs> don't overcomplicate it. Don't forget <laughs> Because as they say, it's always value. Until it isn't. Jack Deuce in the small for Vam. He um, completes. King six of hearts for Cervantes in the big. All right, let's see it. Deal an insane flop. Seven, six, four, one diamond. Ouija, I don't know what your definition of insane is, but I fear it differs from mine. You're banned. You're banned. Well, there is the prospect of our first chop of the day. Four cards to a straight on the board. Cervantes with the best hand right now with a pair of sixes, but it's Morton Vam who's betting 125,000 on the turn. Small ball versus big blind here is really interesting because, like we've spoken about at great length, um, you know, the way the positions that people play their hands greatly impacts upon the kind of combinations that they will likely have. The seven of diamonds is a good card for the king six, generally speaking, most of the time. Having to pair here, obviously, uh, much stronger when the seven lands because your opponent is less likely to actually have a seven at this stage. I, I just want to see if he's going to commit to the river. It looks like a check check situation, though. Yep, sure enough, taking it down. I, I, James, I love that Cervantes here actually was quite sticky with the six. It is very tempting to go, well, now there's a one card straight on the board. Yeah. You know, maybe, okay, maybe he just has a seven. When you're playing players of this caliber, you need to find the situations where you can be sticky. If, for example, the raise there was from under the gun, a lot less likely that he'd have a one card straight there, right? Because he has fewer combinations that contain um, the low card that completed the straight there. So sticky on the flop, sticky on the turn. Very nice river. Probably would uh, probably would uh, call a river bet as well there a lot of the time, depending on the size. But uh, so far, Cervantes, really, really impressive poker. Meanwhile, over on YouTube, Alessandro says, Phil Helmuth is the greatest human being the world has ever known. Oh, YouTube, don't ever change. Ace eight of clubs for Cervantes in the small blind. This being hand number 40 of the FT. Raises to 325,000. 10 5 off for Cernmetz, who is now the shortest stack. Sernmetz defends here with 10-5 offsuit. Yeah, this is uh, this is extremely wide. He obviously has a good price, and I don't think it would be a mistake necessarily, but hands like 10-5 off just don't play so good, James. So it is it is tricky to play this hand well. And what I mean by that is when you're offered a price pre-flop, and by that I mean pot odds, when you have good pot odds pre-flop, you should always try and exploit that. But hands like 10-5 off just don't have very good what we call equity realization, right? It's difficult to get 10-5 off to showdown. It's also difficult to turn it into a bluff. So it doesn't realize the value that it has in a vacuum, assuming that all the cards are seen, right? When we're looking at combinations, we are looking at their average equity preflop versus a range. 
but then we're also assessing whether or not they're the kind of combinations that will allow one to win the pot. Having big high cards you can bluff with is really cool. Having hands that connect with flops and make straights and flushes and all that kind of thing is great. But 10-5 off, obviously, just miles apart. Just, just no connectivity whatsoever. So it is interesting to see him do that. 180,000 apiece. And we go to the turn. The deuce of spades. And Cernmet's now a 92% favorite with a pair of 10s. Second barrel from Cervantes has checked the action. Yeah, this is uh, this is not the board where you want to be continuing when you've got ace eight of clubs. Uh, not only is it just not a good spot to continue bluffing, but also you do have you do have ace high. You are beating some draws. Mets. Bets 330,000, gets a fold from Cervantes. You know what, James, 10-5 off great hand, always calling there, 100% of the time. I'm a great believer in playing results, Nick, good man. <laughs> Sir Mets up over 40 big blinds again, Cervantes drops down to 30 bigs and is once again in sixth place at the FT. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I'm pretty confident 10-5 off has the right price there. Most hands do, especially with the big blind ante in the middle. It just creates so much more value. The interesting thing about the big blind ante, James, is that it doesn't diminish as the players are lost from a table, right? Good like point. it Like it did previously, right? So when, um, you know, for those of you who are relatively new to the game, before we were doing big blind antes, we would have everybody put in a small proportion of chips, you know, usually 10% of the big blind or something like that. And then it was all pulled in the middle and that's what would make up the ante. And obviously the amount that's in the middle diminishes the fewer players at the table if we do that. In this format with the big blind ante, it's always one big blind. Even when we're three-handed, even when we're, even when we're, uh, even when we're four-handed, whatever. And so for that reason, you definitely need to take that into account with the way you're going to defend your big blinds. So six-handed, not a penalty for the fact that there are fewer fewer players than not when they started this FT with eight. And 42. Chip leader, Morton Vam. Raises to 230k with nines, and Jaime Cervantes has got ace jack in the cutoff. Jack was folded, Nick, so it's just Dragos Trofimov left, who's got Queen Jack offsuit in the big blind. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're not going to want to miss this opportunity. Seven, five, three. Safe flop for nines.
Yeah, absolute uh, absolute bricks here for Queen Jack off. It's a pretty it's a pretty clear defend fold flop. It's you know there are situations where you where you will float continuation bets with Queen Jack. This is not one of them. You you can get into a lot of trouble if you're going to stick around on this board. Morton Fam continues to occupy the catbird seat. 83 big blinds for the Dane. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two to do. I had an opposite five or ten. <laughs> well, like ten eight or something. I should go get that one. <laughs> Makes sense. I do see it. Astro Legume says, how come you don't pay me off so that I shut up and enjoy the show? Well, I can't pay you off, but I can ban you. Thank you for your comments. You banned. Boom. Um, with King Queen under the gun, has made it 225,000. Folded to Hugo Pingray on the button. Has a worse king, King Nine. in the big blind for Marcelo Simoes. He calls. One more. And these two are going heads up to the flop. Small pocket pair against two high cards. And we have Queen nine eight flop. Yeah, and that's probably it for the trays. Not a board where you want to get sticky with trees. Trees or trays or threes. Yeah, fam. The top pair and a gut shot. Ninety percent equity. Can comfortably see bet six hundred thousand in the middle. And he's going to bet a hundred, two hundred, sorry, and seventy-five thousand. Oh. Uh, 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 Optimism. Uh, uh, um, okay, I'm going to eat my words now. Eight of diamonds on the turn. Puts a second flush draw out there. Also pairs the board. Bam, now a 95% favorite. Fam bet again. I'll check this back. Second barrel about to be fired. And the flop call was, let's be polite, speculative. This has to be a fold now, right? Uh, I assume so. I, you know, I, I really thought it was a fold in the flop as well. But you know, it's that's not to say he's floating here because he's like, yeah, trays are just, you know, look at this board. Of course, I'm winning. You know, it's it's a float sometimes to bluff as well. Um, you know, taking it to the streets, James gives you a lot of opportunities. He's calling again. Wow. I mean, it, okay. Also, the paired board is quite good for pairs generally, right? You know, it's uh, one less over card to be concerned about usually. Somehow this pot is 2.6 million, oh. and Samoas gets there. No. Spikes a two-outer, gets his three on the river, no. and now has a full house. James, it's, it's, he just had a feeling. Sometimes you've got to go with your feelings. What looked like a bad call on the flop and a worse call on the turn turns out to be prescient. I mean, how does Vom not put in a value bet here? Can he actually sniff out <laughs> the, the backdoor full house? It's crazy. The rivered full house is just 
not the one you're you're not worried about threes when you bet flop that turn too often you know what i'm saying it does go check check though very well done manages Whoa. look at his face i mean fam is puking behind that mask <laughs> I wish we didn't have the mask at the table, James. That his expression probably is one of disgust. And that brings about another change in the chip lead. Again, pretty close. Not much separating Samoas and Fam right now, but officially the Brazilian is chip leader. Yeah, I mean he's not concerned. He still has he's still basically the chip leader. He's just slightly behind Marcelo Simoes. So it's not uh... Oh wait, a little bit of table talk. Yeah, he's not concerned. It's, you know, it was a silly pot, but it didn't cost him his tournament life by any means. But uh, that's not good. That's not good. That feels gross. Yeah, so Samosa Fam, as we just referenced, pretty much tied at the top. Savanti's still the shortest stack at the final table, but has 31 big blinds, relatively comfortable. Hand number 44 getting underway. Sonmez is UTG plus one, decides to open up East 10 off. And that'll be raise and take it for Sonmez, the qualifier. A reminder that he won his seat. On Poker Stars, played a 530 euro satellite. And here he is. Plays poker a decent amount of the time. Enjoys the Sunday schedule on Stars and makes three or four poker trips a year. Likes to play Barcelona, likes to play Prague, but is not a professional player. Is a 37 year old salesman from Hanover with not one, not two, not three, but four children. Oh, wow. And a very nice hoodie, if I do say so. Uh, you not a fan? No. That's kind of it's kind of dope. What do you guys think in the chat? Can we get a can we get a poll in the chat? Is uh, Machino hoodie dope or not? Okay, Ace Queen suited here. This time from the pure UTG, going to open up, of course. Fancies with ace six in the big blind. Looks like the chat's kind of split on the old uh, on the old hoodie front. Cervantes in the big blind with a hand that uh, that can defend. He does indeed do so. And we're going to a flop. Eight of diamonds, nine of spades, four of spades. Continuation bet of 190,000 from CERN Mets. Yeah, and taking it down. My man's got uh, got no 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 nothing with a six off. Not even some back doors. So just a release. Sweet sweet release. <laughs> That reminds me of uh, back in the day, in my younger days, James, playing uh, playing poker in in lovely Brighton. The uh, the old boys used to get it in all in pre flop, and they'd say, "No more pain." I love that. I always thought that was brilliant. Uh, so there was an impromptu referendum on Twitch. Do you like the hoodie? And the result is 54 percent, small majority saying, "No." Yeah, yeah, fair enough. No, I, 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 I get that. I see how it's kind of divisive, but you know, uh, forty-six percent of the time, it's gonna be good. So, a reminder that Scoop starts tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, runs until June first. Look, it'd be very easy 
for PokerStars to run a super high roller series with massive buy-ins and a huge guarantee, but Scoop is for everyone. And you've got Scoop events that start from as little as $2.20. You've got different variants. It's not just Hold'em. And of course, we're going to be providing plenty of coverage on the PokerStars Twitch and YouTube channels. Of course, all of our streamers are going to be grinding the series. Yep. But some of the bigger events and some of the medium events as well, a couple of the Sunday Million special editions, we will showcase with our Cards Up coverage. And that starts on Wednesday of next week, Wednesday the 11th. I'm so excited for that. It's You know, I, you guys know I don't play a ton of MTTs, generally speaking, especially on stream. Obviously, I'm going to be taking a somewhat of a hiatus from streaming during Scoop because there's so much action to cover. So we're going to have a lot of uh, commentary from these guys and myself included. But I think I'm really going to go deep on Scoop this year, especially in the events that we cover, guys, because if I'm on a final table, it means I'm not working. No, I'm just kidding. I, I love hearing, being here with you guys. Don't miss it. Scoop is dope. And I know we've got Pie Face in the chat on Twitch, so I do want to highlight as well that in addition to the live streams, which are going to be mostly Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays through the series, in the hours leading up to those streams, we are going to have some final table replays. And those replays are mostly going to focus on the non-Hold'em variants. So we do like to bring you variety. Must have been a big one. Nah. <laughs> Remember those cereal packs you used to get, right? The nine little boxes, yeah. and you'd eat the cornflakes and then go, ah, I'm left with eight other cereal boxes that I don't want. Did you know you could eat those right out of the box? <laughs> they were little bowls. You could peel the sides of the box oh, open. Yeah. They had perforated. No. Yeah. yeah. And then you pour the milk right into the bag. How am I only just discovering this? <laughs> yep. Mind blown. I mean, guys, you're out here. You're learning about poker. You're learning about life. This is this is top class. I'm top just class here for content. the pocket jacks under the gun. <laughs> yeah, Trofimov making it 200,000. Hugo Pingray in the big blind with 5-4. Uh, by the way, guys, we are at the human calculator level. The pocket apple jacks. <laughs> They don't taste like apples. Pingray defends. So it is Trofimov versus Pingray. Oh, and here's a hashtag fun fact. If you put both last names together, an anagram of both surnames is praying for vomit. <laughs> uh, I can't give Statric credit for that one. That comes from our director, Simon. Ace, seven, eight. The gut shot for Ping Ray. Jack's still good. Anagram for director Simon is, I'm a rectum. I call hashtag fake fact. Oh, Jack on the turn. Woo. Set for Trofimov. James, what's going on here, man? Just like, just people just turning rivering sets all day. Is this, is it, is this what it's going to be like? Is this the final table? I mean... A six here would be praying for vomit. So when check check on the flop, this is a delayed continuation bet from Dragos Trofimov. 350,000 into 550,000, and Pingray folds. This here is the flat part of the race. This is where players jockey back and forth for slight position here and there, and we kind of just wait to see who is going to stop treading water first. Yeah, that's the name of the game, Joe, for sure. Um, you know, we talk about it a lot. We use this we use this acronym a lot, ICM. But uh, yep. that's the name of the game, you know? Like, you got... This is this is this is where the uh, the real money is is won or lost, and you got to really really tread lightly. 
Rem now says, imagine winning scoop at $2 and call yourself a scoop champion, lol. So that I say, imagine writing it in chat, Everett, again, and expecting anyone to see it. Yeah. Lol. Yeah, you're banned. You're banned. I, I actually, it's funny you picked up on that one, buddy, because I literally snap wrote, imagine cheapening the game of poker by stake shaming people. Can you yeah. imagine? Can, oh, can you yeah. Imagine? Stake I, shaming, I like that. This is, this is probably. I mean, I don't like it, but I like the name of it. This is probably the same guy who is like, yeah, poker's dead. You know, games games aren't good. It's just everyone's too. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Continue to shame people for playing for playing two dollar tournaments. See how good the games get, buddy. Samoa is raising under the gun with Ace Ten gets it through. Uh, just to back up that comment, Nick, with some real logic. I might be on board if a two dollar sit and go, yeah, or a two dollar tournament with eighteen runners awarded a scoop, but. If you play a 5K scoop, you're going to be up against what? 200 people? Sure. 300 people? Yeah, something in that region. If you play a $2 scoop, how many players? How big a field are you going to have to fade, Nick? <laughs> Probably the biggest that you can get for the entire series. 10,000? 12,000? It's, it's ludicrous. 15,000? Yeah. 30,000? Yeah, yeah. That's a, yeah, I hadn't thought of that. Klingren says, but Nick Walsh TV, you don't care about $12. I know that's the meme. I know that's the meme. I know Are you that's sick the of that yet? No, I still love it, actually. I still love it. It it kind of goes with my brand, my hashtag next game, please, kind of uh, kind of persona online. So I appreciate it. Klingren, congratulations on your ginormous, was it 27K uh, knockout win recently? If I'm not mistaken, you, you hit another giant, giant uh, knockout, didn't you, bud? Shout out to all my... Uh, my knockout players out there, my old Grand Tour homies. Alan Vane asks, so how do you win here? Like, is it first to get all the pot or what? When do they stop playing? That's correct, Alan. The last player with all of the chips. That's eventually what will happen as people get knocked out. One player ends up with all the chips. That is the winner, and that is when it is over. And it looks like... Pungre, Peng, Pengre, Peng, the player from France is re-raising with 10-9 offsuit on the button. 750,000. Well done. Against the under the gun open too. Klingren confirms it was the 27k win. Very, very nice. Can you can you imagine, Joe? You buy in for five bucks, you knock a player out, and that spinner goes, "All right, how about twenty-seven thousand dollars?" I can't imagine. Yeah, yeah, it hasn't happened to me either. I think the biggest I got was four hundred, but the grind continues. Okay, let's see. Fantastic format. Okay. If you guys haven't had a chance to try it, give it a go. That's what I stream a bunch on the Pokestar channel as well. At least one day a week. Brody Weatherby says, Lamau, they actually answered that question. Lamau. Well, Brody, we need more people who are new to the game asking genuine questions about how it works. What we need is fewer people Lamauing at people who might be new to the game. Wait for it. Da -da 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 -da. You banned. banned. It's kind of a culture we're trying to cultivate here of being welcoming to new players and making the game friendly. Yeah, guys, for real, honestly, as an ambassador for poker and for poker stars, can confirm, be nice, be nice to players, man. That's what you want. You want people playing the game. The fewer people joining us, the tougher it gets. Just be cool. Less lamowing cool. at people. Yeah, less lamowing, please. Anyway, King's here for Trofimov on the button. Simoas in the small blind. He might elect a three bet here. I think I prefer a three bet rather rather than a fold usually. Yep, this is just relatively unlucky. Yeah, it's, you're running into the absolute apex of the button opens range here, and that range will be hideously wide. So this is kind of unlucky. I really like the three bet though. When we can see he has kings, not so much. But, of course, you know, we're trying to use this information in a way that is useful for us. You have to imagine yourself in that position, in his position. What would I do? That's what we ask ourselves when we watch this kind of commentary, uh, this kind of coverage, I should say. Is this a is this a cold four bet in the big blind situation? 
Oh, sorry. He's we're, ex- we're excuse back me. to the button. We're back to the button. Excuse me. Thank you, Joe. A not cold four bet, a regular old four bet. <laughs> a, normal, a normal four bet. Probably going to end this hand. Yeah, I didn't see that button in front of him, but uh, there you go. Pretty standard, and I like the sizing here, too. Just a little bit over double. Interesting question here from Blundell, which I would like to address, uh, who says, is it being nice if you only want them to join to take their money? Uh, no, it's not, but there are more reasons to be nice to new players than to just take their money. It's to grow the game. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, that, that wasn't a predatory comment. It's just important that we have new people joining because it's you know it's something that it benefits from having a larger player pool overall. And some of those new players who are joining us might go on to be very good players who will take my money. So it's all it's all the same. You know, it's all good. And losing is a part of the game. And playing against players who are better than you in the beginning is also part of the game. Yeah, no, 100 percent. You got to I say it on stream all the time. A wise man once said losing is an important part of winning poker. Is that you? Yeah, that was you me. You quoted yourself? Yeah, yeah, I, I do that on stream. I think it, I, 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 the problem is I think people think I'm quoting someone else, so it doesn't come across that way. <laughs> but, no, it is true, guys. It is true. And um, part of poker is, is, is mental game. A huge part of poker is mental game. And, you know, learning to manage those losses is, is pro more important than many other facets of the game. Hungry. Looking hungry. Queen nine suited. V. Jane says poker culture will thrive. And by the way, it's nice to be nice. It is nice to be nice. It is, guys. It's so much easier to either be nice or say nothing. Yeah. Than to be rude. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, guys, got a little bit of a hand brewing here. UTG plus one ping ray is going to open queen nine suited. We've already spoken about this, guys. Queen nine suited, just oh, so pretty. So pretty. I love that hand. Pocket 10 is going to be calling in the cutoff here. Obviously, these two trying to control the size of the pot, given the fact that they are some of the biggest stacks here. Ping ray with 58 big blinds now after the action. And Trofimov with 52 after making that call. And it comes queen high. Wow, this is a big flop, though, for uh, for Samoas, too, right? Check. The nut flush draw, one over card to the queen. Still with 44% here. That is wild. 44% to win this pot in a three-way pot is pretty significant. Those tens obviously just getting crippled now once the queen hits. Hard to know it, though. I mean, Samoa's not often going to think he has the best hand, but it's certainly going nowhere, but... Tens could very easily still be the best hand. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, if you consider the positions, he's going to have to be pretty sticky here a lot of the time, especially with the ten of spades that blocks some flush draws. Samoas with that bet of 360k is now going to face a very tricky player who's just calling. And the tens do go away after that action. Certainly not always best to stick around with two tens. Ooh, what a turn. Why is that what a turn? Because it's not a spade. I see. Jack of hearts obviously not changing too much here, guys, but um, not completing the flush. King Ray probably wants to go ahead and, and barrel once more. I, I imagine, I, I, I think this is definitely the kind of turn mm -hmm. where you realize your opponent mm -hmm. is going to have some flush draws, he's going to have some straight draws. So you want to get value from those, you know? Arc G asking, one of the commentators keeps saying sticky. What does this mean? Uh, it just means a player that's hard to get rid of. They don't fold their, their calling, so they're stuck to you. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, I keep stuck saying... Stuck to the pot. I keep saying sticky. I, I should clarify. Yeah, <sighs> just just like, you know, you got it kind of hand or you're the kind of player who doesn't like to fold. Uh, in some cases, you have sticky opponents where they just don't hey. like to fold full stop. 
Poker legend, Andre Akari on the rail. What's up, Andre? Sweating Samoas. Not out of the question. Oftentimes when Andre is around, Neymar's not too far behind. Usually, yeah. Those, those two are two peas in a pod. Um, I think there's a chance I can jump on the rail actually later on. Kind of, <laughs> kind of pumped about that. So to explain Sticky, you know how like your friends are always trying to like avoid you or like go to parties and not tell you what it, where it is and you show up anyway? That's kind of what, <laughs> what being Sticky is like. Yeah, the, you can have Sticky opponents, people that are just, well, I mean, what might be called a calling station, somebody that just likes to call and see cards. And then also there's situations where you need to be Sticky yourself because you're aware of the fact your opponent can have a lot of bluffs exactly. and you've got to be even strict hand, that kind of thing. And River goes check, check. <laughs> And interesting yeah. check back from Samoa's in position. Yeah, that is interesting. <laughs> I mean, that Brazilian rail is getting bigger and bigger. I, I'm really into it. Okay, guys, can we get another poll for Andre Akari's hoodie, please? We're on a hoodie watch. <laughs> Do you guys prefer this? Is this better than than, than Son Man's hoodie? What a guy. What a guy. Hero, hero I, and legend of the game. I can't tell if I would never wear a hoodie like that because I don't care for it or because I could never afford it. It's one of those <laughs> things where I'm like, I would never, I would never drive a Jaguar. Never. I would never drive. <laughs> I, I hate when also, do I that. cannot drive a Jaguar because I, I cannot afford that. a Jaguar and never will. I had a guy, I was on stream, and I, uh, I got on a table. He goes, hey, what is that spade next to your name? And I said, oh, it means I'm, I'm team pro. I'm an ambassador. He goes, honestly, if they offered me a, a contract, I probably wouldn't say, I probably wouldn't even say yes to it because, you know, corporation, bro. I was like, oh, I'll tell him. Mm. I'll, tell, I'll tell him to, uh, to not send that email then. You were on the list, buddy. I got to tell you, as someone who has sold out multiple times in his life, it's, it's great. <laughs> it is really fantastic selling out. <laughs> it is so cool. Like when your uh, bills come at the end of the month and you're just like, oh, I can pay this. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's a nice feeling. Oh, man. I get, I don't think I can call it selling out because it's what I've wanted to do for the majority <laughs> of my life. But, uh, yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you, you sure you don't want to be with one of the uh, team pro of one of those indie sites? Yeah. One of those grassroots, grassroots. sites? Achilles Last Stand says, sticky means they are covered in honey and may attract bears. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah that's sure. fair, too. Achilles Last Stand, great to see you, buddy. Well, blind on blind here, Cervantes Sunmez. Nick, as soon as I heard there was another hoodie vote, I had to get back on the stream. <laughs> and I can tell you that you've lost this one as well. Uh, I, well uh, the, the no's have it by a margin of 52 to 48. Okay, but that's 2% less than the last loss. And all I'm going to say is, guys, that means... 48% of the time, it works every time. Well, don't try and put a positive spin on this. I've had to listen to people for the last six years tell me how 52% is an overwhelming majority and to decide everyone's future, so. The people have spoken at 52%. And everyone else will just go along with it. All six players still remaining and 26 minutes left on the 50 100 blind level so we did reference earlier on that there was the prospect of adjusting the duration of the blind levels obviously with all six players still in we will keep the blinds at 90 minutes should we get to the end of level 29 without any eliminations we will load up another 90 minutes of poker on the other side of the break. I'm here for it. I pitched five-minute levels that go up every time we lose a player. Denied. I could live with that because you'd go what? 5, 10, 15, 20. Th you'd never get above 30-minute levels. So, Right, but you would, you would play more of them. It would be great. Don't you guys want more levels? More levels is better. More levels is better. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be all loosey-goosey changing the levels. All right, Nicholas Walsh. 
opportunity for some self-promotion. Final Ben 7 on YouTube says, just hopped on stream. Who is the commentator who keeps saying he streams on Twitch? Uh, my name is Nicholas Walsh, also known as Nick Walsh TV on all my platforms. Um, I have been a member of Team Pro and a PokerStars ambassador for some years now. I stream on the PokerStars Central channel now. I stream the majority of Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays throughout the year. I play a variety of games. Uh, I'm most known for my spinning goes, which I know a lot of people might find surprising. It is a game that you can play well, and it is a game you can profit from. Um, on Tuesdays, I stream a cool kickoff kind of thing with my friend Croaks, who's also a moderator for uh, Lex Veldis. And on Wednesdays, I play spins, and then on Thursdays, I'm trying to get better at MTTs. It's not a format that I played professionally. I was always a sit-and-go guy. And I would love for you guys to join me or follow me on social media. That would be great. I'll let you guys know when I'm going live. I'm also trying to develop some really cool Friday streams where you guys are going to see some kind of stuff you haven't seen before. Lots of, uh, lots of players, lots of cards up action. I've got a bunch of ideas that we're trying to develop behind the scenes, and we got the budget and the know-how to do it. So, yeah, give me a follow. Okay, well, there's a lot more detail than I was expecting. That's your, that's your one shot. Okay, thank you. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. I, 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 I'm, not, uh, I'm not here for the clout. You give me my shot. I took it. You only get one shot, ladies and gentlemen. It's, he's still going. <laughs> <laughs> Cervantes was the preflop raiser, opening the cutoff to 200,000 with ace eight suited. Trofimov defending his big blind with queen nine. Uh, Cervantes has slipped down to around 20 bigs, having doubled up at the start of this session. It's just kind of unfortunate for Cervantes that the one major play we saw this entire final table happened at his expense. MTT. MTT means multi-table tournament. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so I think that's why lots of people will be like, who is this Nick Walsh guy? I'm going to give him a quick Google. You might find some info on me, but uh, no, no real MTT scores. I was always kind of a slow and low guy, you know, played a lot of cash, played a lot of, tur uh, a lot of sit and goes, just kind of getting it every day like that instead of the big wins, you know? Cervantes with the best hand and facing a lead on the turn of 125,000 after when check check on the flop. Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. Three, yep. four, five, yep. six, yep. seven, eight. You got them all. Don't get tricked like I did, though. The nine isn't part of it. No. And crucially, Trofimov playing the board may think that this is going to be a pot that everyone, and I mean everyone, is going to love. It's not. So Nick, what's the what's the bet size here? Like obviously you're gonna be tempted to just go full pot, right? Like that's the temptation. Just be like a nonchalant pot. I, yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head there. I think the I think full pot is what you do as a bluff here. So you kinda of wanna balance that out and kind of do the same thing. It's what we call pol a polarizing bet, right? You wanna bet an amount that looks like it could be a bluff, but also will get paid for a chunk. I like six too. Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't get, even, what, just insta-fold for six? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Insta-folded. Cervantes now back up to around 30 big blinds. Marcelo Simo is still the chip leader with 82 big blinds. 20 minutes on the level. Six players remaining from a starting field of 1,073. And most of the 5.2 million euro prize pool still to be paid out. Uh, Mini-me Gatron says, have you hit any jackpots at Spinning Goes, Nick? I actually hit the absolute maximum jackpot once. I hit a $150,000 spin in previous times. We have a command for it in the chat. I think it's exclamation mark Nick spin. Um, since then, 
hit like an 8K and a 6K and a couple other smaller ones. But yeah, sure, plenty of plenty of them. When you play the volume I played back in the day, you're going to see some big, big jackpots. Nick's been a lot different than Meat's been, huh? Yeah, I, I feature on both. <laughs> <laughs> Ping Ray on the button, nine, eight offsuit. I think Ping Ray might just like the nine of clubs. I'm gonna keep an eye on that. A lot of people have like a favorite hand. Not many people have a favorite card. What's your favorite card, Joe? I like the Jack, uh, I like Jacks in general. I used to really like the Jack of Hearts until I realized it's basically Jay Hardigan. And so I'm like, well, that can't be my favorite card. But you are the Jack of Hearts in the Poker in the Years logo. But why aren't you the Jack of Hearts? Doesn't I'm that the make Jack of sense? Spades because I'm the Jack of the Spade of the brand and you're the Jack of People's Hearts because everyone loves you. Okay, then the Jack of Hearts is my favorite hand. My favorite card. Sorry. Also, the Jack of Spades has quite a serious expression, whereas the Jack of Hearts is kind of doing something weird with a feather. He's a bit of a goober. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Such a goober. I, I, I love the graphics you guys have for the Poke in the Air podcast. Uh, the card thing is very, very cool. I dig it. Also, speaking of plugs, Poke in the Air's podcast, <laughs> award-winning podcast. If you guys want to check it out, it's on pretty much every it, it platform. Doesn't, it you doesn't can make find. your plug less egregious if you plug <laughs> us right afterward. Okay. <laughs> I was invited to plug. You can't play me like that. Alas, Nick, you don't have a crawler. We do. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, who says, I thought your favorite card would be the Joker, obviously does not remember the EPT theme song lyrics. People playing lots of poker in the deck. There are no Jokers. Luca. Pagano. <laughs> no, 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 not, not, not the rap. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I just couldn't help it. When I hear that, I just got to say it out loud. It's, it's, it's a thing. Everyone knows that the rap is obsolete. <laughs> not when you do it, James. Bringing it back. That was a retro thing. <sighs> Never die in my heart. Oh, I'm so glad there's a link to it in Twitch chat. Is that your link or the original? I'm pretty sure that's my cover version. You really did nail it, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah, it and was great. I'm sure I asked you this before. How many times did you practice it before that recording? A couple. A couple? Okay. Okay, but you guys know how the Louis Theroux rap from his Weird Weekend series is doing the rounds on social media right yes. now, right? I want you guys to bring back the remix of James Hardigan doing that rap, and I want that to become the next viral th there's, audio. There's nothing more embarrassing than trying to make something poker viral go viral. Like, it's, it's just... It's, it's a just, hard sell, I it's agree. It's just not going to happen. I, I, I agree, I agree. But it, it, the, I feel like there's parallels between the two, and I dig that. I'm no Louis Theroux, Nick. No, but I think the majority of America doesn't hear the difference, so I think it could That's happen. a good point. <laughs> Don't forget to watch my HBO show last week tonight. Tomorrow. As Cervantes opens under the gun with King Queen. Samoa's with Ace King, three bets from the small blind. <laughs> we got really great commentary from Stapes, John Oliver, and David Williams, apparently. <laughs> How could, I don't sound like David Williams. What are you talking about? I actually can hear it. Yeah? Yeah, I can. I did a lot of commentary with David Williams when he was on the circuit. All right, fine. Yeah, I hear it a little too. You both have relatively deep voices and speak relatively quickly. Yeah, yeah, I got, I got, I got speed issues. I talk too fast. That's, people have always told me that, especially when I'm nervous. Do you remember when David Williams bagged himself an all-in triangle? And we caught it on TV. I do remember. I do remember. I, I kind of got quiet because it's a sore spot for me. I still don't have one. 
there are so few flexes that one can make in this job. And having an all-in triangle is probably the biggest. Ace king on the button. Yeah, they're nice. For Marcelo Simos. That's a sweet phrase, ace king on the button. Ace king suited. And the crunchiest of suits. Deconstructs the pyramid to raise it up to 250,000. Even though, strictly speaking, they're not in the... Oh, boy. Certainly a defend. Savanti starts the hand with 25 bigs. Probably too many to jam. Too many big blinds, yeah. This guy's so composed. I, I'm a huge Cervantes fan, both in soul caliber and in real life. <laughs> well, he has defended. Heads up to the flop, which is... Queen, Jack, Deuce, domination, rotation in Jaime's favor. A little, a little tougher to navigate when it's not top pair you hit with your rotation, but the King of Diamonds is a nice card to have here also. Checks it to Marcelo, who continues flop. 10 would be spicy. 120K. But Cervantes, you know, is not loving calling multiple streets here. Well, he's going to call this bet, and that's going to take us to the turn. Three of clubs. Maybe won't have to call multiple streets. Not sure if Samoas will slow down once getting called. He does. It's, I was going to say, I have to try to not check back super fast here, but that's exactly what happened. <laughs> Four pairs on the river. It's the deuce of clubs. And after the action's gone like this, I don't know if you can get a jack to fold without really going for it. Oh, we're going to value better, Jack. See, this is a good player. This is a good player who knows exactly where he's at. Knows he can bet a Jack here. I don't think this is a bluff all that often with from Cervantes' stack. Yeah. So Samoa is maybe thinking about hero calling with Ace King. I think obviously knowing what the cards are, his only shot is to put in a bunch more chips. Cool. Wow, that's Makes a, the call with Ace High. Hero call gone wrong, and the pot will be shipped to Jaime Cervantes, who's back up over 30 big blinds again. Soul Caliber. Let's go. That's pretty cool. You get the value bet second pair, get paid. Martin Mativ says, poker is not like before bluffs and mind games. These guys are so tight. They're playing for three hours straight and no one's out yet. I mean, I would agree. It's not like it was before, but everyone's figured out that that's a really dumb way to play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine that. Imagine trying to win the tournament. God, people are so tight. It's like the people who watch the NBA and think it was better before you were allowed to dunk. <laughs> it was much better when you passed the ball for four to five minutes. And 58 of the final table as we enter the last 10 minutes of this session. And 8 4 offsuit for the chip leader. 
He folds. Queen six for Vam. What was that reaction from Cervantes? Okay. Yeah. So it was something else. I spotted that too. Controversial hoodie. So Nez with a six off in the big blind. Yeah, has the dominating hand. Just one raise, and it's very close to the mid. A little bit over mid raise, so I think you're probably going to want to defend this a ton. A6 off, though. Nah, doesn't play great. But you got to do what you got. Excuse me. You got to do what you got to do. Defense. And that means we get to see a flop. King, 9-9, nine, nine. ace high still ahead. So James, here's a flop where you're gonna wanna check with a6, and your opponent's gonna wanna bet, and you're probably gonna want to call. However, I'm wondering if the ICM considerations here might influence his decision-making here. So in Mez, 42 big blinds now in his stack remaining, and Vam, one of the chip leaders, he might be concerned about getting barreled off, but this isn't the kind of board where I think you're going to see a ton of, like, triple barrels as a bluff. I mean, Queen High actually has showdown here, too. Let's not forget that. When you're in a heads-up pot with ranges this wide, Queen High can make it to showdown and be the best hand, but I think the C-bet's pretty standard. 150K, nice and small. He doesn't have to go big here. He's going to get lots of defense from the big blind, and he's going to get tons of folds just betting 150K here, and this is, this is, this is what you like to see. These different bet sizes are going to make you a better player. And uh, when you realize the textures where you can go small, it's really, really nice. Sure enough, like I said, getting sticky with A6 off. Turn card is the king of clubs. Mm. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, you're going to be even more confident with Ace High at this stage, right, guys? Pretty unlikely your opponent has a king or a nine. Right. You've just counterfeited deuces, trays, fours, fives, six, sevens, eights, nines. And of course, Not nines. <laughs> your opponent doesn't have a king or a nine, but they do have two clubs. They do. They picked up a flush draw. They do. And I wonder if at this stage, Vami is going to go, actually, queen high is pretty good. Because for the same reason that ace high is good here, queen high is also good. You've counterfeited a bunch of hands on the turn that might have flatted pre. You will just have the best hand a ton, especially if they have some sort of gut shot draw on the flop that they might have floated with versus the small bet. And uh, you can just go ahead and either better check here, depending on your interpretation. It looks like he's reaching for chips, unless it was a time bank card. Yep, there you go. 225 on the turn. Again, look at the size. Guys, think about how effective this small bet will be on this texture for that size. And when you bet smaller, your bluff needs to work less often. And... Also, I guess you don't have to worry about getting called with a flush draw on the double paired board because they're going to call less often also. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think the ace is always going to defend here versus a small bet. Sure, sure enough makes the call. A club would be really interesting. Seven of diamonds. You know, at this point, if Sonmez checks, I feel like Vam can definitely check confidently because, like I said, when he's using these smaller sizings, he will get floated by draws that haven't that have missed, and Queen High will just be the best hand a ton of the time. I know that sounds wild, but um, double paired boards are very interesting, especially when they're on the higher side. You know, what if he's just got, you know, Queen Ten here or something like that? Queen High could be good. Plus, he's got a gut shot twice. If you bet bigger, you're going to have less of that. And sure enough, check, check. And uh, looks like Sonmez is going to be up around 655,000 chips net from that pot. Very nice. A couple well, claps on the rail. Yeah, well played by Sonmez. Yep, I love it. And 25K final table. Oh, I see Davidi Katai bust in 10th. Wait, wait, guys. Manig, Lerzer. Manig is there. Manig is there. I've already gotten one of his winning photos. He's already won an event here in, uh, in Monte Carlo. Steve O'Dwyer and Demita Danchev 
a couple of other EPT champions who are also at that 25k final table. Let's go, Manig. He was actually going to jump on comms with us, and he said, ah, maybe I'll play the 25k. What he meant to say was, maybe I'll win another poker tournament. That's kind of like when a girl says to me, like, maybe I'll go out with you, or maybe I'll go out with a more famous person. Hmm. Do commentary for a couple of hours or play a 25K? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Strange which one he ended up choosing. Sit in a room with these guys or win, you know. <laughs> exactly. Win a couple hundred thousand, you know. What do we, it's, it's, it's a tough spot. It's a tough spot. Alex and NFFC says, Manic Loiser, what a man. Even my wife loves him and she hates poker. Oh, man. Tough spot. Huh. Tough spot. No. He's, he is the bomb. I love that guy. Not the answer I would expect from, uh, from my wife hates poker but likes blank. I think Manic would be. Uh, it would take me a long time before I got to Manic Loiser. No offense. <laughs> You usually hear things like Negrano, Phil Gordon, Phil Ivey. Not to say that Manning isn't as good as those players, but just doesn't have the, the profile. So, he, you know, Manning is one of those great. guys. He just he just quietly gets it all the time. You know what I mean? He gets it from this guy's wife, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's uh, he's very humble, Manning. Spent a lot of time with that guy. He's very humble, very down to earth. He likes to just... Uh, Likes to just wake up and win poker tournaments. Doesn't shout about it. Literally have a ton of his trophies sitting in my house right now since he moved from Brighton. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he's got, a, he's, he's got a few titles, to say the least. Uh, before the hand, yeah. 3.1 now. All right, lots of Broadway here. Cut off versus big blind. King in the window, two clubs and an ace, so yeah. Ten would be so spicy. If we could do a quick poll in chat to see if you guys agree with Hardigan or agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a lot of well said stapes. <laughs> Cervantes continuing with the gut shot, the backdoor queen of clubs draw. Trofimov does have the best of it and is likely to end with the best of it most of the time. All right, DJ Siddiqui, it's been nice having you. Smell you later, you banned. Queen of the turn. Ignore that. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Good save, graphics team. For what game does that capability exist? This could well end up being the last hand of the level. We've got 30 seconds on the clock. Deuce on the river. So guys, earlier on, we had the opportunity to promote the Poker in the Ears podcast. And we did mention that John Hamm was a guest on the show not that long ago. Someone asked, John Hamm the actor? <laughs> the answer was yes. And to prove it, you're going to see him and hear from him during the next break. 
I've gotten to interview slash spend some time with John Hamm a couple times in my life, and every time it's the best day of my life. Trofimov has bet 200,000 on the river. Cervantes has third pair. <laughs> nah, John Hamm the butcher. That would be a great name for a butcher, John Hamm. I joked John Hamm, the inventor of Hamm earlier. Someone had a much better joke. Wow. <laughs> this bet gets paid. Trofimov wins the last hand of the session, and we are going to be going on break with all six players still at this final table of the EPT Monte Carlo main event. John Hamm, CEO of Hamm. <laughs> <laughs> so when we come back... The blinds will be up to 61.20, and I think I can say with some certainty for the first time since we started covering the main event on day two, the average stack is going to be less than 50 big blinds. Woo. Thank you. What a fast structure. Let's check on the stacks of all six players. Samoa still leads with 66 bigs. Look, it is getting shallower, guys, but it's all bunched up. And the only shortish stack is Jaime Cervantes playing 23 bigs. So the action resumes in 18 minutes' time. We continue to play down to a winner here in the EPT Monte Carlo main event. We'll see you on the other side of this short break. I wish I had the, the confidence to actually use Don Draper as my own <laughs> poker star's avatar, but I think I would prefer the anonymity rather than yes. broadcasting it. People are always asking me who I think the best celebrity poker players are because I do end up playing in some of these games in L.A., playing on some of these celebrity TV shows. I want to know who you think some of the best celebrity poker players are. The guys I always find hard to beat, and we lost one this year because he was an excellent player. Uh, Willie, uh, yeah. Willie Garson, um, um, sadly uh, and shockingly, uh, 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 oddly, um, are the are the one of the usual suspects. I mean, uh, uh, Jason uh, Alexander, Kevin Pollock, they're both very good. They're both very they they play good, sensible poker you know if they were if they were chess players they'd be you know grandmaster they don't make mistakes they rarely make mistakes um uh and and hank is also very very good um but uh you know i'm, I'm more of a uh surprising <laughs> poker player just to, to say the least um but uh david wayne i think is a very good player uh michael ian black um i've not played with her but i've seen her play um uh um Meg Tilly, uh, Jennifer Tilly, sorry, Jennifer Tilly, not Meg, not her sister. They're two separate people um, <laughs> that share one voice. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, there's quite a few people out there that, that are good. I mean, I think that, that, that the explosion of, of, of poker as a cultural thing has, has proven that if you're, if you're good at math and you're, and you're quick uh, witted and you have a lot of patience, that you can be, you can be as, as good as some of these people who are professional. I think people people really realized during because all, all of my home games and fun games and friend games all went online, yeah, uh, and and most have continued online even even though technically we could reconvene. It's just so convenient, and I think it was it was an amazing lesson for a lot of people to learn when you start playing hundreds of hands a night rather than ten and twenty a night. How many? times hands that you didn't think you would see start to show up uh and i think you know we, we were all kind of mystified like quads again like we i've played with these guys for 20 years i've never seen a quads hit like are you crazy uh, or i can think of the amount of times that they've hit you know, on on one hand and we we'd get them three four times in a night it's like oh yeah we just played 250 hands of poker like it, it on any given night at somebody's house when there's food being ordered and and, and music being put on, you know, we, maybe we'll get into 50, 60 hands. Like, it's it's crazy. Um, but, yeah, it was, that kind of stuff is that the, the math is is no joke. 
in the same way that you were finding yourself playing a lot of online poker and watching a lot of movies during lockdown, John, we found ourselves watching a lot of online poker rather than being able to go to live events. And one of the things I think we've discovered in the last 18 months is there are a lot, a lot of players on PokerStars who have Don Draper avatars. And <laughs> we, would, we would love it if every time it's like, maybe it is John Hamm. You think that's maybe, John Hamm? Maybe that, that is that actually John Hamm. John Hamm from Hamm. Scotland. Wow, I did not know that. That is uh that's quite a that's a that's a weird honor, but an honor nonetheless, I suppose. Um yeah, that's 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 amazing. I wish I had the the confidence to actually use Don Draper as my own <laughs> poker stars avatar, but I think I would prefer the anonymity rather than yes. broadcasting it. Lines are 50,000 and 100,000 with a 10,000 ante. Mike Dietrich folding eights under the gun. Doesn't want to be the first guy out. Ace 10 suited for Mohsen Charania. Big suited ace. Let's get it started in here, Most I am. Raises to 225,000. Gomez and Modston fold. Ace Jack for Lucille Kai. She's got most and most dominated. She could three bet, but a three bet would oftentimes chase out better and only get action from worse. Call. Call. She calls. Suited would most likely be a three bet. Caprioli folds the small blind. Guion gives up the big blind. We're going heads up to the flop. Chirani is out of position with the worst hand, but he does have the pre-flop betting lead. Had she three bet, she certainly would have gotten action, I think. Queen, Queen, eight. Ace, Jack, high, still good. Mike Dietrich would have flopped a full house. Ouch. Mosin continues for 185,000. And he continues to be dominated, though a chop is possible. Call. Lucille calls. Sounds like a defiant call to me, but I could just be reading into it. Floating this flop is a little dangerous given the stack sizes. Blue chips are worth 5,000. Yellows are worth 25,000. On a board like this, it's really hard for Mosin to have connected. Seven of clubs changes nothing. There's an 8% chance of a split pot. Mosin bets again. 335,000. Mosin's trying to ghost in the distance. Wonder if Kai was calling the flop just to see if Mosin would shut down. Nope. She calls again. We've seen her call down much lighter. The river. There's another seven. They're both playing queens and sevens with an ace kicker. Mosin checks. Check. And Lucille checks behind. A5. Me, me too. You play that trash? Nice river. Nice river. I knew it! Uh, I thought she was finding a shove, check shoving the river. I thought you were going to bet it. Nine seven for Castelluccio. He folds from under the gun. Ace king for Mosin Charania. Mosin should most deaf raise here. And he does raise to 250,000. Folded around to Mike Dietrich. The table short stack. He has ace nine of clubs. You hate it, but with his stack, you gotta shove this. Calling. He does. He's definitely gonna get a call, and he's definitely dominated. Cards go on their back. What's that? Well, we'll see. Good luck, Mike. Yeah, you too, bud. Mike Dietrich will be looking for a nine or some clubs. Both would be preferable, and also no king. Otherwise, he will exit this tournament in sixth place. Nice of Clayton Mostyn to stick around and rail his buddy. 10-7-5 flop with no clubs. Not the sweat he was hoping for. Now he's just looking for a nine or running straight cards. An eight on the turn. We got a gutter ball sweat. Any jack, any nine, any six. The river. Is a brick for Dietrich. He goes out in six. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. 
Nice end, brother. Play well. Lines are up to 80 and 160,000. Curiously, Sergio Castelluccio has limped the button with seven do suited. Castelluccio's played pretty well all day, but I am not a fan of this at all. No reason to get fancy, but like I said before, sometimes losing a big pot can make you do some crazy stuff. Mosin has called out of the small blind. Lucille Kai checks her option. We're going three way to the flop in an unraised pot. It's a little deceptive where Lucille didn't raise. Good way to balance her range. The flop is. 8, 10, 7. Castelluccio has the best hand. Mosin's whiffed. Lucille's also whiffed. Not going to stop her betting, though. 190,000. She does have two overs and a gut shot. Here comes Castelluccio, raising to 530,000. Ah, the old button limp bluff phrase. Oops. Mosin accidentally showed his cards as he folded. What's Lucille going to do with her top air? Now, it might look like button clicking, but bluff raising, bluff three betting are just things you have to throw into your game sometimes. This is a good spot for Lucille because Sergio limp preflop, which means he can pretty much never have an overpair. There is the re-raise. It's a three bet to 1.38 million. Which one of those two wasn't the lady? Castelluccio folds. Pocket jacks for Castelluccio. This guy catches more cards than a watermelon at Chris Ferguson's house. Under the gun, he is raising to 320,000. 6-8 suit for Mosin Charania. Should we play? <coughs> Extremely young. Extremely young. Extremely young. Um, thank you. Looks like Mosin Gosen wants to get a little cute on the button. Not terrible to do with a hand like this. You got position in the betting lead. Sometimes you win now, sometimes you win it on the flop. Sometimes you win a huge pot at showdown if you hit your hand. So he three bets to 680,000. Ace queen for Lucille Kai in the small blind. This is a hand that's certainly strong enough to call a three bet, but you don't really want a four bet with it. Either way, she's still got Scourgeo to act behind. And Mosin again if she does four bet. She calls. Bernard Guillaume folds the big blind. Oh, hi, you're still here. Castelluccio can't love it, but he probably just has to shove here. Hopefully he won't get called in two spots. Pauline. He does shove. Should get rid of Mosin. See ya, 8 Mile. And look at the trouble you caused. Question, what does Lucille do? Unless there's a player who's super short and about to bust, which there isn't, I think Lucille has to call here. If they were three-handed, this would be a snap call. I just hate to make this call and see Ace King get flipped over. A call. She calls. A few hands ago, Sergio Castelluccio had the chip lead. Now he's on the verge of going out the door. He's slight favorite, but it is a flip. And you can just read the stress on Lucille's face. You can tell how important this is to her. Castelluccio also sweating it just a little bit. Castelluccio needs the jacks to hold. Five cards to come. The flop is 3-10-9. Jacks are holding. Two diamonds on the board. Lucille does have a backdoor flush draw to go with her overs to the board. There's a queen on the turn! There is a sick sweat for Sergio to make a straight, though. A two. A two, c'est bien. He can win with a king, a jack, or an eight on the river. Will he double up? Will he survive? No. <laughs> Castelluccio busts in fourth. And Lucille Kai takes the tournament chip lead. If you don't think women are good for poker, that's the deepest final table rail I've seen all season. Lucille Kai in the small blind. It's 10 deuce off suit. Now it looks like Lucille's thinking about raising this. Typically, I'd give her a speech about how it's okay to fold your small blind sometimes, but Bernard Guillaume has been tighter than the legroom and coach, so I'm actually okay with her raising his big blind every single time. Well, she does raise to 390,000. Bernard has a hand, ace-eight. Now, if Bernard calls, Lucille has to know he's got something pretty decent. This guy hasn't played a hand since... I don't think we've actually seen him play a hand. He calls. Let's see a flop. 
Ace five jack, top pair for Guillaume. Now I know she won't do it, and I know I can see the whole cards and everything, but I'm all for check folding this once this ace hits. It's your bets, 430,000. Well, Bernard certainly can't and should not fold this to just one bet. Mm -mm. Cool. Yeah, oh. he got it. He got. He's still with us. All right, Bernard. I was starting to wonder about you there, buddy. To the turn. Maybe Lucille will just shut down now. Six of spades. Completes the potential flush draw, but we know nobody's really worried about that. Now, it looks like because she opened, she feels the need to barrel the flop and turn. I got to tell you, once this guy calls me on the flop, I am out of there. If you've ever tried to bluff someone over the age of 60 off an ace, you know it's like trying to ice skate uphill. 730,000 is her bet on the turn. All right, somebody just get near the defibrillator. Not a code red yet, just get over there. Wow, Dion folds. What? Oh man, I think that just gave me a nosebleed. Charania with king queen suited on the button, raising, makes it 410,000. Lucille folds the small blind. Bernard Guillon with ace four in the big blind. Thinking of doing something crazy, Bernard? <laughs> All in. He shoves! He knows those aren't aces, right? I'm kidding, he should probably shove with that anyway. Mosin calls. Just one little stack of yellows all it took for him. Practically a flip. Good luck, Bernard. Good luck. Uh, Thank you. Oh, Oh, like, that almost made me cry. I love him. What a flop for Charania. Queen, queen, nine. I have three queens. Thank you, Mosin. We'd noticed. Guillaume now with less than 1% equity. Lucille on the verge of going heads up against Mosin Charania for the title here in Monaco. Yes. Guillaume drawing dead on the turn. He goes out in third. Mosin Charania and Lucille Kai go heads up at the EPT Grand Final. As Ace King. Hello there. Well, if she raises 8 10, chance now she's going to raise Ace King. You don't say. Sure enough, 400,000. Pocket Queens from Osen. Well, hello to you too. Here we go. And here comes the three bet. Mosin Charania makes it a total of 855,000. And one more time from Lucille. Raise. Four bet coming, which will no doubt lead to a five bet jam from Charania, which no doubt she will call. Whoa, 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 let's not get ahead of ourselves, James. Mosin can lay this down still. Yeah, right. She makes it two million and fifty-five thousand. One more time from Mosin. We could probably just get to the river. All in. He oh, shoves yeah. call. and she calls. Here we go. Yeah. That's four up to them. You hate to see it come down to a flip, but both have played so good, both want it so bad. I don't know any other way to decide this. One of the biggest coin flips in EPT history. Look. A ridiculously huge race with the championship on the line. Nine, three, deuce, two clubs. Lucille calling for the backdoor flush draw. Her immediate outs are aces and kings. Queens are holding. Queens are holding. The turn is a seven, no club. No additional sweat on the turn. The river card potentially for the biggest title in European poker. If it's not an ace or a king, Mosin Charania has won this year's EPT Grand Final. The river card. 
is a brick. Sharani is the champion. He pockets more than 1.3 million euros and he will lift that trophy. Commiserations on one side of the room. And celebrations on the other. Great performance by Lucille Kaye. You lost, kid, but you don't have to like it. And Mohsen seems a little shell-shocked. Hello, my babies, and welcome back to the PokerStars European Poker Tour presented by Monte Carlo Casino. Live coverage of the main event final table from the Monte Carlo Bay Hotel and Resort. Still six players have not lost a player. Three hours down, many more to go. These are your final six players and their chip movements throughout the course of the day. Three profitable, three unprofitable, is that a word? I'm not really sure. Joe Stapleton, Sam Grafton, Hey, hey everyone. And Griffin Benger. Hey, 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 sorry, hey. <laughs> Griff Graf <laughs> has been reunited and it feels so good. That's what they're playing for. Everyone guaranteed six figures now and just shy of seven figures for the winner. Ex exciting times. Exciting times. Can you can you be live vicariously sure, for these of folks? Okay. I got a, lo a lot of love for these guys. I mean, seems like a bunch of fresh faced and excited poker players all competing for their first EPT title. Of course, we love people with a bit of history on the tour. People going for second titles and the like. But it's nice to see people getting rich. People having the biggest scores of their career. People in unfamiliar territory. The first time is always special. <laughs> Indeed. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Action folds around to Hugo Pangre. Pipi on the button. Pipi. And the BB is going to walk away with the chips in this pot. Love the. Suit and baseball cap combo. That's how I dressed in 2002. <laughs> it's uh, it's one of the great things about timeless poker. You can dress however you want, more Indeed. or less. And we definitely do. And you definitely do. No rules apply, including the rules of good taste, <laughs> fashion. I think Romanian. it used to be a rule in this particular yeah. venue that you had to wear pantaloons. Spraggy actually uh, messaged me on WhatsApp family. saying, oh, it says in the rules of the and casino, no sportswear. He's like, that's my old wardrobe. Like, will I be able to? I was like, I'm sure you'll be fine, mate. Wow. I'm going to start with two walks. Five, three off. Um... Eat some Mo's covering slightly more than the flam. May feel for that reason. Can play a little bit wider, limp in, perhaps. Certainly, more to not incentivize to raise as much as normal versus a limp. And does complete a quick check from Fam. Yeah, and with blinds at 60,000, 120,000, with 120,000 anti, we're finally not super deep. And to be honest, wow, Ooh. connection all around. Yeah, Vam got to see this is a pretty good flop for, you know, check back here, backdoor flush draw. Yes, absolutely. Strong kicker. Absolutely, absolutely. Won't be going anywhere. See, Samoa's betting out here. They're very deep stacked when it's a limped pot here, right? Um, SBR is huge. So this is a board that's going to change radically down the streets, which slightly weakens 5-3, but going to put in a bet. See, going to get, can easily get called by worst. Worst. <laughs> <laughs> going to take me a while to 
I didn't do my unique New York <clears throat> before we came on. <laughs> what was the one we came up with the other day? I'll never oh, remember I it. I forget. Turn card is the nine of spades. The rascal re-raised the river. <laughs> And Samoa's might elect to go big here, just because of the nature of his holding, playing sort of his exact two cards. And obviously this queen four weakens somewhat when uh, on a spade turn. Without, Not betting particularly big though. I mean, to be honest, I think this is, this is a reasonable size to choose um, with your range. Um, I'm a little surprised um, he doesn't go bigger. But I don't. I don't think it's bad. Mm -hmm. Just because a spade, a six, a deuce, a seven, the 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 nuts really really changes on a whole variety of, of of river cards, and you're out of position. Havan calls again, and the board doesn't really get much worse for five three like you would expect it might. Yeah, certainly none of the straightening cards coming in. Or like a, a board pairing. Yes, and, and negating of the 5-3 of the and 9 or 4 would have been particularly bad as well. well. Very surprising to see a check. You know, Vam can certainly have hands that make top pair on the turn, some 9-6s and 9-7s. Sure, or even even just kick 9 with a back yeah. door, right? Which yeah. is still very, very strong on this <clears throat> run out. Um, Samoa's content to pick up... Um, a decent sized spot with a, a pretty unspectacular pre-flop holding anyway. I um, think uh, uh, Samoa's maybe playing amazing. cautiously until the 5 p.m. flight from Rio arrives. Going to get that rail <laughs> a little bit deeper. Oh, is it? Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Flying in half of Ipanema. That's right. <laughs> to uh, get excited on the rail. Hey, so. It's definitely something I would be dumb enough to do, is to like not take certain spots till till my <laughs> friends got there. <laughs> yeah, Joe Stapleton stalling each and every hand. Yeah, it's going to be in Joe's book. Uh, Joe <laughs> folded aces. <laughs> in the event you are deep in a tournament. Yeah, I mean, obviously sure this is, you don't obviously this is, this is basically science fiction. What we're talking yeah. about. <laughs> The support of a rail is really important. To Look, are you guys saying you he's, don't? He's been in a bathtub once and dreamt through this fantasy of who he's fly out. <laughs> but he's just... Are you guys saying you don't believe in the multiverse? <laughs> there is one eventuality where I am playing at an EPT final table, and I have friends. Well, we're in the timeline <laughs> where Griffin's a World Series at Poker main event final table and a high roller champion, so anything yeah. is possible. Yeah. I'm happy to stay here. Vom raising small to big. Ace nine suited for Cervantes in the big. Yeah, and this is on the looser side. Obviously, you do get to pressurize. This is the dynamic I'm talking about. You do get to pressurize the big blind. Um, and I personally would flat this. Cervantes could go either way, depending on what he thinks about Havan's strategy. Yeah, he does decide to call. I think this is a nice play uh, with the ace nine suited. You fold out. Uh, worse, uh, if you shove, hard to get called by worse. So, little something for both players. Top pair for Zervante, second pair for Vom. Yeah, and this is obviously always a tricky spot in poker. The mid-strength hand out of position. The king with the seven kicker does have a heart in hand, and elects to bet. Setting his own price. And obviously, get called by worse, like Jack X, Queen X, uh, sometimes have to continue. Obviously, a 10 as well. Um, and Cervantes will be relatively happy with his holding, depending on what the further action is. Just going to take his time, but probably just a straightforward call. Two blacks, two greens, yeah. 250K. Yeah, and this is already a big pot. 2.8 million Cervantes started with. And 
The board gets straightier and flushier. Vom does have a live heart. Yeah, not a card anyone, either player, was rooting for. That's for certain. Obviously, it does boost Havam's equity, both drawing to a, a split pot and now can hit a seven or a heart or a king to move in to the, to the lead in this hand. Yeah, in a way, it is effectively <clears throat> a good card for Van because it, I think it creates a situation where we'll see oftentimes two checks here and there, therefore a free card. You know, if the turn was a, a brick, Van might have checked and face a bet from Cervantes and be in a bit of trouble. Cervantes checks behind. River is another jack. So it is a straighty, flushy, paired board. Because of the lights. Yeah, yeah. and and this this also a bad card for Havan. Because mm -hmm. obviously he lost to an yeah. ace. A queen that floated made it straight. And now obviously Still some jack X I, I see a little, uh, um, that call makes trips. Really going to be hoping to check down and chop Otherwise occasionally. Be like when I'm Does beat a 10. I don't mind wearing glasses. Does I'll beat a mask, king. I think it's very annoying. King is what he's up against. Cervantes, the shortest stack. Yeah. And even just with one street of action, two streets of action in the previous hand, a lot of money changing hands. Real boost to Cervantes' stack there. Still remains the shortest, but uh, eight or nine big blinds gain, gained. That was so weird. With the ace exposed, the ace of hearts. That was have so looked, weird. Have you looked which one came, came first? Yeah, the, the seven of hearts. Oh, wow. I could use that ace. And the, the flat. Yeah. I was, I was wondering, I didn't see the, the ace exposed. You just told me, okay. Oh, yeah, it was the ace of hearts. Like, so, it sounds thing? like there was an <laughs> ace of hearts card exposed. That's correct. Um, no, it makes which sense. And he got to him, I believe. Oh, really? Wow. Very, uh, if, if you want to go even deeper and a little meta with it, the Ace of Hearts was the river in the massive bluff uh, Ping Ray pulled against oh. against Cervantes. Uh, Sam, you missed that, but it was the biggest hand of the final table. Um, Ping Ray with the strongest move of the final table. Three barreling, an Ace, King, Six, Eight. Ace, third heart on the river, and... Uh, and shoving all in with just 8-9 as the under-the-gun aggressor 8-9 suited against the big blind ace-10, and he folded ace-10. Wow. It was beautiful, yeah. So it's three-way to the flop. Someone called it, like, the cutoff. Seabed 8-9. I was yeah, very yeah. envious of Cervantes all day until that point. <laughs> and I was like, ooh. So the ace of hearts really served the, the theme card <laughs> of Cervantes' day oh. is now has it here in the small blind and just straight shoves for nearly 30 bigs. What do you think about that? Is that a bit too rich? Say uh, no? for, for, for chips, I believe, A7 and A8 off do shove for 25 there, but on a, on a final, I'm not sure that that's, that's how I would approach it. Um, yeah. That's the meanest thing I've ever heard Sam say. <laughs> so harsh. <laughs> Cutting. Cut to the bone, Jamie Cervantes. Compliment coming in on YouTube from Deus S. Mortis, who says, you're as funny as Amy Schumer. Thank you. Compliment. Really funny. Sells <laughs> yeah, out arenas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hosts the Oscars. Emmy award winning sketch yeah, comedy yeah. show. Oh, my God. Inside Amy Schumer is a classic. Really good. Very good. Uh, thank you so much for that, if, uh, for Joe. He's, he's well, I don't know, I don't know who, who they're referring to, but oh. I assume it was the three of us. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> wow, what a, what a rub down. You just threw that at Griffin. He was like, wow, thanks very much. And you were like, oh, it's probably not about you. I think it's about Sam. <laughs> 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 not, not back down. Comment here from Rondo says, these guys don't like to bust. Yeah, so what ended up happening is... We, funny. These, these guys don't like to bluff, bust, a.k.a. they like money. A.k.a. they don't like losing? <laughs> uh, yeah, so, but to address sort of the, the, the theme of it, uh, we got to the final table much more quickly than we should have uh, as far as, like, what blinds level it yeah, should have happened. Yeah, we knew going to be long. And typically, this would be the level where we would be six-handed. So the fact that we didn't lose anyone in those last two levels makes sense. Because unless there's some ridiculous cooler, uh, there's just no reason to be playing for your entire stack. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 
And uh, again, we see a small blind very evenly stacked with Ping Ray uh, coming in for a raise with the 8 4 suited. Um, quite aggressive strategy from a couple of small blind spots we've seen. And Ping Ray, again, similar to what we saw with Cervantes, has an ace, therefore defense and spiking the top pair. And Erkan should, should sense here. Um, maybe, yeah, do, does elect to see bet, but you've obviously strengthened Ping Ray's range quite a lot by, uh, by raising preflop. See there's some back doors here, the wheel, the spades, some barreling opportunities. Yeah, the only kind of hands I think <clears throat> you're going to fold out um, for Ping Ray here. I mean, frankly, a lot of them include like an eight. Like, you know, you can get nine eight suited to fold, sure. nine eight off, yeah, uh, be... nine seven suited, the kind of hands, nine seven off. So yeah. that's a turn of four, but. Yeah, of course. And also the Broadway's float, right? King, queen, That's what king, I mean. Jack, they they all jack. call. Like, even jack nine suited might call. It's like a small, smallish bet, you know. Yeah. Jack nine off maybe folds. But, you know, I th I, as, as Sam said, Ping Ray's range is strengthened by calling the Rays. And, you know, when you're raising these kind of cards, Ace 10 3 in particular, I think, is, is uh, maybe not one you should elect to see bet here. Does outdraw the Queen Jack, the King Queen, and the like, which won't necessarily automatically be turned into bluffs versus a check. And for that reason, Erkan. Checks it over to Ping Ray. We would imagine that the worst ace that we have, also with that wheel interaction, um, you know, some backup where you can make a straight on the river, might be an ace we want to check back. But you know, <laughs> confidence from Ping Ray. Yeah, really, he's, really, he's, he's a boss. Yeah, really, really nice. Um, you know, as I said, might be one that I, that I would check back some, at some frequency. Maybe Ping Ray has used a a sort of randomizing mechanism, but senses the ace is best, bets for value, and also really nice to just fold someone off six outs there as well. Ping right. Definitely got some swag at the table. Yeah, Machino hoodie. Very in keeping with the Monaco aesthetic. The watch, the hoodie. Do you know about this guy's uh, watches, Sam? No, I'm not. I'm not. <clears throat> no, I don't mean it like you know watches. I mean that we've been talking about it yesterday and today. Okay. So yesterday he was wearing a quarter of a million dollar watch. Sick. And today he's wearing uh, at least $150,000 He switched watch. up he's his watch? Du he's from Dubai. He switched up his yeah, watch? Yeah, yeah, yeah apparently uh, he brought legends. more than one six-figure watch with him. Yeah. yeah. So really, yeah. So maybe the guy you should call the trip aces to the three barrel. <laughs> yeah. I mean, by the way, a little bit of credit there. Obviously, he turned the third pair, but didn't get over attached. Realized that he'd beefed up his opponent's range. Sonnes, yeah. That if King Queen and King Jack and such like aren't going to bluff, that the eight four really isn't worth anything, and just bend his hand on the turn. So pretty nice there from uh, from the Frenchman. Samoa is opening. No, from uh, the German rather. Five four suited. I'd say it was a nice recovery. <laughs> Probably lost a little too many, too much money pre-flop and on the flop, but Cervantes ditching the ace jack. I'm, I'm not sure what information these players are getting about you know what happened 30 minutes ago, but I would say there have been a lot more light-ish opens. Now I know we're short-handed, okay. right? I know it's okay. I, I have something to say. Yeah. Okay. Now try to decode this one, and you too, Sam. Okay. We saw Samoa's snap. Fold, ace three of hearts on the same chip stack earlier on this final table under the gun. Correct. Uh, and now is uh, opening five four suited. Yes. I, Explain I don't, it to me. <laughs> I can't. I had a, I had a theory because he because he snap open pocket fours also. So I had like a theory, yeah. and that one if you if you hit God, a four it's yeah, more disguised. Sorry that you have to hear this. Yeah, it's more <laughs> disguised than a flush because if everyone sees the three hearts is what he's saying. Yeah. Sam can't believe how smart that was. That's why he's it's silent. It's like a right YouTube now. theory. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great board, by the way, for four five. Yeah, I love it. This Lovely. is this is just like three streets all in every time. This <laughs> oh, like, that's how I play this hand every yeah. time. Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely for sure a hand that we could have considered th three betting that Cervantes makes a really nice three bet bluff there. Ace Jack, 
uh, in my opinion. Again, the, you know, I'm coming in cold. These guys have a sense of, of, the, of each other's playing style. Um, and, you know, they're going to have their own approach to final tables. But it's definitely notable fold. Are you ready for the uh, Brazilian rail excitement? What, they're going to celebrate Seabed and Fold? Yeah. Maybe. Let's go. Maybe they're out to lunch. Love the joie de vivre. If I said that correct. 9.7 million now, by the way. This is a significant gap. Four million difference. We don't have the Brazilian rail going bananas at the moment. No dancing, no singing. But we did speak to his biggest Brazilian fan. So I know Marcelo since 2011. He's a, he's a good friend. And uh, he's probably one of the best non-professional players in Brazil. He's always fighting for all the rankings and uh, all the best places in BSOP. So he's a very good, good player and a great friend. Okay, so every time that a, a Brazilian guy is in the, any final table around the world, we celebrate as a soccer, you know, as a soccer game. So it's nice to see because all the Brazilians are super used to go to a soccer stadium and root for Corinthians, Flamengo, and all these big teams. And when we see a, a Brazilian guy in a final table, we do the same. So we sing, we celebrate, we scream. So it's nice and put some pressure on others. So it's great. <laughs> We never had uh, any Brazilians winning an EPT event, so probably it's going to be the, the first one. Uh, he has a great, a great opportunity to do that because he's a solid player. He knows how to play against professionals, against ragged players. So he's in good shape uh, technically to, to win the EPT, and we're going to celebrate in Brazil a lot. You know, I feel the same way about Sam Grafton that Andre feels about Samoas, a great player, a great friend, and my favorite non-pro. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, what, what an ambassador, by the way, Andre is. I feel like yeah. he personally knows everyone that's, oh, I, if you I, play yeah. poker once, that you get a, yeah. a, the, the day you, you create your PokerStars account, he, he FaceTimes yeah. you yes. and says like, well, he has to cheers, approve for, you. Log cheers yeah. for logging on. <laughs> yeah. He's got to approve you. He yeah. is the face of Brazilian poker. Uh, unbelievable guy. Yeah. Interesting pot developing here between Cernmez and Samoez. The two Ezes. Second pair for Samoez. Less interested than I thought, actually. I thought there were two hearts on board. Still top pair versus second pair. Third pair. Oh, embarrassing. What? Third pair, sorry. <laughs> I'm all over the place here. Not as good as I wanted it to be. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah. He, he just fold. just folded the yeah. pair with the back and flush. Doors, yeah. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. A little surprising. 9-2 Sunset says, The American poker market don't exist to poker stars, and this guy say soccer. Soccer, what a joke. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, Andre probably doing a lot better in life, huh? He said football instead of soccer. Sure. Don't tell Andre. I mean, he'll be devastated. I know. That this guy wait, till, wait till Neymar finds yeah, him. Yeah, like, <laughs> really. He's going to be really upset. Wait till his best friend, Neymar Jr., <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. gets a hold of this one. Yeah. He was calling it soccer for you guys. Okay. A lot of blind on blind action. Since I jumped in the booth. Yeah, nobody wants to play. Everyone's like, yeah, we're good. It's fine. Pretty interesting hands always, though, for sensing someone's style of play and their approach. These wide range spots. And some mo's. This time, electing to raise. Applying pressure. And it's a big. No, 3x. Not quite. 120k big blind, more like a 2.6x. 2.6x, right. I, I think that if we're going to raise... Love 2. I love 2.6. I love correcting He Sam. loves pointing out 2.6. That's it. Flop is 10, 8, 4, 2 spades. Top pair for Samoa. Is that his top pair, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bit of a weird one. Of course... You want to protect and get value. But again, a board that is going to change down the streets. 
not a hand that you're going to be wanting to put in huge amount of money on. Uh, money in, in on. on across the streets. But we'll begin with the sea bet. And Jack 3 gets quite close depending on the sizing. We've got the backdoor flush and the straight interaction. Maybe that Havam feels like he needs to take one off here. Can turn his hand into a bluff on Layla Streets. As turns, he gets to continue on. He picks up equity, um, but does fold. Samoa's kind of pulling away from the pack at this point. I mean, it's been Samoa's, Samoa's, Samoa's so far this level. Up to 76 bigs, Hugo Pengray. 43 bigs. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, things going his way. The, the three's missing, so he picked up the hand with 5-4. Flop two pair with 5-3 off. Flop top pair with 10-7. See, to use my man, Griffin's phraseology, the, the card distribution in his favor uh, at the moment. I love how basically what modern poker players have done have just taken all the things old school pros said and just made them sound smarter. Sure. Instead of, you don't say he's getting hit in the face with a deck because that just sounds like mumbo jumbo. You know, sure. it's card distribution. Sure. That's science. First of the day. Yeah, first of the day. Not many walks today. And I, I don't think I've seen a lot of small, like big blind folds to small blind raises either. Yeah, I mean... When someone 2.6x's, you've got to defend quite a lot. When he raises, he always yeah. loses anyway. <laughs> Sorfante's having the time of his life. Yeah. Just to reiterate, he's on his first ever trip to Europe. <laughs> Still talking about the soccer thing in Twitch. Will uh, it's one of Andre Akari survive this contest? It's one of my favorite things to do is say <laughs> soccer and just watch people lose their minds. Yeah. Surprise Neymar hasn't corrected him at some point. <laughs> God damn it, Andre. It's almost as if it doesn't matter to anyone but idiots. <laughs> <laughs> so our boy Pingray coming in, coming in for a raise with the blockers. Well, and not blocking this. Okay, in the big blind. The hand that's normally just a defend. Take his time. A little think about it. Not give away anything about the strength of his hand with the speed of the call. Great comment from Dennis the Menace. 333. Three, three. It's not called poker. It's called Texas Hold'em. <laughs> Eight high flop, two spades. Range advantage here for Pengray. <laughs> Correct. You're learning, Joe. And remember, so the old school poker player way of this saying, saying this is a, a razor's board. <laughs> that's that's kind of cool. I like that. No, I mean, yeah, but it's 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 slow and connected. There's some, you know, what, one thing that hurts you a little bit is ping raise. You don't open the uh, the low low cards as much here. I mean, if you definitely if you get called, there's some you can develop in a, a way that's good for the big blind. But uh, King Jack just decides to fold. Would make a uh, good book title for like a, you know, Razor, sci-fi, Razor. sci-fi, Razor's Board, Razor's like sci-fi board. chess <laughs> <laughs> novel, novella. There are some like poker yeah, crime the, novellas uh, out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah? What? I would be one curious. Of, a friend of a friend <laughs> wrote one, and I have it at home, and I can't remember what it was called. <laughs> was it any good, to be honest? They're not listening. I think it was called Dead Man's Hand. <laughs> That's too bad. Doesn't sound promising. <laughs> And I, I mean, of course it is, though. Of course it's called that, right? I can't remember if it was good or bad. I mean, so it probably wasn't particularly <laughs> either. Yeah. yeah. I'm still ri- <laughs> waiting for you to write the great poker Netflix series, Joe. Ace 8, by the way, is the dead man's hand, right? Yeah. So funny story about... Uh, dead man's hand about dead people there was a um shane schlager shaniac does this twitter thread about documentaries he's watching and uh he posted about 
one called Dead Man's Hand about the, the famous uh, Wild Bill Hickok, Dead Man's Hand. And uh, when I clicked on the, 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 uh, the photo of it, it listed all the people that have been interviewed for it, and my name was listed. Wow. <laughs> and I was like, I don't remember <laughs> giving an interview this. for this. And I send the link to Hardigan. And I go, we should watch this and, like, talk about it on the podcast. Like, I don't even remember doing the interview. And Hardigan didn't reply to me. And then a couple weeks later, I have lunch with Shane. And I'm like, what's with that documentary? He's like, that was an April Fool's joke. That was on <laughs> April Fool's Day. If you clicked on the link, it takes you to the IMDb page for April Fool's Day, the movie. And I was like, not only did I not get the joke, I didn't realize that. I couldn't have possibly been in this movie. <laughs> and then you already scheduled a podcast <laughs> for it. <laughs> All right, some pre-flop fun happening here. Cernmez raising King Queen and boss of bosses at this table. No, has he limped? So attacking the limp here. Yeah. Oh, limp. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Just so used to Getting hands like this. Wrong. Attacking the limp. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> And we have a call. I'm going to take it real slow from here on out. 842 Rainbow. Yeah, so, again, the way the mechanic works here, Urkan, King Queen, normally might come in for a raise, doesn't want to raise and get jammed on and forced to fold his hand. So, Alexa. Limp call will dominate a lot of the holdings. Ping Ray, as the covering stack, incentivized to raise very aggressively versus the limps of a player he covers. And Urkan, now facing 8 4 2, has whiffed the flop. I would love him to continue here. This is a hand where we just dominate some bluffs. We can just have the best hand. We can also outdraw quite easily 9s, 10s. Um, you know, a Jack Deuce type holding is often going to be the type of thing that Ping Ray raises. Yeah, but like we spoke about in the other blind on blind hand between these two players, Sonmez's range does get uh, strengthened by this limp and, you know, near 4x call. So Ping Ray is going to be, um, you know, I think pretty aware of that Got and pre be prepared to barrel off on, on a lot of runouts as we saw him do against Cervantes in that big pot um, uh, that was really the highlight of the final table so far. So. Um, the king obviously is gin for Sonmez, but I wouldn't be surprised if Pingman uses that. Ping Ray uses that <laughs> as a uh, an attacking card. You know, a lot of the floats from Sonmez here, you know, can be some eights, but a lot of ace X's, You know, something like ace nine, ace ten, that don't make a pair yet and will probably fold to pressure. So let's see if Ping Ray goes for it here. He is, in fact, going for it. Yeah, and you, yeah, I mean, and it probably should be a bigger and more polarized sizing than this. This is certainly a great spot for Urkan. I mean, what he's attacking with this sizing is just sort of, as you say, Griff, the, the ace high floats, uh, a queen jack with a back door and the like as well. Um, doesn't make that much sense, I don't think, to go this sizing on this card. But certainly, Urkan going to feel very, very comfortable about the king-queen now. I'm probably even thinking about whether he wants to raise. So one thing I do want to point out about Sunmez is we have seen over the course of the last couple days, has been a little tighter in some spots, some folds, pre-flop and the like that seemed, you know, really on the tighter side. So I think that's something Ping Ray is going to want to um, you know, attack. So I think I think the alarm bells will start going off here. That the bottom of Son Rain, re, men's re, range right here is a very, a pretty strong eight. And I don't know if we'll see the patented three barrel, especially because Son Mez, of course, has seen that Ping Ray was completely bluffing in that hand uh, against Cervantes earlier. Yeah, I tend to agree with you. This is a very kind of good card though for ping rate just because a lot of the bluffs are going to be seven five uh you know five six gets there um i guess i guess mm. we want the lo the lower the our cards the better i guess um we've got some three five and three six which we would definitely 
uh, apply the pressure, but it's quite hard to be unpaired here from Ping Ray's perspective. And, I, th and this yeah. is a big moment because he's, I don't not, know getting, he, he's yeah. not getting a fold here. I don't. Yeah, if I don't. He, I he, don't know if he can 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 resist. I don't know if it's necessarily in his DNA. I think he's it'll be so impressive if so because it'll seem more calculated and less random if he yeah. does. Yeah. And nice. he did. Good check, yeah. yeah, he does check, yeah. I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, I mean, look, we gave him so much credit on running that bluff earlier in the day and just wondering, hey, what, you know, was this just sort of wild, ham-fisted flailing or was it totally calculated? And with this checking here... I mean, right right I, both times, right? Yeah. Uh, like, you know, made it, the right play. it speaks to him really understanding what's going on and, and not just randomly choosing, I'm going to bluff now. Yeah, and, and a significant pot there, obviously, for Erkan vaulted up into second in chips. Him and Hugo really started very, very close together. Um, 50 big blinds, a comfortable stack at this final table. Yeah, if you're going to lose a pot in, in, in the, the fashion that Hugo did, I think that's in such a way that can actually give you confidence even though you've just lost, uh, you know, over a million <laughs> chips. You know, not pulling the trigger there when you, you certainly would have, would have been snapped off and be left with seven big blinds. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, the kids sometimes call it like bookkeeping. You've got to keep track of how many bluffs you've got um, pre-flop, on the flop, on the turn. That just feels like a spot where, you know, if you're raising the 10-6 off, you could be raising the 3-6 off, the 3-5 off, the king, the king three off, the, qu the queen three off, the jack, you know, etc. The jack five off. You can just end up on that river with a huge amount of bluffs. Mm -hmm. And yeah, sure, you still have ace king and king queen you can follow through with, but it's not that many combos. And you have to, you know, hold your horses with a few hands. I've not seen much of our boy uh, Dragos Trofimov since I joined. I don't think I've seen him uh, play a pot thus far. Been you, a quiet level <laughs> you, know what's, you know what's funny is that uh, Dragos was... Uh, Quite out of line with a three. You would have been been spinning <laughs> with a certain hand uh, preflop earlier that that got very, very to showdown. And uh, ever since then, he said he was only going to be playing pocket kings plus. And fr honestly, I believed him because he got caught with his hand in the cookie jar, and he's just been real snug ever since. And as we stated earlier, Samoas with a significant lead over the rest of the field now. More than 20 big blinds, more than Cernmez in second. Shortest stack is Cervantes with 29 big blinds. Yeah, and just just 10 big blinds separating the bottom four. And a pocket nines in early position with 30 big blinds is exactly the kind of troublesome spot <laughs> yeah. that you kind of just would prefer to be dealt four dues here. Yeah. Going to be an interesting hand. Uh, interesting to see on the chat, actually, that it sounds like uh, Sonez had actually asked to see uh, his hand, yeah. which I think is uh, maybe just not aware of the etiquette rules. Ace-King now for Samoas. And Samoas does tend to... We've yet to see him passively play a big hand preflop. So, yeah, looks like all. he's putting Cervantes all in. Yeah, and, and this is big Ace-King <laughs> timing. Eyes light the up. This is this is big big Ace King vibes vibes here. Yeah, um, and this is a pretty close spot, I think. You don't look down at aces or kings or queens and then just grab a stack and slap it in like that, do you? It's yeah. big Ace King vibes. Yeah. And it's just that that notch of just like you know, if you have eights here, you probably side fold for you know twenty seven big blinds, tens you're just side call, you know jacks plus. You're like, all right, we're well, here we go. But nines is that one where it's just like, ugh. Yeah, this is a real decision for Cervantes. Mm -hmm. this, this isn't Hollywood. So he's unsure what to do. Um, assessing his opponent's stacks. See his, his uh, quixotic approach yeah. <laughs> thus far. It's about the hands you can eliminate too, right? Like you're, If you don't think that your opponent is just going to look down at their cards and blast in pocket eights here... Well, but on the same time, if you don't think it's sevens or eights, that also is a factor. Would, would you reshove pocket fives that quickly as well? Yeah, so all, all of them, all the way down the line, right? Yeah. So really, you're just calling for the flip here, but it is probably the most out likely outcome 
Uh, also, don't think he would have looked down at aces and just stuffed them in, or kings, um, probably not even queens. So you're probably flipping <laughs> against something like ace-king or ace-queen. Yeah. I mean, ace we're king. making a lot of assumptions, but I think that's probably where Cervantes is thinking. And it's kind of a thoughtless shove, which screams ace-king or ace-queen. I mean, obviously, it's easy when we can see the cards, but, but I think there was some sort of timing there. And I really don't know what Cervantes is going to do here. It's, it's right on the cusp. That hurts. How much time do I have? Oh, and they're playing time banks, are they? Right, oh, okay. he's played multiple time banks. A few times it may have looked like Cervantes folded, but no, he's chucking time bank cards into the middle. I mean, he is technically the, the shortest stack, but as I said, they're very, very bunched together. And when he flips, oh, he's, he's calling, oh, he's calling. For him. We are flipping potentially for Cervantes tournament life. Like Don Quixote versus a windmill. One of these two things has a slight oh, mathematical advantage. Oh, and that's nice to see, a bit of camaraderie between the two guys. Cervantes having the time of his life, and I tell you what, a big portion of the audience is gonna be disappointed if these nines don't hold. He's captured the hearts and minds. It's, it's, and it's like Joe Stapleton at a club. Marcelo embraced by his wife, and Cervantes stood alone at the rail <laughs> without support. Flashbacks. Here Joe comes Joe Stapleton to his... The flop. Nines doing real well here. Yeah, great flop for pocket nines. No danger of spades. Some ways to have Samoas drawing dead on the turn. And that turn is a nine. Eight, eight. And now, now that's eight. relief for Cervantes. Oh, no. Marcelo just drawing to a chop now. Oh, oh my days. God. Unbelievable. River eight. Oh. No damage done except to maybe someone's psyche. He's going to win it. Wow. Wow. Cervantes punished for relaxing too soon. This pot ends in a chop. And you know what they say. Everyone, Everyone loves, loves a chop pot. pot. Wow. Everyone, That's with the exclusion coming. of Jamie yeah, Cervantes, loves a chop pot. Back. And uh, it depends at what point you asked him if he would have loved the chop pot. <laughs> Maybe pre-flop, he'd have said okay to the chop pot. But once you spike the nine on the turn, <laughs> that feels like <laughs> injustice. Remarkable, remarkable. It's a free flop. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's been a lot worse. <laughs> Thank you. Giving him stoic advice. Oh, it's a flop. Yeah. He played it great. <sighs> great dealing. Let's keep this dealer on the on the feature. <laughs> Superb. The drama. Yeah, absolutely remarkable run out. So it's as you were. Yeah. After all mm. that drama. <laughs> Exactly what we said just a couple of minutes ago. Mar day. Marcello is the chip leader with nine million. Cervantes, after that <laughs> bold and brave call, let's give him a lot of credit there. Yeah. Going for the win, sense that he was flipping or ahead, uh, sense some sort of weakness, made the, a big, tough call off, and very, very unlucky river, but now remains the short stack. Really the theme well, of the day, huh? You it's say that. Chips moving around, no one busting. And that is technically true with Cervantes in the big blind right now, but Hugo Pengre has a nearly identical stack and Morton Vom has a stack with only one or two more big blinds in it. Yeah, very, very, very tight spot. I mean, being, if I was gonna be Mr. ICM, I would say for that reason, I do think that we are perhaps supposed to fold the nines there. Yeah, I would it, fold it, 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 but it, 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 I would have. I mean, what? it's... it's Griff, look at Griff. Mr. After, oh, I would have. Uh, no, what, excuse I mean, me. What number of big blinds are you calling with there? 22 big blinds, 23 big blinds, 18 big blinds? Like, what for, for yeah, you, Griffin? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not always just about the big... But, but that's obviously a, a huge factor. Like, I think anything over, like, 23, just, just kind of the way that we figured out his range of the yeah. actual shove. Sure. Um, I also think that if I was in Cervantes' shoes, like I think Cervantes is one of, if not the best, remaining of the six. 
and is going to get better spots. So okay. if I don't think I'm ever dominating my opponent, like if my, you know, it's not button to big blind here. He's not just going to look down to ace five suited and shove into me. Like this guy has ace king, ace queen, and then better pairs and like maybe eights. So that's why I think, I mean, listen, he went for it. He almost doubled up. It was a huge spot. He was technically ahead. I just think his edge might be better played out um, in a different, that's just my opinion. It, yes, and I want to make it clear that, like, uh, it's your opinion and Sam's opinion is oh. probably the same that he would not have called with nines, but but, but no one is saying it's bad, right? Oh, no. oh absolutely no, not. No, 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 no. Oh, it's remar It's crazy close. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. It doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and the timing might have just told you it says king and, and, and you yeah. can then decide what to do with the spot yourself. But, uh, but yeah, it's... Uh, you know, Sir, Cervantes getting no time off. Yeah, and Havam betting the queen high kind of just feels like it's his card to bet. It's sort of protecting, I guess, queen high. Seems a little loose to me. And Cervantes, I think, will defend, decides to fold the king. Okay, decides to fold the king with the three kicker. Um, perhaps might have called there, but uh, decides to let it go. Again, going to have a much stronger sense of Havan strategy and style than, than I do. Hawkinson asks, do we expect this to be like a house of cards? One goes and then boom, boom, boom. Uh, I would say no. I think it's going to, one goes and then it's going to slow it right, right TF yeah, back down I mean, again. I mean, just to emphasize, this is, you know, for all six of the play, these players, this is the biggest poker spot of their lives, of their careers playing for huge, huge amounts of money. And, uh, you know, of course, that EPT title will mean so much to each and every one of them. After a grueling five days as well of poker, so you're going to be so in deeply emotionally invested in this tournament, of course. No one's going to give up that tournament life uh, lightly. So I'm sure it will be a battle and a fight for each and every chip, even to, down to the heads up. Flying back in. Halfway through the level. Be pretty whack if we make it through three full levels today without an elimination. And I'll tell you what, uh, you know, I touch again on that five days of poker. This is a grueling challenge for these guys to the amount of concentration it's taken over each and every day. Playing six-handed poker as well, you know, cut off, small blind, intense. big blind, yeah, very, very, very intense. I mean, it's it's tough for you guys commentating for five days, let alone playing each and every hand, you know. And the emotional swings. Think of the emotional swing there for Cervantes from the tough spot with the nines, making the good call, hitting the nine, the elation, the disappointment of the eight. Now you have to just settle back down and play uh, your spots. Yeah, and I think that was probably reflected in the the very next hand with the king three, you said that, you know, you probably would find yourself calling there sometimes, but it's just like, man, the whirlwind of emotions, and now you're facing a bet on like an a seven four yeah. jack, and you have a king high. You know, it's I'm not, I don't want it. Marginal, I can't, I'm not yeah. dealing with this right now. Yeah, like. no, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> nice flop here for Vom, trip aces. Lex Veldhaus in the chat. Speaking of non-pros. <laughs> What's he saying, the great man? He's just shilling for Scoop. <laughs> Trying to steal our viewers. Hey, guys. He probably, if the action's a bit slow, I'm playing six tables over on the other. He probably got woken up out of bed to go get in the Twitch chat and start chilling Scoop. And... Oh, Lex is going to be in comms later. Great, I'm going to have to answer for that. <laughs> it's, it's not like you're speaking about me and Griff. You can, you can mug us off all you want. You, you're, you're speaking about the great, the great, great man there, the number one. He just has to Twitch streamer. And look press at this a turn button. Card. What a turn. A very optimistic seabat from Marcello and turns a 23% equity. So many turn cards where this King-10 is drawing stone, stone dead. And how will Samoes approach it? Will he fire again, trying to fold out pocket fives, pocket sixes, and the like? I 
Thought Samoas was going to have to give it up on the turn, but wow, one card can change so much. Time banking. Yeah, it's a little unsure what he wants to do. Typically the sizing. Huh. That is not a big bet. That is a one-tenth pot bet, same as on the flop. Yeah, and, and, and this is just... I'd like to see the turn for this, yeah. for this amount I, of money. Yeah. <laughs> see, and, and, and this is what some really strong amateurs do well. This isn't technically a thing that you get to do. Yeah. But is Fam going to be able to raise this? No, he just, you know, playing against the chip leader, doesn't want to reopen the action. Yeah. Just calls. So and it works. And Marcelo gets to see the river for the price he chooses. And the Rick. And loses the minimum. Yeah. And Fam, yeah, very enough. excited to see that card. Now he's actually hoping his opponent has fours or queens. And yeah, and now Marcello gives up. And this is, you know, this is sort of what people talk about when they say an exploitative style. Not trying to play by the book in some manner or fit some abstract principle. What would my hand like to do? How much would I like to pay? And then putting in that much money. And we, we see it's worked out for him. Havam now going to go, obviously, for value with the full house. Really, really exciting spot to be on a final table. Worth a time bank chip <laughs> card. Yeah, that's right. I called it Lammer. as a brick, which it was for Samoas, but it's a full house for Vom. What'd you call? Hmm? What'd you have? And if Vom uses a second time bank uh, card, I'm gonna feel really silly when he eight. sees what Samoa's hand is in half an hour. <laughs> I used two time bank <laughs> chips for this. I mean, look, if he gets a call out of King High, then yeah. it'll yeah. all be worth it. He won't. Oh. Yeah, and um, I, I feel like most players just end up going really big here when they've got a really strong hand and, and, and just hoping their opponent falls into the trap. If, you know, I mean, again, we, we sort of know that King High is going to fall, but perhaps you want to actually go for a million, with, which you're going to want to do with your worst aces and try and get that call from a queen or some such hand. I don't know whether Havan will go for that. Two time banks and a huge bet, yeah. yeah this Does is... anyone two time bank and then... Well, it's, it's also what's what's our bluff Bluff here. huge, right. Yeah, we have to have floated a jack ten of clubs, a king ten of clubs, or the like. Um, what, what does he go for? What size is he? 1.385. Um, yeah. So nearly pot and yeah. insta-fold. Yeah, obviously it is a spot where you you you're... you're you're polarized in your in your side with your bet, but uh, but it still can be uh, be on the small side. D didn't make any difference anyway. Obviously, wasn't getting a call. And very very nice hand for Morton and Vam, dodging the clubs and the and the straight draw on the river, and padding his stack up to 44 big blinds. I mean that was a huge pot. Puts Vam solidly into third place. Oh. Yeah. And now the bunching up occurs at the bottom. Just two players with 30 big blinds. That's Pangre and Cervantes. Trough them off with 39 bigs. Hawkins asked, someone just get punched at another table. Doubtful, but the 25K final table is right next to this table. So could be some reactions coming from there. Here's a, here's a fun uh, trivia game we can play. So my mother is visiting Monaco right now. I flew her out for her 73rd birthday. Also, tomorrow's Mother's Day, so I thought it would be a nice, wow. nice gift. She's got family in the area, so uh, it all worked out. But right now, she's sightseeing with a super high roller. You guys want to take a guess? You guys yeah, out I there? Yeah, I want to guess. I want to guess. Wanna take guess. It? Let's let YouTube and Twitch take, take some steps first. You can guess which super high roller has taken my mom out sightseeing today. Wow. Question. It's got to be someone. Bryn Kenny. Go <laughs> Bryn Kenny's on the PR reparations tour. He's going to take out everyone's moms. <laughs> Winning back the community one mother at yeah. a time. Yeah. Uh, she comes back and she's like, have you ever heard of this frog it. poison thing? <laughs> oh, dear. Um, oh, my days. Seeing some guesses here. Mustafa Canet. That's a good guess. Patrick Antonius, Charlie Carroll. <laughs> well, what's Patrick Antonius doing with that? Um, I would, <laughs> I would go. Is it? 
Okay. Christoph Vogelsang. Eric Seidel. No. We've got a Seidel guess. We've got Vogelsang guess. Um, Christoph, uh, me, me, Timothy Adams. Jack. Super high roller. I mean, these are all really good guesses, The thing is, right? they're all sweethearts. There's right, so that's, many of them. that's what I mean. They There's all so many of them would. Would, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Gus Hansen, how dare you? She's <laughs> <laughs> not that type of woman. <laughs> yeah. Um... Okay, don't tell us yet. I still want to. I'm having fun the naming the. Makita Bajakowski, great <laughs> no, guess. <definitely. laughs> they're talking guess. strat. They're, they're, they're looking at Monka Sims. <laughs> Together. <laughs> um, yeah. Have we guessed it? My, my mom's opening a Poker Stars account right now, just, <laughs> just over the border. <laughs> <laughs> Have we guessed it already? Have we got it? Joe. Uh, I've heard the question. Okay, so you're thinking about. Well, I'm that, deciding whether or not I want to answer. Yeah, he's allowing the Twitch, Twitch, Twitch chat to have the, have the fun. Sam Greenwood being asked, answered now. Jungle Man, Igor Kurganov. Okay, no, I'll say. Igor's a little busy these days. Tony G. <laughs> Doyle Brunson, Jeff Bezos. Uh, the the name has not been said yet. Okay. Uh, the okay. name is not. You're, been said you're not allowed telling us that. We're gonna we're gonna have to go through the whole roster. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna anyway. put two more minutes on this. Okay. Hmm. Uh, a regular, like it's not just someone who's played one. You're not like you know. A, a high roller regular. Okay. Um. And after one minute, I'll I'll give a hint. I don't think Ole would do it. <laughs> <laughs> Who would say no? Who would say? Byron Caveman wouldn't do it. Um, who would say no? D Double D, Daniel Divorce? That's not a bad guess. But I, I, don't I feel, feel like, like he's a little busy with the. He's, I don't know if he's, he's simming as well. Yeah. Um, Tim Adams, is, uh, I think we said, guessed that. Tim right? Adams is a great guess. It is he's not a top, Tim top Adams. guess. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Your mom would have a great time with Tim as well. Would, it be, would, it be a, would you be giving it away if you gave the nationality? I'm seeing Scott Seaver, Steve O'Dwyer. I don't think I would give it away to give the nationality, no. So why don't we get nationality here? Let's try to narrow it down. All right, hold on a second. We've won, who's going to win this pot? This one's going to Peng, right? Yeah. The nationality. Jason Kuhn, David Peters. Those are fun guesses. I don't think Kuhn's here, right? I'll give you the, I'll give you the flag, maybe not the nationality. Great Britain. Oh, okay. It's not Ben Heath. Yeah, that's definitely Ben Heath. Wow. Is it? Uh, he's with his fiance as well. Lovely. That's lovely. Yeah, that's really, really nice. That's right. Ben, ben Heath and his fiance offered to take out oh, my mother. So sweet. Yeah, what that's sweetheart. Adorable. You're quite close with Ben, right? Or like, you've... yeah, he's one of my besties. Yeah. Yeah. Top, 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 top boy. Ben met. How did you his not guess fiance? It, ben? How did you not? That's why of course, I was, because I was, there's a connection. Because uh, Joe, Joe, I'm was... very close friends with Ben's fiance. Oh yeah, nice. All right, there's the chip couch. You can see. We've got Samoas, and then we got a couple of guys in second, more or less tied. A couple of guys tied right after that, and Cervantes once again being left behind. Sonomas S is actually uh, German for Samoas. It's, the, it's the, the, the Germanized version of the, it's the same name, basically. It's being suggested now that my mom's going to be put in the 25K <laughs> and uh, that she's going to be partying at Jimmy's. <laughs> Later, <laughs> she's getting bottled. So you're going to be hit with a bit. It's a good job because there are some high rollers, and yeah, you'd be well. We, we, we five of a split bottle service at this club, so you're on the uh, <laughs> right. for, for twenty percent of the bill. I'm I'm sorry, you know. She lose her first CCR. <laughs> <laughs> There's a good one where uh, I think it was Trig. He took his dad to the BCA, and like that, all the Brits were going to the steakhouse, and they were hanging out with the Americans, and they were going to the other place, you know, like the Buffalo Wings. So his dad was like, oh, I'd really rather do that. And he's like, okay, like, go along with like Table and those guys. And so they both went for the separate meals. Oh my God. And then his dad got involved. They didn't, you know, they should have free rolled the dad. Really. Yes. But he got involved in the CCR. No. And he lost the CCR. No, no, Trig no, lost no, the CCR no, no. at Nobu. And then his dad <laughs> lost the CCR at the Buffalo Wings. And they were on the hook for like, like it was like first night and they paid for like 26 <laughs> meals. And they were just like, <laughs> Destitute for the rest of the trip. No, that's yeah. terrible. How do you not free roll? That's so messed up. You've got to free roll the dad. For sure, sure but the dad probably. Taylor Poor, if you're watching, yeah, you, yeah. you need. No, no, no. Please send to the address I'll give in Sheffield. Uh, Parents your... don't pay. Come on, guys. No, no, no. But you know what? He may have been too proud and insisted to. Yes, that, that's, what, that's, that's probably, probably what happened. Parents yeah. and 
media yes. don't yeah. pay, not us included. Yeah, yeah. and uh, well, Samoa's raising. I'll take a free meal under the gun. <laughs> eight seven suited and Vom with King King. Yeah, lovely spot to find yourself in. Reverse an early position. Use two time bank chips. Goes for the 2.5x <laughs> sizing. So uh, I know this is a big hand. I just want to <laughs> say something about Twitch. So this guy on Twitch said, "Pokar style," and he said, "Graph would be a bomb. It would be bomb. If you it would be great if you stream some scoop. I know there's blah blah blah. You'll be busy." But when I was reading it, I thought it said Griff, and I was really flattered. I was like, oh, someone wants to watch you stream scoop. I was going to answer him, like, maybe I'll play some. You've still got 1,100 in your account, 1,500. Right? <laughs> three, three bullets at the, mm -hmm. at the 500 re-entry. I just want to know what stream the French guys are watching, because they both went, wow, when Samoa's folded eight high there. No, I'll put it there. Well, people are still Samoa guessing. Sorry, guys. They, a lot they, of chips. Yeah, guys, the game's over. <laughs> let's like, let we're it go, moving guys. on. Let's go. It was Ben, like, ben it, Heath. Yeah. It was yeah, Ben Heath. We, Look him up. You don't know who he is. The young British kid. They're probably doing yoga and eating yeah. kale. Yeah. Yeah. yeah kale, kale yogurt. <laughs> they, they invited me to the wedding last night, but I feel like it's going to be during W Coop. Yeah, probably, yeah, it is during WQ. I yeah. think we'll survive without you. <laughs> <laughs> I only work like six days a year. It's really hard to ask for time off. <laughs> are you going to be? With, are you going to be doing the giving away? Are you like the master? Oh, What's she it called? Said, the, no, are you the celebrant? <laughs> she said because of the manner in which they met that they want me to be a witness. Oh wow! Wow! How'd they meet? Uh, I took. Uh, Elizabeth, which is her name, and uh, our friend Lauren. We went out to a bar in Barcelona, and Sam and Ben rocked up, and I wouldn't even say spark flew. It was actually, you had to put in a lot of effort, to be honest. But uh, it was off to the races from there. I've never heard that expression, sparked fluid. Sparks flew. Sparks oh. flew. <laughs> Come on. I'm sorry. That's what I thought I heard. So, like, thinks, he hears, thinks Griff is graph. He yeah. thinks <laughs> flu is fluid. Sparks fluid. Uh, Trofimov has been uh, the forgotten like man thing, you know, of this final know. table. With the first reasonable holdings had king-queen versus a cutoff race. Uh, definitely a hand you could go either way with flatting or three-betting. I think with Marcelo in the big blind, he'll elect to flat. Eight, seven, oh, five. goes for the three-bet. Uh, and, and we haven't heard much from Trofimov lately. Yeah, I definitely think this is is reasonable. Uh, I guess it makes some sense, actually. Uh, with the covering stack, perhaps you don't want to be playing three-way with a, a big blind, blind with a wide range. Um, you know, and obviously there's a theoretical approach, and there's also sort of, you know, just the feeling at the table. You've played snug for so long. Yeah. They don't know what holdings you've had. Uh, and now you come in for a three bet and perhaps going to get even a little bit more credit. And yeah. Erkan, taking this time with King Ten Suited, is this a hand that we can continue Later. With, decides to fold? Well, if there's one spot that Trofimov has proven to be overly aggressive from, it is the small blind. The hand that I was referring to earlier, uh, one of the first hands of the final table facing the under the gun open um, from... Uh, uh, Vam decided to three bet the 10 9 off from the small yeah, full awesome. ring. <laughs> and uh, got a call from Pocket Sevens and uh, just checked down 10 Queen 3. Uh, what was or it? Jack River, river to straight, though. Eight. Like made it straight and still didn't bet and showed it down. Like he didn't even bet the river when. And so, and after he's, everyone was looking at him, it was just like quite weird. And then he was just like, I'm not playing any more hands. And, and he hasn't since. <laughs> and, and to be fair, this table full of a relative amateurs. Mm. This fella has admitted to being one of the least experienced. I mean, in fairness, you know, we, we, we jo joke and we laugh, but Dragos has played overall quite well over the last few days from what I've seen. Um, He's got over half a million in live tournament yeah, earnings. Yeah, certainly there have been a few hands that have shown some, maybe maybe uh, you know, some warts in his game, but it's just... You know, he's, he's made the most of those of those spots, and even with the 10-9, you know, got away with it, realized maybe it was a bit out of line, and uh, has adjusted accordingly. Yeah, and, and a little something of a hand-over-hand situation here. 
Um, these guys, 40 big mines deep. Might be that Urkan wants to just flat here. We'll get some credit from the players behind. Won't get squeezed out too often. That seems like a lot of chips. Is that, that's more than the... That's more. No? That's more. And he's three betting the eights. Applying the pressure to Cervantes. <laughs> and Ace King, obviously very, very strong holding. Blocks top of range. Normally a hand which you just move it all in with. And the question here is, you know, what a, what is Urkan planning to do with the eights if Cervantes shoves? Mm. Cervantes, you see here, probably knows he's going to jam, but as we, we saw Marcelo give off something of a timing tell. You know, there's there's a sort, certain feeling sometimes, certain way people play Ace King. A of just, flippance. Yeah, and they just move it all in. Just going to take his time before shoving. See if he had more of a decision. And very <sighs> annoying for Urkan. Kind of medium strength holding here. Uh, and, and, you know... I don't want to be too results-oriented. This is the downside, right, of, of three-betting this hand. Once you get shoved on, you are going to be flipping some of the time. It can even occasionally be against a hand like Ace-5 or Ace-4 suited that you completely dominate. But very, very hard to call off because just dead to the top of range, jacks, queens, yeah. and the like. It's just not a particularly good candidate to three-bet because now you're facing a situation where you're, you're probably going to need to fold um, you know, plays much cleaner as just a call. You know, you don't risk putting in 800K and someone waking up with a bigger hand behind. Also, Servent has just shown that he's prepared to, you know, call, call, call all in with nines where I think a lot of people would otherwise fold. So going to be a bit of a tough out to get him out of the pot uh, when he has, you know, a medium to very good hand. Yeah. But as you guys can see, we've seen more all-ins in this level than total today. Did the blinds go up? Not yet, but... No, but in this but, level, from the previous one. Yes, of course they did. <laughs> That's why there's more all-ins. Um, you guys... Thank you, Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> you guys show uh, me my the point is, there. we're at that point in the tournament where things have got to start happening. Uh, and yes. things will be happening yes. soon. The ranges will be tighter than eights. Uh, and, you know, we will have people calling off. Absolutely. Uh, very, I mean, very soon. A, a collision is coming. Obviously, we've had a big confrontation with the Nines and Ace King and ran out a chop. Um, uh, I, you know, there's going to be an elimination sooner or later. That is the nature of poker. There's just going to be a big hand over hand confrontation at some point. And yeah, you do feel it is more becoming more imminent. Yeah, to Joe's, to Joe's point, if, if the previous levels were sort of the calm before the storm, we're starting to see some clouds Thank emerge. You. Jeez. <laughs> Give the meteorological <laughs> metaphor there. You, you guys, it's, it's tough. Sorry, it's tough like, these I like busting his it's balls. Like, it's, like the seven, know, it's like I the seven year itch, Seven days of commentary together. And you just, you know, just began. Uh, at least we're not in a really hot room or anything <laughs> with lights in our face in the little closet. Imagine how Jeanne must feel. <laughs> I also know Griffin's barely hydrated because he's <laughs> left eight undrank hey, what bottles I forgot of water. To, look what I remembered to bring. Oh, there you go. GP, baby. Got my water bottle. Hax asks, how long till next break? We're 23 minutes from the next break. And for the next time, the blinds go up. Okay. Uh, four point five. Yeah, I mean, it is a little bit surprising, though. Just to reiterate, obviously, I came in today oh, a little bit later into the broadcast yeah. and asked how many left. And was told, oh, six left, and I was I was somewhat surprised. Yeah. And certainly, I would have expected to have uh, have seen an elimination by now. But that is the nature of poker. Of course, these guys as well. Um, if you're second in chips, if you're Havam, you're obviously hoping that you get that ladder. It's particularly the first ladder of the day. Yeah. You tend to be kind of anchored to the spot you go to bed. All right, I've locked up. 167k. It's always nice for the table when there is one elimination. You feel at least I've made a bit of money on the day. I'm not the one. Yeah. That's the next one to bust. Um, you know, right. You're, you didn't make zero dollars from last night to exactly. today. Exactly. Yeah. It's just human nature, a sort of anchoring effect. Um, I would like to see Samoa's open the yeah. suited king there. I think that's a nice open as chip lead into stacks you cover, but uh, uh, gives it up 
Um, and Havan instead will open a suit king on the button. Same suit for Cernmez. Oh, this is great. I've been waiting all week to make this joke. We're Erkin 925. <laughs> was I worth mean, that's it. That's just an objectively good joke. It was and worth it's an it. Objectively, if you if you hadn't like prepared me for how funny it was going to be, yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it kind of took the you know. Yeah, that, that was that's nice. If you yeah, if you maybe you just same, said same just Dolly said Parton, yeah, yeah, maybe I know. Ended. The problem is I was buying time. Oh my oh, goodness! No. Top pair and a flush draw for Vom. Just a flush draw for Cernmez. And if he is Eric at nine to five, he could get fired here. Yeah, this might be the hand that uh, sends Sunmez back home to work nine to five. <laughs> Can someone write down Eric at nine to five? Because I won't remember that when we do the TV shows. Uh, Alyssa, I don't know what they, whether they give awards at Thank the you. Global Poker Awards for best for commentary yeah. moment. You know, yeah. the best tournament moment of the year, and it's like someone winning PSPC, <laughs> and then it's also Joe saying Eric at nine to five, and they're, they're up against each other. So, yeah. have, um, this is just a board that. You know, um, you, you're probably going to range back as the preflop raiser, and for that reason, does bet out with the king three. Uh, can always check back the turn uh, when when he doesn't improve. And uh, Erkan going to be hoping for a heart, but we know that would be an absolute disaster. Instead, the six pairs. That turn is so six, yeah. so six. Yeah, and Erkan just taking a second. There are circumstances where Big Blind gets to lead on board pairs. Um, don't think this is a board where that is the case, but Erkan might feel otherwise. Obviously, folding out a hand like, let's say, Queen Jack or uh, Jack, just Jack Nine, if you were to lead here. And that, that's what he's contemplating. Um, and he does feel that it's a card that he can lead and, and wants to do so with the 9-5. In this exact instance, Havam not going to be going anywhere. What sizing does he go? Yeah, 380k, I mean, yeah, I'm not, not sure about this. I think it should be polarized sizing as well on a board where top pairs don't need any protection. Um, but it's moot anyway because Havam just, again, balancing the timings. Second pair, a hand that shows down for plenty, beats all bluffs, and, of course, can improve will be a relatively easy call for the day. Very interesting river coming up. Will Erkan follow through on a brick? And if we have a heart, we could see a major, major confrontation. So do you think it's a, a sort of a misapplication of that river. concept of leading it's the red, turn when it It's red, but it's a diamond. And just surrenders. Waves. Snap check as well, by the way. Uh, didn't even consider following through. Obviously, you that you check actually, says, hurry up and bet, so I can fold. You, you really don't want hearts in your hand. And, and, and nine, high. nine high like a loss. <laughs> nine high like a loss. <laughs> and a nice pot for Havan. Again, almost similar, actually, in, in ter the way Erkan played that to what we saw with Marcello. Just decided, I want to pay this much to see the river. Yeah. If you fold, then okay, I'll take it. Great. But if I've just got the equity and I want to see my card for this, very, very similar approach. Again, you know, something that, um, yeah, not, not quite theory justified, but again, the, 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 you can see it is a very effective strategy versus the player pool. And, and there's a reason Erkan is here competing for this big first prize. And with that, Vom closes the gap between himself and Samoa's a little bit more. Yeah, been a nice uh, half an hour for Havam, right? Um, the trip, the trip, the boat with the A7, the pocket kings, that hand obviously, uh, you know, not exciting to get led into on the turn, uh, but winning the pot at showdown. Felipe asks, how much for the first? We haven't gone over the prizes in a while. Tell us the big bucks. 940,000 near enough. Euros, that is, for the winner. 560 for second. 387 for third. 298, so near enough 300,000 for fourth. 228 for fifth. And if you go out next, 
you get stuck with only 167,000 euros. I mean, it, it is a big, big difference, right? 167,000 is a huge amount of money, of course. But nearly a million for first. Five people, 800K difference. Yeah. That's a big deal. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Marcello here, obviously, uh, similar hand to, to what we saw with the eights. Here, he does elect to flat. And Ping Ray with the Jack 3 suited. Quite close, three way on a final. Does elect to call. We're going three ways. We're going three ways. Ace, six, ten, all spades. <laughs> it's hard for it to be ace, six, oh, ten, all Queen, spades. six. I mean, there's <laughs> a six is a spade right. and the ace is a spade. Okay, queen, <laughs> six. I mean, come on, if you're going to do it to Joe, <laughs> no. you need to hold yourself okay. to higher no, standards. No, no, no. The no, thing no, is, that no, totally no. got by me. I don't know. Well, it sounds good. Queen, Griff. six. I mean, two. by the way, this, this is, you know, the King, King, five. I guess favors Trofimov. He has the ace of spades. Ping Ray with a flush draw. Sixes with a spade wants some protection. Um, How about two spades now with the with the ace and the six of spades coming? Yeah, and this is this is really interesting. Um, Marcello's gonna just bet here, hoping for folds. And Ping Ray. A lot of people play now. No check raises in this spot. Um, but ping ray, that might not be the case for ping ray. See, it would be a very effective strategy to check raise here, but might want to just play calls only with an uncapped player to act. And then trophy him off. This ace of spades is not an irrele entirely irrelevant card, right? Because a hand doesn't play great as a call. No, just, just gives it up. Just gives it up. That's understandable. Um, Caution, cautious approach, but but for sure reasonable. Threads up on the flop to heads up on the turn, which is the three of diamonds. So a pair now for Peng Ray. Yeah, and Marcello might might not know it, but it's probably a good card for him because Ping Ray outdrawing hands like Ace Jack, Ace Queen might not feel compelled to bluff this hand if it goes check check. What does Marcello want to do? Does he want to bet again and uh, charge a flush draw? Obviously, he can get actually just check called by worse here with that three coming off. And, and this is a sign of real, real confidence. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know whether I'd be betting myself, but Marcello just senses that the hand plays more straightforwardly by betting here, a small sizing. And it's going to work incredibly yeah, it's, it's perfect well against this exact holding. Um, you're just going to get a check call and then just be able to go check, check on the river. One would imagine, depending on the run out. And poor old Ping Ray stuck in this hand now. Got the flush draw, got a pair. And you have to wonder if Ping Ray thinks that Samoas might even have an unpaired hand here, like ace-10 or ace-9 of spades, uh, you know, queen-10 ten of spades, playing it as a two-barrel, maybe trying to get ping ray off of a five. So maybe he thinks the three might even be good and can get to showdown oh, with the absolutely. check back. Yeah, so it's just not just about, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just, you're just absolutely involved here. Obviously, can win with a jack, a three, or a spade would push the pot in, uh, push the equity in ping ray's direction. What's it going to be? It's going to be the nine of clubs. Yeah, and a brick on the river. You can have our first uh, 10 millionaire after this hand. Yeah, and great news for Marcello. Have I done the math right? No, it won't be 10 million. Damn. It don't matter. The chip leader gets more chips. Yeah, very, very frustrating hand for Ping Ray to lose to the pocket sixes there. Very, very frustrating. Flop a flush draw, improve on the turn, but don't get there. And, you know, each pot, very meaningful, um, pushes Ping Ray to the shortest stack. Tallface asks, hey, Staves, with a 30-minute delay, what's the etiquette slash rule regarding a player looking back at played hands to see how the opponent played certain positions 
it is highly recommended that they do so. The information is out there. If other folks at the table are doing it, you put yourself at a severe disadvantage by not doing it. Everyone knows the deal. Everyone's agreed to play this way. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It is completely within the rules yeah, and, and when, encouraged. Yeah, and when Joe Stapleton's giving out dazzling witticisms like Erkin 9 to 5, they probably want to tune in with commentary yes. as well. <laughs> On the brakes. On 2x speed. When I explain that a set of fours is a more disguised hand than a <laughs> not flush, these are the kinds of things that you don't want one player at the table hearing this. Well, that, that, that sort of information <laughs> should be shared equally. Sure. Get your notebooks out. Too much power. Wow, and on the tighter side there. And one thing I would say is you definitely are supposed to play a solid strategy in this spot, but people haven't got too out of line or wielded their stacks too much. That might be a hand that you might... I, I, might, I might fancy it, but it uh, doesn't matter. Um, Urkan with the ace on the button will race it up. Don't be jated. <laughs> <laughs> Agos. Speaking of jaded. <laughs> Is this the thing? We're going to go for this? Jated. <laughs> I mean, Griffin's got some real gems. <laughs> just, he just puts it out there. <laughs> yeah. one of, every now and again, one. You like those you fake can, crystals. Okay. Fake, you know, so the, so the Queen the 10, he mall. calls the bay. And I say, why? He goes, Guantanamo Bay. And I go, do you think Guantanamo starts with a Q? No, no, no. It's because we would call it Quanton, and then it became Quantanamo, and we called it the Bay. I mean, it's, it's, it's pitiful. Six <laughs> degrees of Griffin Bender. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you, you're in the booth with a professional comedian. It's just like... Griffin's very funny. I don't know. He, he, <laughs> you guys are also, me today. He, he does... He does plenty of intentional comedy, some unintentional comedy as well. <laughs> it, it all works out in the end for Griffin. Trofimov checks out a position to Cern Mez. Yeah, and uh, King King 9. It's going to be a range bet for small sizing in position. Get the job done. Yes. Protect the Some ace needed that, you know? Ooh, hell, jeez. Calm down, Erkin. Wow. Come on, mate. You won the hands. I mean, it wasn't even his button. Just completely <laughs> out of line. <laughs> But, it, but it's because it's, it's of the size of the watch. He's just got like an extra bit of weight in his hand there as he comes yeah. in. I thought he called it Guantanamo Bay because if you play it, you could end up in jail for no reason. <laughs> How else could I get this thing? <laughs> See, our job is just to throw him up and he hits him. Do you know what I mean? We just, we just throw him well, and smacks him out of the park. He's the one who actually works on, our, on his craft. We're just, you know. Works on his craft. Bouncing. <laughs> oh, see what I mean? <laughs> My Griff Graf. <laughs> when, when are we going to just be invited to a PokerStars episode of Whose Line Is It Anyway? It's just us three doing improv. Yeah. I mean, that's what this that's is. What, that's what us this three is. and Mike. Sam, Mike, Mike, Sam you haven't who, figured who, out that's what we're doing? <laughs> I'm try, I tried to name uh, Sandy Toxwig. Who, who, who were the Whose Line Is It Anyway cast? I can't remember now. Tony so, Slattery. You, so, me, and Tony Slattery. It's not just uh, Vom with a rail, by the way. Excuse me, not just... Uh, Samoas with a rail. That's Vom's rail as well. Yeah, nice to see. That's uh, Lars. Well, yeah, and that's the Romanians. That's Florian in the background. It's like Field of Dreams. Build it and they will come. Yeah. Uh, can we move them on, though? They're, uh, they're obscuring the amazing cathedral-like set design. I'm sorry, guys. We didn't, we didn't invest <laughs> Get millions of dollars. There's on this, a rail, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's decorative. It, it's, as, it's as if... This, this EPT were taking place in the Tron universe. <laughs> blind on blind, Trofimov and Samoas. Yeah, and Trofimov just hoping to get in for a cheap flop and Marcello. And, and I think one of the interesting things is when you see an amateur player, let's say, with so much success and a big stack, you know, what is it about them that 
that, that's got them this far. Yeah. And you can just I see the aggressive instincts of Marcello. This isn't, you know, people say, oh, you got to study, you got to, like, subscribe to this and that. This is just a sense all the time of the power of being in position, how difficult it is to find, uh, to defend your limps. Um, you know, that you can, you're going to have position, you can bluff down the streets. Just picking up pot after pot. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's really, really clear why this guy is second in the BSOP Player of the Year race and also on an EPT fight. I think second in the BSOP Player of the Year race now, but reigning Champion. from 2019. Oh, wow. Well, that's, that is remarkable. There you go. So hard to combat uh, aggression in these wide range spots, especially when you have a little extra ICM pressure on yourself. Of course, I'm not saying even that Dragos did anything wrong limp folding uh, the hand there. That may well, well be standard, but, it, but it uh, you know, speaks of Marcelo's style and approach. Okay. This is a little loosey goosey here. Poor old Ping Ray. Yeah, I think I miscategorized earlier, by the way, uh, when I said that. This is a loosey goosey. When I said Trofimov was the self admitted least experienced player at the table, that was, that was incorrect. He's got over half a million alive tournament earnings. Yeah, I've, I've played with him a bit on yes. as well, I believe, yeah. Yes. Um, Cernmez, 80, 84 can live earnings. So that's. <laughs> significantly less. And he said his kids think he's away on a business trip. He's, he's a salesman <laughs> in real life. Yeah. So we're closing in on the last five minutes of the level, closing in on three full levels without an elimination. Yeah, and, and it almost grows the tension, right? You've not, now even more... You don't want to be the one who succumbs, who breaks, who gives everyone else at the table a pay ladder. But, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, even more intense the deeper we go. Here we get a close-up of the amazing Monte Carlo trophy. Hefe asks, what does he sell? I, I, that's a question I myself have. Hopefully we can get to the bottom of that eventually. I mean, that's a whole world of jokes there. Like, you can't tell me he's a salesman. Yeah. And not, yeah. Is it cars? Is it uh, Viagra? <laughs> is it uh, high-speed internet? I got to know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know whether you get a Moschino hoodie from selling high-speed internet. So I'm going to say... You do if you sell them to entire cities. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's true. Stand corrected. I got a buddy. He's a salesman. He sells Wi-Fi to cities. And Samoas with an ace on the button. Going to be more than good enough for a raise as chip leader. Still that bunching effect. Jamie, Erkan, mm -hmm. and Dragos. 4.4, 4.2, and 4.5 million. Just very too hard to uh, attack aggressively against the covering stack when you're so tightly bunched. There it is, the Guantanamo. <laughs> the bay. Oh, sorry, the bay. <laughs> the Qu Guantanamo. Oh, dear. It's, gonna be, it's in my head forever now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's yeah. nothing I could do to erase <laughs> that. If I didn't have an eternal sunshine of the spotless mind, I would erase <laughs> the last 20 minutes. But I can't. An interesting flop here from Cervantes' point of view. The nutty gut shot of the nine. No diamond, though, uh, which is a little frustrating. Samoa's elects to check back with the ace high. And will this give Cervantes an opportunity to take it away from Samoa's? That quick check back often does speak of an ace high. Uh, I mean, it should include some stronger hands, but often doesn't. And Cervantes checks again. Samoas. And now maybe the opportunity to win the hand has 
gone away from Savantis. I would say that the Queen 10 really doesn't show down for anything here. I feel like Marcello has ace high each and every time. I have a lot of worse hands than this, right? A 9-5 of spades or a 4-5 of clubs would certainly be a hand that we want to bluff. Will he go for it with Queen high here? That's what I mean. Like, it's good to have those 90 minutes. Checks and Marcello is going to win another pot. Yeah, with the very flimsy looking ace four. Yeah, and look at that little bit of frustration for Cervantes. And Marcello is knocking on the door of 10 million, 9.9 .9 million in front of him. I'm going to read two comments one good, one bad. I'm going to let you guys decide which is which. Joe, please come up with a nickname based on a military base for every pair of hole cards. <laughs> Morton Vom is my financial advisor. I think I should listen to some more of his advice in the future since he's doing so good. Uh, to me, that's good and good. I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> First of all, you got to respect the troops, okay? Let's, <laughs> let's get that out there. You got to respect the truth. That's pretty cool. That is what Morton Vom does in his real life. He's, uh, you know, he's a, he's a. We've told he works in finance. So, yeah. if he's uh, if he's Burgo's financial advisor, that's cool. He's got clients sure. tuning in. Big Good fan, stuff. Big fan of military bases myself. <laughs> right. And um, yeah. So Marcello, nine point nine million. And you know, although we haven't had eliminations, hasn't been an insignificant level. Hugo Pingray Ping not had a good time of it. Depleted stack now. We will go up, is it 160K, 80K, 160K, next, next level. Uh, so it would push him under the 20 big blind mark, if so. Whereas Marcello with over 90, certainly over 80 big blinds. Looking like this will be the last hand of the level. The suited Jordan for Erkan. Do no break. Do no break. Deciding whether to raise or not. Like walking through the tunnel before a playoff game, the suited Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Does elect to raise. Don't actually think this is the worst, worst decision. Maybe, maybe, maybe we are supposed to have always an overcard, but uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think this, yeah, this is on the looser side. Obviously, you do cover, but only by a fraction. I wonder if Cervantes could whip out a limp re-raise here with this junky ace. Perhaps he'll just limp call. Three nine five. Yeah, it does just limp call and uh, the two lowest car cards in deck. I'm running for some interaction here, right? The three deuce, the ace four, the flow cards come out. You know, uh, Sunmez has been sort of trending towards a little bit of wild card status on this final table. You know, I, I had this impression over the course of the last few days or maybe a bit on the tighter side in certain spots. But now that we're here shorthanded and the table's been going slow, he's the one that's really been Pushing beefing it. things up. I mean, you talk about... Uh, you know, the raise of the 8-4, the C-bet in that hand, the queen four suited open. Yeah. Um, yeah. Pa perhaps sensing no one's going to attack me, right? Like, yeah. Like the whole reason i got to play in line is if I don't, the big stacks will come after me or whatever. Yeah. And, but if they're not going to do their job in that manner, then why not? And, and Yeah, and in fairness, if you're going to go sort of against the book, oftentimes it can be the best, most effective way is to, if you're not sure what you're going to do, just bet. Keep yeah. going, you know, and keep being the aggressor, having the lead, you know, finding some folds. It's not going to work here on this this uh, flop, but maybe with an advantageous turn, maybe even turn a deuce or a three, could find yourself winning this pot. Turn card. Another neener. That might be hard. Flush draw out there on a double paired board. Really? The, the oh, min the flush. flush draw. Oh, the flush draw. The min flush. Really Ooh. interesting hand now. Really, really interesting. Might even be tempted to go for it again here with the three deuce. Really pressurize the Queen Jacks and yeah. Jack Tens. I think it's kind of sexy, but we shall see. Obviously, as well, though, 
attempting to just tech back, check back and try and hit a club. Oh, he's going for it again. Defense. Really like it. Really, okay. really strong play from Urkan. And goes for... I'm going to say this works, honestly. Yeah, I mean, obviously, in general... I'm going to say this irks. Yeah. Nice. And, and, and again, a little bit strange where, in general, the size should be quite big and polarized. But almost just trying to target, like, a jack high or a seven, eight of hearts type hand. I don't know whether ace high can fold for this sizing. See, in general, it's a very good nice. turn for ace high. See, he's sticky. I like it in like a good way. Tremendous. Yeah. And can uh, can follow through on the river. Or can he hit a club? <laughs> Three that pair is unbelievable. Not an improvement. Not hard to. Yeah, he can't. Yeah, he can't does do not it. follow through. <clears throat> so Cernmez going to give up. Nice. Yeah, and let's give cre credit to Jamie Cervantes there. Sticking around alligator blood down the streets and winning a nice pot to move. Ahead. And it's, again, something of a swing. It's actually Cervantes' first time out of the basement in a while. Hello. Cervantes hovering between bottom and second from the bottom for three hours now. Third place now. He's now in third place. Let's take a look at the overall stacks. We are headed to a break. Marcello Samoas still out in front. Erkan Cernmez, now the short stack. We got to lose a player soon, but first we're going to a break. The PSPC is coming back in 2023, but some of you may not have seen all the footage from 2019. Well, guess what? It's going to be available on YouTube very, very soon. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. The Poker Star <laughs> Championship, let's go! The reason we're here is because of him. Platinum passes for your asses. <laughs> Tell me it's 2020, baby. Hey, Steve O'Dwyer, how you doing today, bud? He's poker famous, right? This is my game. Welcome to my court. Believe me, bro, it's the one we need this hat. I'm still here, baby. I ain't going nowhere. He's one of the greatest poker players of all time. Two aces. Oh, my God. You guys sit down over there. <laughs> In it to win it, boys. It's going to be a long six days. Go, let's get it. has been folded to the small blind and Craig McCorkle has elected to limp with Jack-9 suited. Shweety in the big blind with Queen Jack suited is going to raise. <laughs> with a hand like Jack-9 of diamonds figure McCorkill will be happy to call this raise and see a flop. Yeah, nice small raise. Uh, he's just trying to keep the pot small with Jack-9 and Diamonds, and Shuti is uh, you know, trying to get a little bit of value from his Queen Jack. He thinks it's the best hand. And it's definitely the best hand now. Can you believe it? Flops are straight. Flops a straight flush draw. McCorkle just with bottom pair and the gut shot straight draw. Yeah, hard to believe that McCorkle could find anything to call him with when you just flop the world like that. McCorkle has checked. 
And even though he's got a monster, Sweetie's going to lead out. No, he hasn't checked back any of the flops that, when he's been the pre-flop raiser <coughs> and in position. When he was out of position against Andrew Chen, he checked the flop. In position, he's bet every time, and he bets again. Corkill decides to make the call. Again, still looking to keep the pot small. He's got bottom pair, straight draw. His hand looks pretty good right now. Just not quite as good as Shuti's. Corkill checks again. Is Shuti going to bet again? So if he bets again, this will be the first time we've seen him bet the flop and the turn. Every other time, he's either bet the flop, check the turn, check the flop, bet the turn. The first time we've seen him bet two streets, and it's with the nut straight and a flush redraw. Sounds like a PLO hand. It's a healthy bet there. Can McCorkle afford to just call it? I mean, we are talking about two big stacks here. Yeah, they're both pretty deep. McCorkle, uh, is, if he calls, it's because he's he puts uh, Shuiti on just the flush draw, uh, no pairs, or no straight. Corkill's draw didn't get that. One point one million in the middle. Sweetie trying to make that calculation. How much can I bet that will get paid? Looks like he's made an awfully small bet. Three hundred and forty thousand. Pretty small. About a third uh, of the pot, right? Yeah, he, he just wants McCorkle to call. Um, perhaps he's put him on, you know, bottom pair and middle pair. And, and he, he certainly wants to get paid off with his hand. From McCorkle's point of view, if he put Sweetie on a flush draw and he thinks, well, he's betting now to try and steal it and he's made the bet small to make it look like he's got a better hand than what he actually has. It's double think, right? Right, right. Yeah, he, he's definitely... Uh, Oh, is he lining up a raise? Oh, wow. Uh, he's going to try a, a raise. You know, he, uh, clearly it's a bluff raise here. But wow, what a play. He, he's trying to check raise and, and get wow. Shuiti to fold a pair of kings or two pair. Wow. It'll be tough to get him to fold the nut straight, though. 1,120,000. Um, what is Shuiti wow. worried about? He's worried about the backdoor flush. Backdoor flush. The problem with uh, thinking it's a backdoor flush is the top pair is a, is, an, is a club, so you can't have the king high flush. Oh. Oh. Is that backdoor flush? Showdown. No? Oh. Open cards. Break shows. Check yes. Nine. Yes. And yes, we did. I'm here, Lofa. I have a flop. Nice try by Craig McCorkle. And I have to say, Gavin, he picked the right opponent because Shweetsy definitely got worried there. And I don't know, a bigger bet might have gone to lay down the straight. It's going to be Joseph Klinger who gets the action started, raising it up to 250K with Ace Jack. He keeps finding hands, does our Mr. Shweetsy. He really is running the show here. Picking up big hands, re-raising, playing a lot of pots. You can tell that Costa and Erebidian would love to pick up even an ace without a jack or a pair smaller than ten. It's just something they can make a move with. We're really starting to see that dynamic come into play where all these sort of medium stacks are just going to fold and fold and fold. Oh, Although, I don't know about queens. Uh. Tough to fold queens. Kamazinas is second in chips. How much do you have behind, sir? <coughs> I've got a total of 2.4. Total of 2.4, right? How much do you have? 
about now asking Andrew Chen. Two point nine. Two point nine. Okay. And you, how much do you have? Actually, maybe we can get the whole table to give him an accurate chip count. Point. Well, what, what Karmazinus is doing, he's trying to figure out exactly how many chips everyone has, uh, so he can figure out whether it's right to play his queens. Um, I don't know. This would be an awfully tight laydown. I will need some time, guys. Sorry. I mean, to me, it just seems like he, he just snap, get it in. <coughs> we did see him fold nines to a raise. To a single raise. When even. the table was nine handed. Oh, God. Now it's point. become clear. Everybody's playing for the money jumps. This is not. Uh, this is. This is a, uh, a payout jump tournament. It's no longer anybody else playing for first except for Shuiti. <coughs> Playing our folds, the ace jack. I will tell what you have. I'll tell you later. What? I'll tell you later. It's better. Okay, I, I will tell. I folded queens. Don't tell everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so Good how that went was. Good fold. Uh, yeah. Will you tell me? No. Thank you. I'll tell you anyways. Uh, what? Good fold mm. for you or for him. No, no matter if he has this king. It's, it's, it's a good fold if he has his king Any for me. Three shortish stacks, uh, Karmazinus and Andrew Chen, both have around 10 to 13 big blinds as well. Kling has raised it up to 375,000. And he's run into the kings of Shuiti. <coughs> re-raise. Nicholas, re-raise. What are you supposed to do? The guy's got all the chips and just keeps getting hands. That's going to be tough to beat. <coughs> That's probably not the way to uh, defend. How much you like 5.8? Okay. Wow. How does he get away from this? Wow. I don't know. He should probably ask Dominicus. He'd probably get away. Probably only two hands that Klinger should really be worried about here. Ace, king, or kings. And Schweetzi's actually got one of them. Yeah, it's hard to put him on king since you have one king. He'd have to have the two remaining kings in the deck. Uh, you could be a little bit worried about sixes or fours. We've seen Schweetzi raise with uh, both of those. Wow, and now he turns a flush drop. I mean, this is just this is just a really tough spot for Klinger. Forceful chip cutting he's doing. He's really slamming the chips into the table when he's counting out his bet. That could be a tell. <coughs> Better part of 1.4 million. 1 million 375. And with top pair and that flush draw, I wouldn't be surprised if Klinger just went for it here. Uh, you know, this is a good spot to just call because if he if he gets it all in, you know, he's probably beat. Uh, this way he gets a chance to draw at his flush, uh, draw at his, well, what he thinks is a queen out. Kings full the Shuiti. 6.2 million in the middle. Klinger's got about 3.6 million behind. I'm all in. All in from Nicolas. He's going to have to put it all in. He wants to get to showdown. Be honest, Gavin, with his hand, can you fold this river? Yeah, I, I think you can find a fold. Shuiti hasn't really fired three barrels at any pot, you know. He's checked behind when he didn't have something either on the turn or on the river. Uh, I, I think he can find a fold. It's tough. You don't want to find a fold here. But he can do it. He does lay it down. 
Sweetie supporters may be cheering, but quite frankly, they would have loved to call there. Yeah, Klinger has really played some spectacular poker at this final table. Three remain now. I was best. You wait for him to bust. Now you're free rolling. I didn't wait for him to bust. I had 20 big blinds. It's more than enough to make a move. How much you have? Let's put the handbags away, gentlemen. It's two, uh, two point four, two point five behind. All in. Nicholas Rich. Sweetie shoves at him from the small blind. Call. And he makes the correct call. And obviously some of the time this will be a split. But Dominikas is the favourite. Dominikas about a two to one favourite. Tony G is there to cheer on the Lithuanian. I have to say though, you can't really compete with the Lebanese cheering section right now. They got a lot more to cheer about. Five. No six. Very good flop. Very good flop. Why don't you tell anything? Why don't you shout now? Shout, shout. Come on, six. Come on, six. Come on, six. Come on, six. Be careful what you wish for. I warned you. Sweetie never seems to miss. And now Dominikas needs a four for a straight or a seven for a better pair to survive. It's a blank. Shweti eliminates Dominikas Kamazinas, who's our third place finisher. He gets 700,000 euros. And we go heads up at the grand final of the European Poker Tour. This time, he does have two aces. Oh, come on. That's <laughs> ridiculous. Eights for Klinger. And Marlin. Goal! And he makes his move, insta-call. Sweetie, four to one favorite. He's on the verge of being crowned the champion of the grand final of season six of the EPT. And Shuiti obviously very excited, but uh, this is Hold'em. It's not a two card game. They've got to put the board out there. Here it is. Nine, ten. Yes! Yes! No immediate help for Klinger. He does have a backdoor straight draw. But Shweety becomes an even bigger statistical favorite. One ace. One ace. He's calling for the ace, but there are two eights in the deck. Yes! If there isn't an eight on the river, it's all over and we have our champion. Come on. I think the Lebanese poker fans are going to bring the roof down. No eight, Sweetie's done it. Sweetie takes the title and the 1.7 million euros. Back to the secondary feature table where it's Steve O'Dwyer versus Mohamed El Sablani. El Sablani has paired his seven on the turn, but it's still way behind O'Dwyer's jacks. I wonder how we ended up here. Looks like El Sablani raised under the gun with five, seven of diamonds, then called a three bet with it. Okay. He bets 11,000. Steve calls. Probably not folding a pair this big to just one bet. Oh my, it's a five on the river. Elsa Blani now has two pair. See, everyone, it doesn't just happen online. Elsa Blani bets 20k. It's probably good for me, though. What? It's probably good for me, though. 
I can help you if you want. Not too much help. If you want to do something good, you gotta fold. <laughs> Cause I'm really good. <laughs> mm, could be embarrassing for me. Send, I will give you like also a cappuccino for free. <laughs> if you fold. I like cappuccinos. This guy is awesome. Usually when people talk this much, they're pretty strong. Maybe Steve picks up on that. Then again, maybe Steve knows this guy likes to clown around under the gun a lot. Oh, wardrobe change. So you cannot read me anymore. Okay, undercover cop who's trying not to look undercover. Oh, Dwight Coles. Well, it worked. Slow roll alert, jeez. Oh, come on. Well, oh, boy, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> You're fed off the ace. His reads are as good as his crane kicks. Fed off ace. Hard luck, bro. Steve O'Dwyer now nursing a short stack. Everyone gunning for the reigning champion. Welcome back to Monaco and the PokerStars European Poker Tour presented by Monte Carlo Casino. Our live coverage of the final table of the main event continues. And guess what, guys? We still have all six players. The last elimination was Ramon Kalilas almost 24 hours ago. Obviously, they haven't been playing all of that time. We restarted at 1 o'clock this afternoon. And there has been some movement in the chips. Marcelo Samoa is from Brazil, currently holds the chip lead, a 61 big blind stack. And we now have two shorties. Hugo Pingray playing 19 big blinds. Qualifier Erkan Sernmetz playing 18 big blinds. I'm James Hodgkin alongside Nick Walsh. Hello, hello, thank you for having me. Everyone now guaranteed 167,000 euros. More than half a million to the winner. Almost a million. Sorry, I'm more than half a million to the runner-up, but almost a million for the winner, 939,840 euros. We would like to start paying players, which is a polite way of saying, can we have some bust-outs, please? Yeah, Joe is not joining us for this session. I presume he's out there cranking it. I believe he may have brought the uh, cooler machine to Monte Carlo, so maybe we can get some cranking while he's on break. So yes, that is the 25K high roll-up playing down to a winner. Meanwhile, across the Salle des Etoiles, up on the main stage on our new EPT 2022 set, we have the main event FT. And we have joining us on the line, the man, the myth, the legend, Lex Veldhaus is in the house. How's it going, Lex? Hey, how are you guys doing? I'm good. Pleasure to have Excited you, buddy. to watch them. Uh, yeah, thanks, Nick. Uh, good to talk to you again as well. The next break, the next we, break. Can, we can even skip the deal break. EPT final <laughs> table, Lex. Always pretty exciting. Um, I'm just, I'm just the saying, narrative yeah. is, you, though, you these guys right, have understandably play, been playing play, pretty, play pretty play. tight. No one wants to be the first player out. They all want the win. All right. All right. So the players are just being informed that we are now having to make adjustments to the tournament clock. The harsh reality is that we need to get this finished at a reasonable hour tonight. So this level <laughs> is going to be reduced from 90 minutes to 75 minutes. Then the dinner break will follow. So this is level 31. Blinds are now 80,000, 160,000 with a 160K big blind ante. You know, what's funny, James, is we've been covering this, obviously, from the start of the day. We've been streaming for several hours now. And the actual chip stacks are looking as though they should have been at the very start of play today. We're on the final now, and finally the big blinds kind of reflect that. What do you think of this chip pyramid, Lex? 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 Lex! <laughs> Okay, little technical difficulties there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was brief but meaningful. Yeah, you know, it's always a pleasure to have Lex. Cervantes here. This is 
a player that is living right in the middle, ladies and gentlemen. There are one, two, three, four, five, six players remaining, obviously. And he is currently in fourth place. So he's got a lot of pressure on him to ladder, trying to allow Son Mais and Ping Rei to bust before, um, before him so he can ladder. Lex, are you back? Hello. Oh. There we go. Hey. I'm all in. What the fuck? <laughs> well, at least you came <laughs> back at the moment of drama. We get CERN Mets, the last remaining online qualifier, all in with Ace Queen, following the open from Samoas and the flat from Cervantes. <laughs> yeah, we've seen this a few times, guys. I mean, since we've been covering uh, our feature tables here in Monte Carlo, lots and lots of ace-queen suited squeeze opportunities. And this is a bit of a spot. So as one of the shorties I just mentioned, pocket eights can absolutely be the best hand here. Lex, how many times do you think that this is going to be a push by like pocket sevens or pocket sixes or lower though, do you think? No, it's stack size. Oh, oh, oh. Lex? Lex. Lex. <laughs> Maybe he's having a really good think about hand ranges. <laughs> he's just uh, he's just looking up the range here. He's just doing doing some quick solving. He'll be back with us in just a moment. You got it there? <laughs> and takes it down. Yeah, I feel like that's pretty reasonable. Cervantes is in a good spot, as I mentioned. <laughs> That jam, I don't know if it's going to be a small pocket pairs that often or often enough to push that into a uh, into a call. Hi. Hi, Lux. You mean that's the Hi. weakest? Is this going to be third time lucky? No. That's yeah, like the most for sure. Average hand if you're Is this talking. already some internet that, that I'm going to have to, you know, be, yeah, be skeptical be like about this scoop? I'm going to say, buddy, there's a big online series starting what? tomorrow. And less, you were going to be grinding and streaming, I guess, for average. like three and a half weeks. So you kind of need fine, some stable more, broadband. More, you know? like yeah, I, I will definitely take the blame when I can. But uh, <laughs> everything from my end seems to be good. But um, I, I, I will say that all the alarm bells went off and I started speed testing and checking every connection and demo running some other uh, things. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Hope it's sorted now. Awesome stuff. Okay, tricky spot here. Ace ten of clubs gonna open. Sorry, excuse me. Ace ten of clubs. Action to him after an open for, from Cervantes. Ace jack off. So this is one of the shorter stacks though. So this might be a push. What do you think, Lex? Yeah, I think that's uh, especially versus a bigger stack. Uh, it's 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 kind of nice to get the, the chips in. I don't hate a flat. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons why I wouldn't hate a flat, like usually having a 10 at the final table, um, like pocket 10s can be a bit dangerous because a lot of the um, bluffs come from hands like queen 10, king 10 suited, jack 10 suited, 10 9 suited. So uh, a 10 can be a bit dicey, but like you say, like I definitely wouldn't hate a push there because they're all late position. He needs some chips. Um, so, yeah, it's... Uh, I, I think it's hard to go wrong, to be really honest. Right, yeah. I mean, especially because it's suited, obviously plays a lot better regardless, right? Maybe maybe ace-10 off is a push that he might make. Ace-10 suited is one he might flat, something like that. Yeah. Well, we are going three-way to the flop. Trofimov calls as well, and it is a king-five-deuce board with just the one club. Sorry, but boring. I think also in these kind of spots, it's just, you know, it's kind of irrelevant to look at the chip stacks and think like, oh, so uh, is, 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 is the chip leader here so he can put pressure or something. It's like if one of these guys wins the pot, then, you know, they're leading. So everybody has a lot of pressure in these situations. Um, it's a bit hard because people are going to, you know, defend a lot with kings, a, a king and a, a random card in the bind, and the buck come along with, like, king jack off. In all those hands. Yep, that's exactly it's what I was going to say. not that easy of a set, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think the king is a particularly bad high card here, especially when we see a flat from the button. 
that's going to be a lot of king x that just wants to keep it small pre and just see a flop king queen king 10 king jack king nine suited even maybe i don't know that's might, might be, be getting a little bit wide So everyone check the flop. Two players have checked the turn. He's got a flush draw. And that's why I thought Cern Metz might bet, but no, he checks as well. And when we get the deuce of hearts on the river pairing the board and we continue to see this very risk averse play and that's not to criticize it. I don't think these guys are doing anything wrong per se when you consider the stack sizes and the payouts. It's just from an outsider's perspective, it's not the most fascinating poker to watch. But these guys aren't here to play for my entertainment. They're here to play for an EPT trophy and a first prize of nearly 940K. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that oftentimes, you know, like, I, let's say a recreational rep, but even for professionals, like your baseline, you want solid strategy. So keeping Paul Small, what they're doing right now, now, some people might, players might be aware of it, others might not be, but it's exactly what they should be doing. But that is your baseline. But as soon as you see around you, that people aren't really doing anything, doing anything to pick up us and just kind of like checking down the showdown, then I feel like you can definitely branch out a little bit and, and venture out with some best, maybe some small re-raises. But, you know, the, the, on the flip side of that, there's an easy counter argument to say that that's easier said than done when you're playing for life-changing money. Yeah, especially on camera. Yeah. Yeah, if, if a few bluffs go wrong, it's, it's so easy to think like, wow, I really blew up my opportunity. And then, you know, there's always like every, every time uh, when you're in a more experienced kind of situations and you open your up a bit and you think like, okay, now I can blast a little bit, maybe steal some chips. And then you go out because you pick a few spots that were unfortunate and then you see the nit get seconds, you know, and then you're like, okay, that could, that could have been me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's such a such a dangerous trap to fall in as well, you know. The, the what could have happened had I done things different and sort of like take that on as baggage, you know. It's and it, it, it happens to me. I mean, I, I've had those a lot of those moments too. Like, what if I just folded that hand, or you know, what if I had not got three out of they won a million in that tournament, and then that would have happened. But that's you know, it's so useless, so useless. Cool. Uh, Metz is raised with ace 10, called by Samoas in the big blind. Ace 10 versus 9 5 and a 9 9 7 flop. Look how excited he is! <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did a bit better than the last 9 5 we saw. Yeah, I don't know if Sonmez has the kind of hand where he's going to lose a massive pot here, though. If he does decide to C-bet and picks up an ace or a 10, perhaps. But uh, for the most part, I think it's going to be a C-bet. And then he's going to have to slow down. Um, let's take a look at the blinds here, though. Uh, sorry, the big blinds, excuse me, guys, though. If you take a look at Sonmez's stack, got about 2.94 millis. One of the shortest stacks. So it's not as though they'll struggle to get the money in. That was kind of my next question is, given the fact that he is on the shorter side, I wonder if he wants to even check raise here because he still could convince his opponent to put in three bets here and he's not going to struggle to get all the chips in the middle. Yeah, it's kind of funny huh? how, how playing monsters can just be a bit tricky as well. Where you're like, okay, yeah, this is really great, but my hand is almost too strong. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's such a such a weird thing, isn't it, Lex? When you flop this big, you know, you should be check raising some of the time. He does see a call though, so that worked out really good for him. Now, now, very very close to around a pot size, just a little bit over pot here. If you're looking at the SPR of Sonmez. do you think it's true to say, Lex, that if you have if you're deeper, you should be check raising this board more aggressively, right? Trying to build a pot. Yeah, it's also like people will just find a lot harder when it's right. It's like, I mean, when you're both 40, 50 big blinds deep, it's like, oh, hey, nice. You know, I have a little bit more nines than you. I'm going to make it. But 
it takes a true gangster to just do that at 25 with lines because it always has this like voice in the back of your head like where does my folds come from right if we yeah. only have 20 big blinds like what am i gonna bet on the river that's gonna make him go wow okay i fold so yeah. it's a bit tricky but time and time again you'll think like well okay, short enough i'm gonna bet and then some beast online will just click you <laughs> <laughs> exactly and, and raise you and and you feel like you're in exactly the same spot as you would be six blinds deep so um yeah it, it it all comes back kind of to those dynamics right it's like are people capable of making those moves? So capable of making those moves on the final table, and um, I, I think that's very interesting. And sometimes when you watch the final table and you see like the hand in the in QM on a high reel, or sometimes think like, "Wow, how did it get to this point?" But after these guys playing together for a couple of days and playing defensively, you get such a good feel of, you know, what person is capable to pull the trigger in certain situations. So we have. Dragos Trofimov here with pocket eights on the button, looking to become the first ever EPT winner from Moldova. Of course, the other big story at the final table is our current chip leader, Marcelo Samoas. We have never had a Brazilian winner on the tour. He'd like to be the first. Whoa. Um, this is interesting, James. I mean, I don't think it would be completely outrageous to see an all-in here from Samoas, but obviously we have that ICM pressure um, he is one of the shortest stacks, Trofimov, and he is sort of under 25 big blinds effective, but we're not playing for chippy of you guys, we're playing for cash monies with ladders. So I think he's going to opt just for the call instead. I think one of the, the biggest hurdles for him there is that the big blinds is one of the bigger stacks yeah. behind him, you know? Yeah, absolutely. If, uh, yeah, I think you make a good point. If, if the button opens and the big blind up has 20, 25, Lines. It's so easy. You just rip it in. Yeah, I mean, with the ICM pressure as well. Let's say that the big blind did have twenty big blinds or less. You rip in the fours. You might even get a fold from eights, and that's that's truly crazy when you think about that. That's one of the things that I think is so interesting about final table play. You're going to get so many folds where you wouldn't if you were just playing in a cash game or you were playing, you know, for a winner take all kind of situation. So Vam's squeeze from the big blind has got rid of the eights. Now a different dynamic, Lex, because of course, you know, these two guys actually have some stacks. And, you know, the deeper you get, the more likely you are to call it those fours. I think probably trough them off a little bit on the shallow side to call the squeeze though, generally, right? So I think, yeah. uh, I think you know, if they were both 80 big blinds deep or something, you might just call a squeeze and try and set mine, and you've got enough money behind to justify it. Morton yeah. Fam, start of day chip leader, sits in second place right now with 7,043,000 big blinds. Works in the banking industry in Denmark. Doesn't have many caches to his name. Rarely appears on the live circuit, mostly an online player. And we talk about accomplishments. He is looking to be the first Danish EPT champion in... 10 years. Lex, can you believe it's been a decade since a Dane won an EPT? Was it EPT Barcelona? No, it was Campione. It was Yannick Rang. Oh, oh him. Um, yeah, that's insane. <laughs> wow. I mean, I I've never made a final table, so no stat surprises me, to be honest. I think what makes it even more incredible, and again, I don't expect you guys to know or remember this, but we actually had three Danish winners in a row that year. <laughs> Mickey Peterson what? won yeah. Copenhagen, Frederick Jensen really won Madrid, <laughs> and then Yannick Rang won Campioni. So Denmark so won good. three in a row. They <laughs> haven't had a win since. Well, oh, serves them right. Three in a row. Wow. How much is that? Or nine. So, like, they're, they're just nothing beats a final table life. Yeah, it's it's just, anyway. like, the, the psych psychology of being deep in a final table, sitting there, they, you know, there's yes. all these thoughts swirling in your head, you're trying to, like, you know, silence that, and then trying to gauge how your opponents are feeling, and then every hand is so oh, impactful. It's a, it, I think that live final tables is just it's, it's a thing of beauty, really. They weren't that bad. Really impresses me as well when people can just live in a, in a really big spot, just 
run over a table or really put on the the gas pedal. Okay, so we see an open here from Trofimov. UTG plus one, king nine of spades. And Samoa's in the cutoff, obviously, trying to figure out if it's worth him coming along here. Very, very playable hand, but a little bit on the shallow side. And, you know, hands like jack eight suited are not that dissimilar from some small pocket pairs in the sense that you're kind of trying to make a big hand. You do have the, the, uh, the addition of being in position, which means you can pull off some more bluffs and that kind of thing, too. But he decides not quite the spot for him and puts it in the bin. Question on Twitch from Lily, 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 uh, this person. Oh. Are most of these players going to Madrid, Spain next? Look, I imagine most of these players are going to be grinding scoop for the next three and a bit weeks because the Spring Championship of Online Poker does start tomorrow. I assume Senor Lex is really looking forward to that. Obviously, these boys putting in the time during these big series. Yeah, I mean, it, it's... It's so it's so crazy how school we could have always been paramount in the year. Pretty much built your year around yeah. that. That's what it feels like. Because whenever the one is over, the the it feels like the road to the next one starts, right? So, um, and, and now especially so with streaming and, and, and putting in so many hours there, and Twitch obviously loves Scoop and W Poop. It's it it really does feel like a special time of year. So uh, this time I went I just a family vacation with my wife. And my, 14 month old son and just feel energetic managed to sleep nine and a half ten hours a night so i'm, I'm really ready to grind to tomorrow we've got trofimov with ace king suited under the gun has raised to 325,000. hugo pingray in the big blind king ten of clubs defends and we go heads up to the flop yeah, mandatory defend here. King 10 suited, obviously. And Ooh, domination, domination. Rotation. rotation. Check. Oh, damn, what a turn. Uh-oh. Yep, top here now for Trofimov, and a good one at that, the toppiest of tops. So Ping Ray, the effective stack here, 14 bigs behind, which represents more than two-thirds of Trofimov's stack. What do you think, Lex? I love, like, a ginormous bet here. I like, like, 700K. Start protecting from those hearts, get value from ace king, king queen, that kind of thing that might have checked the flop. King queen probably less so with the gut shot. I think it's it's one of those situations where I either go small or big. You know, I think middle of the row bets are a bit of a problem. And he decides to go middle of the road. <laughs> 375,000 into a pot of 890,000. And there is the call from Trofimov. River card. Three of spades. Oh, what a brick. It's like the guessing game when you're in a big blind. Does he have a queen or with the jack of hearts or something? Or just a hearts? Or do he actually have a king? And he might check back if I check. It's, it's Yeah. I mean, when you've got king 10 as well, it makes it a lot harder for him to have ace king because of obviously card removal, but it's like, yeah, I mean, I think you probably don't want to miss a bet here, but like Lex is saying, a check might induce, you know, ace jack with the jack of hearts, ace ace jack with the ace of hearts or something like that to, to bluff. So it's a real tightrope. How many value hands does he have that might call here? How many missed bluff, how many missed draws, excuse me, does he have on the turn that might pay me off? I think uh, the most important fa factor, that if they do have the ace of hearts or the queen of hearts or the jack of hearts, they're not really supposed to bluff. But, you know, that doesn't mean that people won't do it sure. in lineups, right? But generally, 
you don't want to bet with hands that are missed. Too many people are keen off to just check by maze. I flush draw here. Yeah, if he decides to bet just around pot. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a good point as well, Lex. It's also interesting because you know, maybe they do have a hand with the Ace of Hearts and they decide to raise the river with the nut flush blocker, which is actually the nut blocker. But I don't know, how, how often do you think players are actually going to miss a C-bet here with a flush draw and containing an Ace of Hearts, do you think? It's kind of funny how, how so many things come down to, like, you know, like you say, like, it, are they even going to? Okay, so you have the Ace of Hearts, congrats. Are you really put me all in on the river? I'm in mind. I have an instant amount of flushes, right? I have straights. Two pairs. Oh, you have a blocker. You just gonna put me all in. It's maybe in a one k, you know, and yeah. like, like when you just burst the pool or something, you're gonna do it at the main event final table. Yeah, it really does make a difference. A bet of one point two million paid off by Trofimov, and that changes things. Pingray was the shortest stack. He is now fourth in chips with close to thirty big blinds, and Dragos Trofimov has just dropped below the 15 big blind mark and will be posting on the next hand. He will post both the big blind and the big blind ante. He'll have 11 bigs behind. Yeah, he's there in the danger zone. Ping Ray's rail goes wild. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do, though? You've got Ace-King there. Your opponent can be betting all the hands that we were talking about that he might have been calling with on the turn, right? They could be leading some combo draws that missed, etc. So, you know, you got to be pretty sticky with Ace-King there. You're going to have the best hand at ton. No. So we've got the chip leader with 63 big blinds, Marcelo Simoas. No one else has 50. You've got Ping Ray hovering around 30, and then Sermet's on 14 bigs. Trofimov... We've just established 11 bigs, and here comes Sun Metz all in. I kind of feel by the end of this level, in 52 minutes time when we go to dinner, surely we'll have lost one player, at least one player. I'm thinking we're going to lose two here, uh, James. I think we're headed in that. Chip stacks are such that I think we're going to get a lot more action now. This is this is the final table where it probably should have started that day, uh, started the day. So we're getting into that that time now. You're like 4.7. Man, I really live like when I see this seven? too. Slightly less, I'd say. Uh, two, three, three. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, obviously we were in Prague a couple of months ago. That you. very much <laughs> felt <laughs> like the warm-up. This feels like From the afar. big return. Bomb is under the gun and he's going to open up king queen off just over a min race <laughs> oh man i love the sitting up straight right before it's like okay yes here we go i asked earlier on but it was to the point where i think we lost you what do you make of the chip pyramid uh, I think it's smart. I don't know. I think that in cash games, generally, you want as least chips on the table as possible. You want everything in big chips. And in tournaments, it really does help. I mean, there has to be a 1% psychological factor when somebody glances over and wants to raise your big blind, yes or no, right? I don't know. I do think that big stacks really work. Um, I, I always get a little bit tilted when people don't have all their chips in between their hands so that they're the outside because then you cross into other people's space. But that's just sort of like... The OCD angry Vegas life grinder in me, you know. Oh, I love this uh, race, by the way. That's fantastic. That is that is like the perfect sort of hand to just put a lot of pressure with. Just second stack. You're as a you play, as a chip leader playing versus second stack. Just these these ace x. Three bets are just so powerful at final tables. Have a request 
from three down the card. Can you ask Sam Grafton, does he remember playing me at 51 or 128 game? I thought it was strange someone who played so high in tournaments wants to play me at that limit. It was years ago, but it sticks with me till this day. Ha ha. Um, no, I'm not going to ask him. Thank you for your question. I just love the game. Yeah, playing poker is fun, whatever, you know. High stakes, mid stakes, low stakes. Monsieur Pingray, Queen Jack of Hearts, going to open from the cutoff. So Queen Jack versus Queen Jack. Yeah, we saw, we were talking about a spot yesterday. I believe it was King 10 versus King 10, but I was trying to make a point about the power of position, how even though we know that this is going to be a chop a huge amount of the time, the player in position will have more opportunities to turn their hand into a bluff and potentially win it at non-showdown. has the option you got back to hearts you've got a gut shot you've got two over cards two check and there it is the backdoor flush draw so ping right now free rolling It's definitely a bit hard because it's also a pretty dangerous card. He's going to miss the, the flush and straight more often than not. And, you know, um, he's not even going to win with a straight or a pair. And he is going to call a bet, but it's such a good board for the big blind that I assume there's going to be two bets, you know, turn and river. Um, because the imposition player is going to check back an eight or a nine or some a six sometimes um, that they're not going to fold on the turn. But the board is just too good. So I do think that. Uh, it, it seems like it's a good card because he gets some uh, equity, but I just don't think he's gonna. It's gonna work out for him very often. Ten of hearts, though. Ping Ray calls the four hundred and fifty thousand, taking us to the river. Which is the Jack of Diamonds. Yeah. I think some sort of like small bet would work really well here. I don't even think you really want to go big. Person in position has such a shitty amount of hands as well here. I mean, I will say up. that. Uh, I, I will say that, you know, you can't just bet straights big on the river, and it's pretty much like a straight or some sort of like two pair pair combination. Um, so top pair is is pretty nice, but at the same time, you're gonna have quite a few eight nines, eight six suited, six five suited, um, that it can also bet. Don't mind this. Well, this gets checked to showdown, and this is a chop pot. And you know what they say? Ooh. Everyone loves a chop pot. Chop pot. Ten hearts would I almost wasn't ready for that. You heard that? <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while, Lex. It's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> I remember I left you hanging once. You were so upset with me. And I understand. <laughs> I still feel bad about that. You know, you have to be a team player, <laughs> even during your nonsense memes. That's right. We still have to bribe oh. Sam Grafton to do it, so. Yeah. Boy. 
I'm not going to be lectured by someone who uses the face of a Muppet about nonsense memes. <laughs> fair, fair, fair. Oh. And 99 of the final table. Still six-handed. Got a follow-up oh. here from the individual asking about uh, if Sam Grafton remembered me. Says, the reason I asked is that we were playing six-handed, and he asked in the chat box, did I want to play heads up? So we played for a couple of hours. I wanted to know, did he think okay. I was good or bad? Why else would he want to play me heads up? Well... <laughs> just, just, just... Because he liked you. There we go. Let's just leave it at that. He thought, he thought you had a cool, a cool avatar. You had a cool profile picture. We've got Ace-10 all in, Trofimov shoving from the cutoff with Ace-10 of clubs. It's, uh, that's a huge pet peeve of mine when there's somebody all in and somebody asks how much it is before they look at their hands. Oh, nice. You increased your stack. I, like I think it's safe to say Lex has some baggage from his live days. <laughs> <laughs> you know another yeah. thing that really annoys me? is all the players playing the EPT right now. <laughs> <laughs> Old man shakes fist at life. Lex has <laughs> <Like, laughs> got some scars, guys. He's been there, he's done that, you know. I get it, I get it. I've seen it all. He's seen it all. It's somewhat jaded, but you know, still, 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 still in the game. Don't worry, don't worry about that. Here I sit behind my computer. Don't worry. These mother. <laughs> Great hands. Yeah, we have reached hand 100, and we've got 10-10 for Vam on the button. And with both blinds folding, that will be raise and take oh. it. Was that aces for the first time? <laughs> really aces? Uh, no, oh, a little, little okay. shimmy. <laughs> Either that or he's like, thank God. And for those of you asking, control. yes, we are going to play down to a winner today. No more days in the main event. We've commented a lot in the last few days that we're effectively a day short in this main event. That's why we've been playing such long days, trying to get to the final table. And now we're at the final table. We have to do some adjustment to the levels to make sure that we can get to a conclusion tonight. One of these six players will lift that trophy. One of these six players will receive that first prize of nearly 940k before the day is done. Vaughn looks down at ace queen off here in the cutoff. Seems good. Go ahead and pump that baby up. Yeah. How much is it? Second biggest stack at the final table. Starts the hand with 40 big blinds. He's made it 350k. It's definitely one of those spots where you just have to, you can't, you just can't call ace three off here. It just, you know, because the moment you hit an ace high board, the first thing you think you had is, oh God, here we go. And that's <laughs> usually a really bad sign because you're very right to think that. Um, you know, especially with some shorties and you're going to play your strongest aces very fast. That means that if the board comes ace high, the, your opponent knows that you won't have uh, ace king, ace queen, so they can just barrel you down when there's a lot of pressure with pay jumps. Ping Ray defends, and we have a three on the flop. Domination, rotation. Yeah, I spoke about this yesterday when... Um... I think we were talking with Joe, and he was talking about, you know, Nick, would you call with bottom pair in this situation? And it's important that you do in these spots, really, because this will happen, especially if you're seeing a very early raise and then you defend the big, big blind with a hand like ace three. If you're looking to do a domination rotation, ace king, ace queen, ace ten, that kind of thing, are the, are the hands that are going to be uh, raising from earlier position? I mean, the cutoff is going to be significantly wider, so it's a little bit more tricky. But you just can't be folding pairs, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
It is tough though. Yeah, Pink, uh, sorry, sorry, like yeah, Pink Race still has twenty six bigs here, so it needs to be looking out. Yeah. And especially because this you make a good point because this is almost your best case scenario, yeah. right? You flop a dry board and you flop a pair and you know, you're not gonna call with ace three to flop straights. Two pairs is also pretty pretty damn hard. So this, like a dry board with bottom pair that's gonna get seabed very often. Like this is a really great spot for ace three. So there's just no way you can start folding here. Yeah, I think, you know, people who are less experienced are like, well, you know, I got it made a pair, but it's not a great pair. And you know, people are gonna have fours and jacks. Once you start to understand ranges a little bit better and you understand the, di the dynamics of these weaker ace x combos, I think it's absolutely imperative you're defending on these boards. Otherwise, you're just going to be not only giving up too frequently, but you're going to deny yourself 82% equity on the turn, like we see here. Having check called flop, Ping Ray has led for 425,000. Yeah, it's a thing you see very often, uh, or relatively often these days, where people are so the advantage when the four pairs, the advantage shifts to the big blinds uh, because the big blind is going to have hands like five for offsuit. They're going to have more suited uh, combinations that have a four in them. So um, the advantage shifts to the big blinds. Uh, on final tables, it's a lot less so because you will have a lot less offsuited uh, fours. So it's not something where I would go like, oh no, you know, here we go. So he's going to have a ton of fours. Um, but it's a, it's a pretty cool play for sure. Now he's in a bit of a weird zone, though, um, uh, I think, because he has one of those hands that doesn't really need to build up a pot, right? Because if you bet, you're going to fold out some king high, sure, you get some protection, you know, they can't uh, outdraw you on the river. But now you're on the river and you check and your hand is a little bit face up. Yeah, gets the showdown as well. Didn't have didn't have any pressure on the river. And we've seen a switcheroo after that hand. Hugo Pingray now second in chips. Morton Van moves down into third, although they're practically tied, to be honest. Uh, Dragos Trofimov still the shortest stack at the final table with 11 big blinds. Hello to Minnesota Man, who says, thank you so much for explaining the scenarios. As a new poker player, these last three days have helped me lots. You're welcome. And Rada Falka says, will we have commentary all throughout, even if it's another 12 hours? Yes, you will have commentary until the end. Realistically, this will not go another 12 hours. The structure will be adjusted to ensure that doesn't happen. It's not good for anyone, especially the players, for them to be going for another half a day. Well, you say that, James. You remember what happened last time we were in Monte Carlo? Yeah, but they did not adjust the levels. This <laughs> time true. around, they're already adjusting the levels to specifically avoid that problem. Yeah. Uh, we've got the Grafton, 10-9 suited. I oh, love this hand. Love this hand. Love, love Sam Grafton. Love this hand, too. Lex, is there a poker hand named after you? Um, James, I thought this was a safe environment. <laughs> <laughs> I trusted you guys. <laughs> Small blind, no good. King four seated in the bin. King four, wow, in the small blind. What a coincidence. <laughs> well, we've had a lot of requests for Joe to crank it and get the cooler machine up and running. I like your music, dude, says we need a Casino Royale situation. I'd take it. I would take it. Especially if we were able to reveal the hands one by one <laughs> with the dealer helpfully bringing the cards to the middle of the table and rearranging the board to show the audience what everyone had. <laughs> Ping Ray shushing his rail, his extremely quiet rail. <laughs> Rob Adams says, the dealers must hate the shot clock. I can guarantee they don't. You know what they hate more than a shot clock? Waiting 20 minutes to play a single hand. And then having to call a, call a tournament director. And then the tournament director giving them another minute. Ooh, he calls. Wow. Ooh. This is this is pretty spicy. He's one of the bigger stacks. In fact, he is the chip leader here on our final table. 
seven four off. That's, that's pretty wide. No, he hasn't had to do anything, Nick. Ping Ray lifted the puck. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Excuse me. I assumed the Rays. Thank you, James. You know what they say about assume? Makes an arse out Makes of everybody. Makes an arse out of you and me. <laughs> wow. Wow, this is a really interesting one. What Nick said was better. It works better. I should, I should, I should yeah. implement that. Makes an ass out of you and me. <laughs> I love it. Both players with a gut shot. Ooh, five of diamonds. Nice card for Ping right here. Obviously picking up the Jack High flush draw as well as his gutter. Plus in this situation, I think he'll have two over cards to an eight or a six once in a while too. That's a consideration. Goes check, check, and no diamond on the river, so Samoa's straight is good. Yeah, obviously Samoa's turned it. He obviously turned that straight, so it's a situation where he might be tempted to try and get some Valu. 720,000. 720, sorry. Yep. I'm, I'm a bit uh, disappointed at the, the turn check. Like, if you're going to lift the button and you're going to bet the flop small or whatever, that means that people are going to have any 8, any yeah. 6, yeah. anything. So if you if you allow people to have any two cards, that means that you also have to be willing to just fire them off of it on random boards. So I really think that with the, the Jack of Diamonds in there and, you know, the fact that he had a gut shot, some of his spare outs are going to be good. Yeah. I think that, you know, if you're not willing to pull the trigger there, then I, I do think you shouldn't be limping buttons. Yeah, that's a good observation. Marcelo Simo is now up to 11.36 million. And he does actually have a two to one advantage oh, over the player who's second on the leaderboard. In fact, we've got three players tied for second. <coughs> Cervantes, Pingray, Vam, all with 34 big blinds each. Then Sermet's on 14, and Trofimov, with 10 big blinds, has edged into the danger zone. Danger zone! Um, yeah, it's a bit problematic. If I were a 10 big blind stack here, it's really hard because there's just no, not that many big pots happening, right? Like. One of the biggest spots we've seen is is top two pair versus top pair top kicker. So, um, it's it's not one of those final tables where you look and it's like, okay, I got you know 10, 12, 11, 13 big blinds, but I'm sure there's going to be a spot or something. Um, uh, and I think that people underestimate the value of still having 10 big blinds or 11 or 12 and still being able to raise like that queen 10. If you have 10 big blinds and you just min raise the button there, you know, you just make it the minimum, that looks terrifying. It's not like a big stack looks at that and thinks like, oh, here we go, nice, juicy, you know? So um, I think that sometimes on final tables, especially with the offsuit hands, people go into an all-in or fold strategy a little bit too much where you still have room to play, you know? And if they raise you, you just fold. Chip leader raises small to big with jack eight of hearts, 375,000. And with a dominating hand, Queen Jack, Morton Vam defends. The flop. Anything for you, I got you. Is King, eight, deuce, domination rotation again.
Uh, I was thinking of addressing... Does this little... Yeah, go ahead. I was just thinking of addressing this guy's point, but I can't be bothered. Just going to ban him instead. Oh, you beat me to it. I already had it typed out. Such a facile point. It's not worth highlighting. Um, a reminder of the prize money. 167k for the next player out. And more than 939k up top. Uh, Tidy's got a good point, though. Whatever happened to chat for a Saturday? I overruled it at the start of the day. Oh, uh -huh. okay. It's a Stapleton thing that I was never on board with to start with. And I feel that for the final table of the Ipsi Monte Carlo main event, it cannot, should not be a thing. Okay. Copy. What is a Mr. Chat for a Saturday? It's oh. basically this ludicrous idea that Joe came up with. On a Saturday, you allow everyone to say whatever they want and they can't be told they're wrong. Doesn't that, that sound like everyday Twitch chats? Yeah, but most days of the week, Lex, <laughs> you can tell them, no, you're wrong, and you can point out where they're incorrect. But on a Saturday, you're not supposed to be allowed to do that. Well, sorry, not today. Sounds like hell. Top pair for Vom. 94% on the flop. 10-8 suited. Not very many options. You know how in uh, Greek mythology there was a guy in hell that was upside down with his head in shit? And then uh, somebody, somebody had their eyes poked out and then they grew back and then their eyes would be poked out again? That chat pro Saturday sounds like my kind of hell. I would be in there chained, watching a TV with people giving commentary with my mouth stuffed full of rats or something. <laughs> oh, man. Lines still 80 160 for another 26 minutes. That's going to take us to the dinner break. And the way this is going, I'm no longer convinced we're going to lose a player before we get to that break. Yeah, I mean, here I was thinking we were going to lose two. Wishful thinking, perhaps. Yeah. Samoas yeah. decides to open up Ace Queen off in the cutoff. It's definitely a bit tempting here. I mean, the, there's there's just not a whole lot of three betting. Um, I think the, I mean the last person we saw doing the three betting was Vam himself. Um, so it's okay. Okay, three's still good for now. But Samoz is actually a statistical favorite with the gut shot and two overs to the board. Yep, double gutter here for Samoas. I like this check a lot. What do you think, Lex? I really like the pot control here. You've got you're gonna have the best hand a bunch, and you're gonna improve yeah. a lot of the time as well. Why build the pot against another big stack? Dink. Yeah, I think one really important part is right. So if you raise the cutoff and the button plays versus you, that means they're gonna have a good set of hands to play versus you, right? Because otherwise they'd fold. Yep. And a lot of those hands are going to be centered around the jack 10 and 8. So generally on these straight draw, you know, with one or two Broadway cards, straight draw, uh, flux draw type of boards, you want to check a lot because you just have to check a lot. If you have ace-5 of hearts, you're not betting the boards, right? So um, like from a theory perspective, you have to check the board a massive amount of the time. And then you can play around with check raises or bet really big when your opponent checks the flop behind, something like that. But usually starts with a check. So I really like the check. It, it does, it's weird because even though it seems like you're doing something passive, it actually keeps all your options open because let's say you bet the flop here and then the turn is a three and then you check, like what are you checking on that board that doesn't want to protect, right? So all of a sudden you're way more face up uh, by betting and then checking instead of just starting with a check. So um, I think it's a really good board to do so. Yeah. yeah. A nice turn. I think finding those, 
finding those spots in your game is really important too because you know sea betting is great you should see that a lot but finding the spots to slow down there just makes you so much more unpredictable and uh, i think it makes you a better player marcelo has extended his chip lead playing close to 80 big blinds now and we have a great suggestion from elu idea for chat ban saturday whenever someone is banned another person is banned randomly it's unusual that nobody busts the whole day normally one or two players ban them all yeah but then it's gonna be everybody yeah. in a row someone's banned and they're watching it they're still they're still a viewer right technically sometimes yeah. it's slow okay and sometimes you just I, get i'm all for Kings uh chat ban saturday twice, you know? yeah. yo minnesota man thank you very much for gifting some subs it's very kind of you sir uh, I saw your comment earlier. I'm glad you're enjoying the content. I assume everybody thinks it's, his, it's himself. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> you should, man. Man, that one guy is like the clearest voice out of everybody at the table. Sounds like he's sitting next to us. Could open. I think as a chip leader, you can just open any ace pretty much at this point. I think that's what they say, right? Vamos? 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 Vamos! Vamos. Vamos. <laughs> Who's they, buddy? <laughs> Vamos! Vamos! <laughs> Boomer, go ahead. I'm a big Cervantes fan. I, so. I, think, I think he's a nice guy. Yeah, sounds like a nice guy. It's good, you know, it's friendly too. Especially, it's like little things like that that kind of break down language barriers and stuff. It definitely makes the mood at the table a bit better. <clears throat> Oh, G rolls! You're just asking for it. Damn it, Nick! You got there first. <laughs> yeah, hey, uh, no, not in my town. <laughs> See, that's all he needs. The ace. Just one. One of those in the chat says, low. "Nick is." Uh, he says, "Nick's staying focused on the ad revenue number for the stream." Absolutely, buddy. Yeah, you got to look out. Sorry, okay. sorry, Lex. Go ahead. No, no, that was it. I'm just <laughs> so that was raise and take it. That's two in a row, three in a row for Samoas, who's moved up over 13 million now. Interesting dynamic emerging. It is a case of the have and the have nots. 82 bigs, and everyone else has fewer than 35 big blinds. I mean, sooner or later, he's just going to start open jamming. Vamos. <laughs> <laughs> just for that, I'm full. <laughs> Yeah, rough spot with uh, king eights and king nine is so infinitely than like king eights just because of the straight potential. How much? <laughs> so Trofimov has eight bigs. Queen deuce in the small blind. I think you just have to go with this. Wait, wait. Well, you can actually also just call. That's also a very reasonable thing to do. But again, it comes back to behavior, right? Mm. It's the big blind some somebody that thinks, oh, cool, you know. Show? Ooh. What? Ooh. what? Ooh. <laughs> nice. He nice. said I call. The king well, that's down. the thing. If you, if you do think that he's going to call you with king three off, then you have a huge problem. Yeah. <laughs> and I can oh, believe yeah. that he would. But Samoa's... I was calling range is pretty, was pretty sure. wide. Mm. Excuse me. So we have been talking a lot about Scoop, the spring championship of online poker. We've also been referencing the fact that there will be cards up coverage on Twitch and YouTube. But here's the thing, guys. While we stream mostly the big buy-in events like the 25K Super High Roller and the 10K No Limit Holden main event, remember there are...
tournaments to suit every bankroll. You've got the high, medium, and low buy-in of every single event. We've got tournaments starting for as little as two dollars twenty cents. This isn't a series designed for the super high rollers. It's a series designed for everyone. If you enjoy playing Omaha, we've got tournaments for you. If you're like Mason Pie and enjoy playing stupid, funky games with five-card draw with banana a games. banana on the river, yeah. you can have that American as well. Friendly. Plenty of banana games if you want to play them. How is your mixed games, Lex? How are you? Oh, uh, I'm great. How are you developing them? Um, actually, I've always really liked mixed games. I used to. What I used to do is when I grinded, like. 14, 15 years ago, I would grind and I was, you know, like completely fallen in love with poker. And then, you know how you sometimes just need to book a win? Like you have some really swingy cash games and you're up like 11 buy-ins one session. Like, okay, I need this like mentally or something. Yeah, yeah. Or sometimes when I would notice that I was too fatigued to play the, the higher stakes I was playing, I would, but I still wanted to play some cards. I would always register like micro stakes, stud or Oma high low. And I really learned a lot of games that way. Um, and I've always yeah. played a lot of um, events live as well when I was at tournament series. So it would just be some random like stud high low, Oma high low. I just play and also like the atmosphere at the table. You, you played, I played with a lot of old school guys that way. And I don't know. I think it's uh, mixed games are pretty cool. I mean, like I really couldn't be bothered grinding them. That seems that that sounds horrible to me, you know, <laughs> just because I can't handle split pot games and stuff. But um, I think mixed games are cool. It's a fun change of pace. And, a lot of times they'll also give you some insight on some, on Hold'em, you know? Like sometimes you just pick up an idea for some line that, that, that or sure. to stay out of or something. So I, uh, I don't know. What about you? Uh, I actually played Fixed Limit 08 for the first time in Vegas during my during no, in November, so the last World Series. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Like you say, it's a very different vibe. You know, everyone's a little bit more chatty. You know, I think people that enjoy playing that game, and that's the game that they like to play all the time, I think they they do it more often just for the social aspect, right? Because especially because it's a split pot game, you're just going to be splitting a bunch of pots a lot of the time, and you're just kind of passing time more than anything else. But they were so bad at the game as well; it really was yeah. a way to actually make money too. Yeah. <laughs> so a couple yeah. of uh, follow-up questions about Scoop. Uh, Shiva Poker asks, "What the variant where the worst hand wins? I may be good at it actually. Raz, it's a miserable game." And Haino says, do you get a scoop trophy for every series win or are the trophy, trophies for some specific tournaments? Excellent question. All 318 tournaments, whether it's a low, whether it's a medium or it's a high, you get a trophy if you win. Yep. Scoop means something. It was established in oh. 2009. You get a championship trophy whichever tournament you win. Plus, of Time course, there are the uh, player of the series competitions as well. Sorry, Lex. No, 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 no. That's fine, yeah. Yeah, just way to entice me further, you know. Trophies, player of the series. Hmm. Vamos. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like oh, I'm just going to play them all because a final table or run is a run and it's also good for viewership and be fun to, like, you know, suck out on some scoop title or something. But then I'm 16 tabling Hold'em tournaments and I have some eight game $20 tournaments. And it gets a bit out of hand, but I really do like when I get lower on tables to just add in one of the smaller tournaments, you know, like let's say your average buy-in is $50 or you like to play $40 tournaments or $20 just to like pop in a $2 Omaha low tournament can really spice up your evening just by making it different, you know, it just makes the Hold'em grind more fun too. And it's just cool that I really feel like Scoop is a time of year and where that's the only time where that's really happening with uh, nice prize pools and stuff uh, where you can find that online. I don't know whether you saw it earlier on, but during one of the breaks, we ran some highlights from the 2018 Monte Carlo main event final table where Nicolas Dumont won the trophy. And he won it on hand number 108. This is hand 112, and we're still six-handed. <laughs> Kim says, I won a scoop in 2020 and didn't get a trophy. They were introduced in 2021. Yeah, I feel so bad for you, by the way. Wow. You won a scoop and you didn't get a trophy. Oh, man. Can't imagine winning a huge tournament and then, oh, no. <laughs> All right, so this is a technical all-in. If you're wondering why he leaves 325 behind, if two people behind uh, the, the King-9 suited go all-in, uh, you can actually fold because uh, the money 
jump that he will make if somebody gets knocked out is worth more uh, than him uh, uh, forfeiting four or five hook lines. Well, the virtual all-in gets through. Trofimov trying to keep his head above water, has 10 big blinds. Uh, concern Mets, the online qualifier, is now the shortest stack with nine big blinds. And a reminder, the blinds go up at the end of this level. And there's 14 minutes left on the clock. Man, if only we switch one card of each. You get sixes or aces. I'm running so good. You're going to have the ace at this point. Well, I referenced the 2018 main event. When we go on break in around 15 <laughs> minutes' time, when we take the 60-minute dinner break, there will be the chance for you to re-watch the last final table played here in Monaco, the 2019 main event. We'll watch the final five play to a winner. It has, of course, been three years since poker was played on this stage, but we are back. And obviously, Lex, I appreciate that you've got commitments to your audience, you've got commitments to your family. Any chance that we see you an EPT in the near or distant future? I have the most insane FOMO right now for live poker, and I have been for a while, so uh, I'm, I'm really, uh, I, I really want to get out to an EPT. I think that uh, there's a very high likelihood that I'll pop in at Barcelona, to be honest with you. Cool. Um, nice. We're expecting a baby girl in October, um, which is really nice and amazing. And yeah, thank you. Uh, and um, my wife will be at the stage where she, she can still travel or be comfortable to travel. So it'd be nice to take the family down, oh, yeah. take Navi and maybe bring grandmas and like make it a family trip. Uh, and play some poker and stuff. Yeah. That sounds so wholesome, Lex. That's lovely. We'd love to see you. It's nice, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Don't think you really want to get in there. And Getty, watching on YouTube, asks, for how long has this been six-handed? Well, play started at 1 p.m. local time, and it is now quarter to eight in the evening. Now, granted, there have been breaks, but we're looking at the better part of seven hours. Uh, it's so true, though, what you say, though, Nick. Like when you say that, I feel that I'm that I do sound a bit scarred about some of these oh, life pro situations. I, I, I do really feel like when I. Now I feel like I'm so much more mature in poker. I'm doing things the, the right way in a lot of in a in a lot of things where I was lacking as a as a pro before. Yep. So I do really also want to get my feet wet and 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 play feeling like I do now in a live setting or like a 10k or 25k or something like that. So I I think if I do go to Barcelona, I might actually blast pretty hard at buy-ins. And I don't know, it, you know, I, it's hard sometimes to appreciate what you're doing when you're in the moment just like randomly traveling, playing all these like high stakes buy-in tournaments, playing high stakes online. And, you know, if you just kind of like grow into that, it's just like, okay, yeah, this is just what I do or something. Yeah. And then if you squander some chances and you just make some stupid choices, sometimes you, you know, you get more mature and you start looking at things differently financially, just, you know, building your future, having a kid. And then all of a sudden you think of, wow, that's, it's so insane to just take that for granted, but it, it's also related to your age, you know, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I yeah. just feel like I have, this sort of like second wind now with streaming and, 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 and really doing things over the right way, like building tournaments from the bottom. So mm. try to exercise that life. It does feel like a bit of a, a bucket list thing almost. Yeah. No, no, I totally understand. I, I had a coach. Uh, I was living in Thailand for a little while. Uh, I was being coached out there. That was really where kind of my poker career began. And uh, he said to me, if you, if you are... You play some poker, you focus on yourself, try and improve yourself. If you can't look back six months ago, you know, six months previously and say, like, I haven't become better since then, then you're not really improving, you know, in, in the game. Mm -hmm. But I, obviously, poker is life, right? So in the same sense, returning to the live scene with a completely different perspective and a little bit more maturity, that's, that's, that's super exciting. I know exactly what you mean. 
And um, yeah. I, I know you've spoken on it before, like the kind of swings that you endured when you were much younger, when we were in the era of emo Lex, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's got to feel fantastic to just, you know, sit down and feel very, very centered and, um, you know, just appreciate what you're doing. Whereas before, maybe just playing a little bit more, you know, feel, feeling, feeling a little bit more out of control in that in, in the hot seat. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I also feel like I was just like really uncalibrated in a way because, you know, I played high stakes poker and then had this really wild image and I was playing super aggro, but then I had this weird spot where everybody was expecting me to play aggro. Nobody folded, but it was also the only way I knew how to play. And then I didn't really know. And like my complete frequency was off. Like, do I bluff? But they're going to call me anyway. And, you know, I kind of lost my place in that sense a little bit. Um, also emotionally, like when I was playing live and I just kind of like diverted to PLO because I felt like I had to build it new in a new game so that I could, you know, had a better sense of where I stood. And like now that's just a lot more pinpointed and clear and all that stuff. So, you know, that's, I feel like I'm calibrated in that sense now. Yeah. Can't quite believe that Marcelo hit that six on the river, but he wins another part, increases his chip lead even further. In fact, we're now looking at a three to one chip advantage for the Brazilian, close to 15 million. And Hugo Pingray, the second biggest stack with five million. We have two players in the danger zone. Danger zone. Erkan Cernmetz, nine big okay. blinds. Dragos yeah. Trofimev, eight big blinds. Okay. And only seven and a half okay. minutes until the huh? blinds increase. That we're jumping to 200k BB after this. We will be about 5, 6, 19. <laughs> <laughs> the average stack is going to be 25 big. I mean, they've just referenced it. And we've been talking about a tournament that has played with anything between a 60 and an 80 big blind average every single day. And now we're looking at a 25 big blind average if we make it to level 32 with six players. Yep, just pushing around chips at the moment, but we definitely have two players there with nine big blinds, eight big blinds as well. So I expect to see, I mean, you know, I, I was predicting two before the break, James, and it, I feel like still a possibility. It's going to have to be pretty specific, though. Rebet gets the job done. Another pot goes to Marcelo Samoas. That's the last of my blue heat. No more. And that pyramid just becomes bigger and bigger. Classy. I love it. We've had the hum all the way through. <laughs> Undersea Monkey says, anybody else singing Ping Ray to the tune of the Stingray theme? Just me? Okay, then. We were doing it yesterday. You should have been here. Stingray, Stingray, da -da 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 Stingray, Stingray, Lex has no idea what we're talking about. Mm. Mucho. <laughs> it was a TV show with puppets it, set on a submarine. It was world-class children's entertainment is what it was. Well, it didn't reach the rest of the world now, did it? <laughs> okay, <laughs> national class like the, children's uh, entertainment. One, three. <laughs> okay. I thought uh, James only knew American stuff. <laughs> I think it got distributed in the US. All those shows like Thunderbirds and... Yeah. Captain Scarlet, we're on American okay. TV. Oh, Captain Scarlet, yeah. And it's all those shows, all those Jerry Anderson productions, those were the ones that the, the guys were spoofing in Team America. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, the guy from Stingray was always getting kidnapped by, like, the Atlanteans, and they'd, yes. they'd kidnap him, and they'd put him in some sort of a torture device, and they'd say, 10 Marine minutes remain. And we never knew the actual length Good. of Marine yeah. Minute. The Good? Yes. Uh. Good. Remind me, Good. Nick, was Stingray yeah. like uh, Thunderbirds where the heads were too big? Because Captain Scarlet, yes. all the puppets were in proportion. Yeah, it was the heads too big situation. 
Um, the check. Yeah, yeah, obviously in the I'll, sub oh, in the submarine as opposed to I, I you know yeah, various you. Um, Thunderbirds devices vehicles. You said 1.3, right? It yeah. sounds like uh, you know Adam West Batman kind of scenario. <laughs> it was a bit like that. Yeah, it was in the 60s, wasn't so it, James? Yellows, right? yeah. 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 I love Thunderbirds though. Yeah, very cool. Well, it's like Thunderbirds, but in the water on a submarine. Yeah, it's it's basically the same thing. Captain Scarlet was a little bit different. Captain Scarlet was quite dark. Yeah, it it, it was quite scary actually. This I, is I, the I, voice I, of the Mister Rons. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, I think I might go back and watch some of that later tonight, actually. I wouldn't mind returning. Really? Because of that fucking quote? <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was in pretty much every Come episode, on. though, Lex. <laughs> Screw you, Veldhaus. I'm an influencer. <laughs> Job's not that easy, James. <laughs> Nine seven of diamonds has raised Jaime Cervantes six five in the small. Whoa. Is our man about to pull something gangster or what? That'd be kind of insane actually. Gangster fold. Uh, Living in the gangster's paradise. Oh. I don't see that. That's the thing, right? Like, could there be some acting as if you, because you wanna, you know, you wanna get some action? Like, because clearly when you fold like that, you're probably thinking about a bluff or something. Well, it could also be a hand that's just not good enough. But I just don't really understand the reasoning or something behind it. I think generally versus a chip leader, when they raise a whole lot and you're a middling stack, you're gonna try and find some bluffs as well, right? So you wanna just kind of showcase thinking about a decision as less as you can to look as strong as you can when you do, if that makes sense. Sean Man says, how can you forget about Aquamarina? Of course, that was the end of each show. That was the end credit music. Marina. Oh, you just have to read a question from chat to pull it back to, to those TV shows. Huh? I'm, 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 I'm hyped. I'm hyped. I'm not going to lie. I uh, think we probably need to stop now, otherwise this channel is going to get a strike against it, because I'm pretty <laughs> certain that all these songs are licensed. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, guys, no more no more Stingray chat. Uh, Ham 119 and Dragos Trofimov oh, has yeah. ace eight oh, under yeah. the gun. Oh, yeah. Oh, you have to... Yeah, it's it's rough, but the, those six seven big blinds you just have to go in, you know. You, you're gonna get so many folds, and also know that the blinds are gonna come around, and then the blinds are gonna go up in like five or ten minutes, right? So you're you're gonna be at four big blinds. I mean, yeah, now it looks great, but you're gonna be at four big blinds in the ones the next level hit if you don't get anything in the blinds, and I think that is something really important to take into account. And having an ace is just really strong. Six seven big blinds. Is that, is, would that be considered a sort of FGS consideration, like yeah. a future game simulation kind of thing? Yeah, I think that's really important. Yeah, so when we're, when we're using some tools, guys, when we're, when we're looking at situations, you can run what we call FGS alongside it, which takes into account the, like, you know, the future hands to come. So is it really important that I get chips right now? Is it really important that I make this play before the blinds come around and then I'm in a much worse spot on average? And it's a really, really nice little little thing that you can slap onto some simulations in order to uh, accurately simulate whether or not these are spots you should be taking. In, in many cases, it's more like an ICM push fold kind of uh, kind of um, tool. So we've yeah. had the Ace King open from Morton Van. Cern Mets with pocket oh. threes in the small blind. Uh oh, he is the shortest yeah. stack. This is, this is this is really not as easy as it looks. It's no, just, this no. Is so disgusting. No, this is a disgusting spot. As a shortest stack, I think you. I fold. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, I get it. I get it. But yeah, I get it. But pairs do perform really well in all ins. Yep. Generally. Oh. oh. Show the rail. Huh? Yeah, show the rail, don't you? Um. So queen four, in the big blind for Hugo Pingray, and if he folds this. We will be on break because the clock has ticked in Sorry. to the 60-minute hiatus that we have planned for dinner. More random food coming our way.
but I'm not convinced that Ping Ray's folding. Uh, there are some situations where hands like Queen 5, Queen 6, those type of hands are used uh, for re-raises from the yep. blinds. It's just really powerful to block a Queen or a King. I, I mean, I just don't think that the opening range is going to be quite weak enough for this to do this, or... Um, Let's do half. I mean, I, res I really respect, I do really respect the move, and he does recognize something very powerful. Um, it's just a bit unfortunate timing here, but uh, yeah, Pingray is pulling some cool moves. You know, he, he, he let out from the big blind when the four paired on one of the last hands, and now he's re-raising this. Um, I mean, it's definitely one of the hands that you can choose to make a bluff with. Uh, you're going to make a lot of ace-high hands fold, right? If you have ace eight suited, you're just folding to this three bet, so. Yeah. Um, oh. Did you just call? Wow. Holy shit. That's really interesting here. No help though on the flop for Ping Ray. Jack, deuce, deuce. Ace height still good. Ping Ray with the pre flop betting lead, having three bet to 1.1 million with Queen 4 off. Quick heads up, guys. We will be resetting the YouTube stream during the dinner break. So if you check out the live chat, there will be a link to the new stream. We'll pin it to the chat as well. But just in case, because this thing might go the distance, Check. we're going to reboot during the dinner break. Just to go back to pre-flop really quick, Lex, do you think other other combos you might sort of be bluff three betting with might be like king deuce off, king three off, that kind of stuff too? Uh, you generally want to try and pick the combination that's like right below somebody's opening range. So let's say like somebody will open king nine from the cutoff, then you want to choose king eight and king seven. Okay. If you're going to have to pick some some of those, then you might as well bluff with right what's below the bottom of their value range. Um, so, you know, if you also pick king deuce, right, like, if you're going to pick a, a hand, king six is better than king deuce. And you can't do it with both of them, so why not just do king six? Right. You know what I mean? Um, but there are going to be spots where it is going to be a valuable uh, uh, thing to use, especially if a chip leader opens a lot or something, or somebody has an insane amount of ICM pressure on their exactly. or mid stack or something. But um, yeah, you, just, you can't go too wild, right, in those situations. Right. So Ping Ray has checked a second time. By the way, just an FYI, Cern Metz has been cautioned for exposing his hand to the rail with action behind. He has received a warning, but no penalty was issued. With Ping Ray checking, Vam checking, we get the nine on the river. Check. Check. Check to showdown. Ace high is good. And that is going to take us to the dinner break. And can you believe it? We still have six players at this final table. No eliminations today so far. And things are getting ludicrously shallow now. The blinds are going up to 100,000, 200,000. Okay, the chip leader's got 81 bigs. Jobs are good. And nobody else has got 30 big blinds. You've got a player with five bigs, a player with four bigs. Something's got to give, and it will, probably when we come back from break. Uh, Lex, should say at this point, thank you very much for spending this session with us. And good luck on the scoop grind, buddy. Good luck, buddy. Yeah, thanks, guys. It was really fun, and uh, see you out there. Good luck. So reminder, if you're watching on YouTube, the stream will be reset during the dinner break. There'll be a new link pinned to the chat. Make sure you click on that to continue watching the action from the final table of the EPT Monte Carlo main event. Let's have a look at the stacks of the six remaining players. When we come back, the blind levels will be 60 minutes long and we'll play two back-to-back -back levels. It's all about the Brazilian right now. Everyone else either in or approaching the danger zone. Danger zone. Enjoy the dinner break. We will hopefully enjoy ours and we'll see you in just under an hour's time. We are back on the Riviera for the PokerStars and Monte Carlo Casino EPT as the main event final table continues. We have played 
two full levels without losing one player. We are still five-handed at this final table. Manig Lerzer from Germany has the chip lead. He's got a stack of more than 10 million. I think he's the first player to cross the 10 million mark in this event. Victor Katzenberger from Hungary, second in chips with 5.6 million. So nearly a two to one chip lead for Lerza. Then we've got Nikola Greiko, Wei Huang, and Ryan Reese bringing up the rear with an 18 big blind stack. Blinds have just gone to 8160 with a 160K big blind ante. Everyone's locked up. 206,590 euros. And with every elimination, there will be significant jumps. More than half a million for the runner up, 827,000 euros for the winner, plus the European Poker Tour main event trophy. I'm James Hartigan, alongside me, Joe Stapleton. Hello, my baby. I thought, my babies, I thought for sure we would be down to my baby at this point. Amazingly, we have been playing for nearly five hours with five players. Luis Medina, the only elimination so far. He went on the second level of the day. Ace do suited under the gun. Not the shortest stack. All in. But does in fact shove all in with Ace do suited. This is a lot of chips again to be putting on the line with a very marginal hand. I guess maybe a little bit frustrated by the fact that he has not a lot of opportunities to play pots. Pocket oh, wow. jacks for Lurzer. Three million. Well, this is not getting through. Wang has a dream of being the first Chinese player to win an EPT. He is going to need some help or he is going to be out of there. And Lurzer, he's going to reshove with Reese in the middle, right? Yeah, I mean, it's not going to make any difference, right? Reese has less chips than Wang here, I think, as well. Right, of course. He's just taking a little moment to deliberate with Ryan Reese. He had to act. Of course, never folding the two jacks here. Okay. Cool. Lerzer calls. Reese folds. Wow. Wang is in trouble. This is a huge pot in the context of this tournament. We're on the verge of losing our first player in nearly six hours. Started today with six players. We've been playing five-handed since we lost Medina early in the day. A deuce on the flop. Gives Huang a few more outs. Ace on the turn. Huang a huge favorite. Now, to double up, Lurs are taking it in stride. Wang does have to fade two jacks on the river. The river is a three. Wang doubles up. And not only does he double up, but he doubles up to be second in chips. Wang with a hand that he can... <coughs> Three to two five. Find a call with, I think. Absolutely. Beautiful looking nine eight suited. Sure. Thank you. Nine hundred and fifty K in the middle. As we head to the flop, Lurs are dominated. Ten six tray rainbow. Wang checking to make sure he does, in fact, have a gut shot. Yep. This is a board where I'd like to see a bigger bet. Put a lot of pressure on Wang instantly. A bigger bet, and also I think when my opponent checks his cards, I'm just going to go, you know what, he probably doesn't have, like, a big piece of this. If you have a 10 and you pair your 10, you know it. Does choose to use the smaller size of a check? I think it's going to be completely reasonable as well. It's going to be a lot of turn, yeah, a lot of turn cards where Loiser will be able to fire off. Both players turn an eight. Let's 
going to slow Lurzer down though, right? Yeah, sure does. Check, check. River is a 4-2 pair for Lurzer. <laughs> Wang, we know, is a fairly check call -y type of player. Looks like he's struggling with whether or not to bet now. Most of the time in these situations, we see him err on the conservative check side. There it is. I would not be surprised to see Lurzer bet pretty large right now. He's nearly always going to have the best hand. 500,000. So he's One just going to target a six or a trade to call. Or an eight. Thousands the bet. I find it very hard to fold an eight. So would I. Given the price, given the action, it's unlikely that your opponent. That's a nice fold. Oh, so tight. Yeah, nice bet. How does he do it? Lucky me. <clears throat> 10 minutes, they're going on dinner break. Halfway through that, Huang's gonna get to see. He made a great laydown right there. <sighs> Those are almost back up to his peak, though. And Katzenberger with the monstrous Ace King. This is the one, Joe. <laughs> is this and the one? You're dying, that you're dying for a little bit of action. Ryan Reese with ace nine. He has dominated, but getting it in would be reasonable. He's been so patient be quite anticlimactic for this to be the end of Ryan Reese. What do you do though? I think it's a pretty close spot. It's so close. I reckon he'll probably end up finding the fold here. Katzenberger will struggle to get two out of line with the chip leader on his left. And he does not find the fold. He finds the all-in. A couple of players to act still. Pretty unlikely we're going to see them get involved. Wang's out. Greco. Out. Snap call from Katzenberger. Ryan Reese has been so incredibly patient, so incredibly frustrated. Gets it in. Dominated. It is Domination Nation, only a 16% chance Reese survives this. We've been playing five-handed for nearly three full levels. To the flop, Ryan Reese's fate. There's a nine on the board. Domination rotation. Finds one of those two remaining nines. The main event champ finds the miracle nine. But now Katzenberger picks up a ton of outs on the turn. Will Reese fade? He does. He does, Ryan Reese. Finds the double up when he is up against the ropes. Yeah. I fold a nine. Well, I fold the king, yeah. so we... Yeah. Don't Ryan tell him Reese. you folded the nine. All smiles after winning that pot of the 17 oh. big blinds. What a time to run well. Manik up in the small blind with six deuce. Ryan Reese started the hand with six big blinds has four behind because he posted the big blind ante and the big blind itself. Um, well four, yeah, so this hands. is a million. Plus Thank you. 